What is up? Is that a white claw? Hell yeah, it's a white claw. What, what else did I be drinking on a Friday night? Gotta save those calories or something? I don't know why people drink white claws. They're delicious. How's everyone doing? Hell yeah. All right. Got a salad here. A bourbon sour. I'd love a bourbon sour right now, but I don't have any sour mix. And I'm not going to make it myself. <laughs> Healthy boy. We're a leafy boy. Can't get healthier than this. A little leaf. A little leaf snack. Good little way to start the stream. Get some energy going. Get things pumped up. All right. What have I missed, chat? What has happened in two days? Event Horizon XD. Thank you so much for the tier one subby. Woo, whoop. Hell yeah. Thanks for stopping by, enjoying the content. Kind of wish I made a bigger salad. Shit, this is good. I got some new balsamic. Mmm. Mm -mm -mm. Delicious. All right. And then out, open to where I live, 14 hour line. <laughs> this is crazy. It's probably worth it, though, <laughs> to be honest. Hmm. 14 hours for a double double? What's wrong with that? That sounds normal. You gotta get hyped up for some reason. COVID has made everything boring as shit. All right. We'll be getting to hacking shortly. I can almost drive to Phoenix and get a double-double in less time. Is a double-double not worth 14 hours to you? I don't know if I've ever actually had in and out Hey, yo, how you doing, Fabius Sylvia? Sil Silva, sorry. Most definitely not. Where does uh where does In and Out rank on the tier list of uh foods? <clears throat> Better than five guys? I feel like five guys has gone downhill quite a bit in quality. <clears throat> How's dinner? This is just a snack. What did I have? I had, uh, I had like a, a like Korean marinated beef uh, with rice for dinner. About the same. I like it more than Five Guys. Shit. Like, I feel like Five Guys used to be really good, and now it's not nearly as good as it used to be. Now that might just be because. Now it's, like, more accessible. It's easier to find. It's less of, like, a, a special day to get it. I think the overall consensus is that In-N-Out is better than Five Guys. From what, I, from what I've heard. Are there any other, like, really good fast food burger places? Are those eight monitors for gaming? 
We game extra hard here. We game so hard, we don't even have games open. But no, they're not for gaming. <laughs> Shake's Shack is decent. I actually heard someone recently saying how good that was. I think we got a Shake Shack nearby, and one of my friends was saying how good uh, Shake Shack is. So... I don't know. I don't think I've ever had Shake Shack or In-N-Out. I've had Culver's, and Culver's is fucking delicious. Not the best burgers. Good price point. Um, I really like the fries. I like the crinkle fry. Um, and then that custard is so fucking good. Do you still go out for lunch with coworkers? Nope. I haven't seen a coworker for uh, eight months. I mean, technically, I've seen my boss because we hung out for Halloween. And I've got someone who used to be a coworker who switched jobs who we hang out all the time, but. Culver's frozen custard is great. Seconded. Totally true. It's fucking legendary. Culver's chicken tendies, baby. Oh, yeah. Now we're talking. Get those tendies. Honestly. When I was a kid, I grew up where Culver's were nearby. So Culver's wasn't a big deal or a special day. But I grew up on, like, those Culver's tendies. And honestly, thinking back on it, they were really good. <laughs> like, I don't know if I've had better tendies. They're, they're typically cooked a little crispier. You can often ask them for, uh, to make them crispy. A good size piece. I think a, a chicken tendy, the the size of it is really important to get the flavor profile correct, get the texture correct. For chicken, I always go to Chick-fil-A. I didn't have Chick-fil-A's growing up, but Chick-fil-A's for sure are fucking good. Uh, Chick-fil-A is S tier. Um, like chicken, like breaded chicken sandwiches and chicken. It, it's just mm, so fucking good. But I didn't have that growing up. Um, and I don't really eat fast food anymore. What do you think about Arby's tendies? I haven't had their tendies. Um, I've probably only had Arby's like twice in my life, and I would have had a burger. Um, actually, I might have tried one of their um, like uh, cold cut or like cold cut style. I can't remember if it was warm or whatever, but just like ham and cheese, whatever. Um, Arby's is god tier for fries. Fuck. What 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 kind of fry do they have? So like. On the fry ranking, I would say I like the crinkle fry. I love the Culver's crinkle fry. I like when there's a good potatoey base to it. I like when it's not too thin that you're just only tasting the seasoning um, and like the oil. I like having a little bit of the doughy fry on the inside. But I will say like curly fries, fuck curly fries. I hate curly fries. They're always like wet. Like, maybe I've just never had a good curly fry, but most curly fries I've had are just, like, wet. It's like potato that's been drizzled in oil and then covered in, you know, whatever seasoning and then just, like, warmed up. They're always, like, lukewarm and shitty, but I've probably just never had a good curly fry. Seasoned and breaded curly fry? Okay, I've never had that. That sounds good. Try Arby's? I'll have to try that. I don't even know... I don't even know where the nearest McDonald's is here. <laughs> it's probably pretty far. Probably like 10 minutes away. Are you gaming on Linux? I am gaming on Linux. We're not actually doing gaming though, but I do game on Linux because that makes me extra elite. Uh, gives me all the gamer, gamer grease going through my hair, pumping through my veins, sweating up my keyboard, getting that Cheeto dust in there. <laughs> I don't know. I'm just saying a bunch of gaming things. How do you run Classic? I use Lutris for that. How many buttons on my mouse? 20. Um, Temple OS greater than BSD, greater than Linux, greater than Windows with dollar signs for the S on Windows. That's a creative one. I've never seen that dollar sign on uh, Windows. <laughs> Is that a white claw? Uh, no, it's a... um. I can't remember what I can say on Stritch, Twitch, but it is a, um, it's a, um, flavored, 
uh, it's a flavored seltzer water with like a weird aftertaste. <laughs> Um, Lutris, yeah, yeah, that. Uh, Cack W, hell yeah, night shit, how are you doing today? Uh, you can't do worse than Last Miles, so I think you're good. Oh my god, dude, I didn't even realize Last Miles was just, like, watching videos. I didn't even, I just thought he was, like, hacking on something that was just up. Oh, man. Also, the uwu is silent? Uwus are never silent. Uwus. Uwus are a sensation. It's something that that you feel that's embedded in who you are as a person, right? Uwus are uh, are big. Last Miles, the Bit Wizard, yeah. God, he's got he's got the true Unix beard. It makes me so sad that I don't have that Unix beard. Like, how can I even use Linux if I don't have a beard? Like, at least down to my like my center, of my chest. I have chocolate ice cream. How is that? That sounds good. Ooze can be silent, but ooze, <laughs> ooze are never silent. <laughs> We're learning so much from chat today. <laughs> when did ooze even start being a thing? What? What's the? When does that harken back to? So I go back like ooze, squee. Okay, Urban Dictionary. What are we what are we getting from this? I I don't I think it feels relatively recent, at least in the usage. 2013 OO was embraced by the furry community, but but oohs <laughs> fucking oohs, dude. <laughs> Holy shit monitors, hell yeah, we got all the monitors here. One monitor for each hacking that we do. <laughs> God damn chat. Looking good today. Hell yeah. Good uh, good thing a hundred people have showed up already. Just started the stream. Bunch of people already here. I think we're at we're at ninety-four thousand Twitch views. There's a chance if we pull something out of our ass today, um we might we might be able to hit that hundred thousand view mark, which is just arbitrary, but you know, it makes me feel good. Are you hacking into NASA? Oh, we're not even... We we hacked NASA last week. We're on to bigger and better things. We're on SpaceX now. We're getting we're getting everything here. <laughs> Notice this Emerge-AR and I3. Ooh, master. I, w I wake... <laughs> I can't even fucking say it. So we have... <laughs> Fuzzy was in warm kawaii desu. <laughs> so basically, we have a. I play on an RP server for WoW Classic, and um, there is there is someone on the server called called uh, um, Boople, and Boople in character always speaks in uwu speak. So everything I have never seen him break character. He's Everyone on the server knows him. He always talks like that. And, like, some people give him shit for it. Some people like it for the meme. Some people just uh, like the uwu community. But it's pretty fucking funny, dude. <laughs> oh, God, please don't. Exposing the round earth, the, the round earth filter. <gasps> dude, if we get into the satellites and then remove the fake lens, if we remove the round lens... And expose the true flat earth. Oh, man, we could get some big street cred if we did that. Nah, that'll be on the schedule. <laughs> Will you take the vaccine? Probably not in the first six months, mainly because I am not a high-priority person to get a, a vaccine. Um, use Kali Linux to expose NASA. Kali Linux is too, too hackery for me. I'm more of a backtrack fan. That's why, that's why I got to use Imagine not knowing the Earth is actually a disc carried on the back of a turtle. Open. Wait, are you saying like a disc, like a CD drive, like it has a hole in the middle? Because that's new to me. I didn't know there's a, a hole in it. <laughs> People have never read Discworld believe in Sphere Earth. Backtrack, yup, there's a throwback. Yeah, I haven't used, 
I haven't used a hacker Linux since Backtrack, and that was like probably to do like AirCap back in the day. Do you use the six monitor setup in stream? I do not. Oh yeah, warming up my hand on this candle that I can't ever get the framing right on. It's always going to be in the wrong spot. Airmon, oh god. Yup. Backtrack, oh baby. Yeah, I mean, Callie's just, yup. NG. Any reason you moved into the mountains away from the city? Because I don't, I don't socialize. There's no reason I should pay an extra price for living in a city if I don't use any of the amenities a city provides. Like, if, like, why would I pay $3,000 more a month to live somewhere to get access to clubs I don't use, bars I don't go to, and humans that I don't want to see? Um, so ultimately, it's just not worth it. Although Seattle is actually a relatively cheap city in terms of uh, like house prices, it's not too bad. Two B two B H. I have looked. I think at my next job, I I might move into a city or move like right next to the office, such that I can like walk to work. Um, because I think the next job that I have, I'm probably gonna want to have a more leadership role than what I have now, and thus being like physically accessible will be important for that. Can buy cameras with the extra cash. Exactly. Yeah, I just bought a new iPhone. Got a new iPhone now. Part of part of the Apple crew. What up? Apple represent. You know? What up? I'm cool now. I got the blue messages. <laughs> Going to office in 2020. Yeah. Did you get the pro version? Yeah, I just got the Pro Max 512 gig. I just literally just kept pressing the buttons until it was maxed out. I don't know the difference between the Pro and the uh, normal one. I know the Max is just larger, and I just prefer that because I have big pockets. I buy, I buy my clothes to have big pockets, and my hands are too small to use a phone single-handed, even if it's a small phone. So I literally have no reason to get a smaller phone. Um, why would you want a leadership role if you don't like working in teams? I still would like to, like, create something larger than me. So that doesn't necessarily mean I have to work in a team, but I have to be in a position where I can, like, create something and hand it off, which means I'd have to work on a team for maybe a couple months while I do the handoff, um, or separate the part, like the internal part of the tool that I use enough from the interface that other people use that I still can have a large impact on a group without actually having to work with a team, if that makes sense. Um, can you put this in your bash RC? Alias CD equals RMR. I don't know what a bash RC is. That sounds really advanced. A bash.rc? Yeah, I could put it in my bash.rc. I feel like that would have no effect. Sounds good to me. Um, so you get paid for like hacking? Yeah, exactly. That's what I do. I, I hack for a living. That would delete everything? Well, not if I have the bash.rc file. <laughs> I think I'm fine. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> We got the, we got the debated. Oh, man. Oh, you have me sweating here. You almost got me hacked. What other command should I run, chat? I got so many commands that I need to run. I don't even know what they do. It removes the Windows licensing info so you can have free Windows. Oh. Oh, is RM, is that retail management? Is RM like retail management and then R is the like register and then F is, what is the F? Register, register full? Oh, does that, that, that message is the registration management server to register a full edition of Windows. Oh my God. How did I not know that? Wait, there's a bash terminal on iPhone? I have no idea. 
RM is remove Windows management. Wouldn't that be RWM? You can't name a command if it has three words with two letters. You can't do that. That's not how that works. Dash RF is full remove? I don't know, man. I don't know. Now I'm just getting conflicting things. Now I'm scared that that wouldn't register my Windows install. The only Linux command you need is exit, reboot, and play some WoW on Windows like the degenerates you all know you are. I've never played WoW. What is WoW? Windows on Windows? I've never heard of WoW before. That seems interesting. Secret late night stream. Yep, sneaking into those DMs. Kill all star. Oh, I'd love to kill that star. That sounds bad. I don't want to do that. Wow, 64. Oh. Oh, I see. Does Microsoft camp O-Days? Like, do we pitch tents and then, like, hang out with O-Days and just chill with them? No, not necessarily. Dell Tree Windows? Oh, man. That's some dangerous commands. We've got some danger noodles in chat. Make sure you don't type these things. This could, this could uh, invalidate your warranty. Um, what we got? A print in a for loop. Good thing we got the standard I/O uh, include there, so we don't, so we can build it pedantic and with all errors. That's pretty good. NSA camps Ode. I mean, some someone's got a camp with Ode. Roast some marshmallows, chill, you know, hang out, get some get some graham crackers, make some s'mores. BCD edit set test signing on. Ooh, implying I don't already have test signing on. <laughs> Got, gotta, gotta put that in my. Uh, how else am I gonna get arbitrary code running in my kernel? Oh no, it's already been 30 minutes. Um, include unistid.h fork fork? I don't know. I don't know about that one. That seems dangerous. Only if there's some Hershey bars. Man, Hershey's is the shittiest chocolate, but it's acceptable. Love me some s'mores. Yup, absolutely. Joke's on you. My kernel doesn't do it. <laughs> I see a, a fellow Gentoo user here who updated their kernel. <laughs> Oh, a ping to 127001? Is that going to sneak into the... Well, first of all, I'm not going to allow you to post my IP in chat. That's not allowed. And second of all, that's pretty dangerous. You're going to send the hacking packets to my machine? Uh-oh, that's not going to be good. It's good for emotes, nothing else. S'more, s'mores? It, it's good. It's good for. S Wait, emotes are good for s'mores, or s'mores are good for emotes? Because to be honest, a s'more would be a pretty cute emote. Hello, how are you doing? A guy from the offline world. What's it like in the offline world? Weird to see you on the internet here. It seemed. Are you lying? Are you lying to us? Ban him. He he found my IP too. Oh no. <laughs> Oh, these are some good recommendations. Jagger Claus, how are you doing? Did I ever tell you my story about how I stopped using Gentoo? Did you just reboot one day and it just didn't boot in, so you just booted into your Ubuntu Live CD and reinstalled? No, I don't think I've heard that story. You can send letters to Twitch and they'll put your message in chat? What? Can someone, can someone test that? Is that true? When did they add that? That seems new to me. Oh, you got you got into my account. SSH Ubuntu at 127001. Access grant. Now de I'm deleted? Is this it? Is that the end? Any opinions for this method to hijack RIP? God damn. Damn it, why was that not a Rickroll? Now I'm just sad. What is this? Is this... This looks like a fucking meme video. 
We've got unre unregistered hypercam too, so you know it's a meme. Okay, this is good. This is good. I've thought about making a video like this, where I go through and like do a, a, a hacking tutorial. I think this is pretty solid. Gotta say. Definitely good here. I think, I think that definitely will get you into the mainframe. Um, but I don't want to show that hacking on, on Twitch in case I get banned. That might be dangerous. <laughs> Unregistered hypercam. Yeah, I've thought about doing a hacking video where I like actually drop some Ode and I have like unregistered hypercam, a Fraps logo, a Fraps counter in the corner, and just like literally like type out an Ode in Notepad. <laughs> just like literally type through it. <laughs> and obnoxious music. Yeah, it's gonna be 009 sound system. The audio is gonna be clipping, so like the lowest note is gonna be at like negative 2 dB. Everything else is gonna clip. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> Notepad typing. Yeah, exactly. I think I did that on one stream. Just out an unregistered hypercam text overlay on the stream. <laughs> I mean, I gotta do the real thing. Dot 3 GP format. God damn. Just put, just put an unregistered hypercam. Should I put that on, on stream? Should I have an unregistered hypercam as part of my stream overlay? <laughs> damn phone is hard to type on. Yeah, phones are awful, man. I don't even bother. You need to, you need to. A hype Call of Duty frag montage music and make the whole screen shake when you compile. <laughs> Type NC-L-P6996-E bin bash. You think we use bash here? Trying to get into my mainframes? Um... If I saw that while browsing channels, I'd absolutely check it out, to be frank. I gotta do that once I get a nice camera, so I can uh, put the unregistered hypercam up. Hello, and and welcome to another hacking tutorial on, on Kali li Linux. <laughs> Please, what face? <laughs> Did that clip, was that good? Was that good? Rip headphone users? Can we get a rip headphone user in chat to confirm that we did indeed rip headphone users? It wasn't good. It was perfect. Mwah. <laughs> oh, man. I got bears to so rip me. I heard that aids in high quality. We got a rip in chat. What is that? Is that a candle? that a candle being illuminated? That's a cute little emote. He's still talking. My ears are bleeding. Just test your tinnitus out. Just, you know, just flick your ears a little bit. Make sure they're working. Get them back in there. Silver hand? What's silver hand? Is silver hand like silver light? Can I use that to get arbitrary code execution on your machine? Because if I can't, I'm, I'm not happy. True story, you work, woke my two-year-old up. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, dude. It was probably going to happen regardless. We do get loud here in chat sometimes. I translinear translinearized the tensor core matrix vector scalar to elite hacks or your system through boo, the fiber optic neural network quantum block blockchain AI. I got hacked. I got hacked. I got hacked today. Is that a is that a Bing emote? Someone have a Bing emote? Why why does someone have a Bing emote? What what is that even What even is the use of a Bing emote? Unless you're going to use that to let me know when my stream is dropping frames. <laughs> Let's get to the really important data. How did you parse last raid? Pretty poorly to be honest. It wasn't great. Um was it last raid that we wiped like five times on Twin Imps? I can't remember what it was. It's Michael Reeves emote. He has re, he has the re prefix. No way. 
Oh, because he's Reeves. <laughs> That's pretty good. Oh, man. If you can read this, I'm already in your system. Do I need to shut it down? Do I need to put a firewall on there? Imagine not using ask.com. Best website. Oh, ask.com is pretty good. <laughs> Got a Vim emote? Who's, who has a Vim emote? Prim, primogen? E oh, it's in Emacs. <laughs> it's pretty good. It's pretty good. Hackertyper.net. We'll be getting to that soon. Is there a streamer with a panic or BSOD emote yet? I don't know. I don't really pay attention to what all their hackers do. People are people just do some advanced things. I can't keep up with it. Wow. Wow. <laughs> Repy. Oh, is that a Python? Oh, nice. Is that Python with faces? Is there some action going on? In that emote, <laughs> that's pretty good. <laughs> that looks some M that looks like some MS Paint shit. <laughs> the Primogen, I don't know that. What do they got? They got some good emotes. Let's see some speed cubing. I don't have my cube. My cube's in storage. Node brrr, and a drill. Okay, those are pretty good. <laughs> I like it. Reeves has got some pretty solid emotes. Oh man, he's really cool. <laughs> you wish. Got a got a soggy pog. Is that an? Who is that? Oh, that's um, that's moist. That's moist critical. Yeah, he's soggy. <laughs> I was like, is that Jesus? Nope, nope, just moist critical. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, chat. All right, I think we're pretty good unless anyone has anything other than memes. We've we've memed for a, enough time, chat, that we can get into the meats, get into the hackins, get into the mainframe, find our ways, hack the planet, you know? All of that sort of good stuff. Thank you so much for all of the follows. All the follows always go a long way. Don't forget there is a follow button, and if you click it, you get, if you click the follow button, you will have three of your wishes come true tonight. So make sure you, f you smash that follow button. <laughs> have you looked at Apple's hypervisor API? I looked at it a long time ago when it first came out. It was okay. G33 cat work. Oh, hi. What up? Not too much. We haven't done anything yet. You haven't missed anything. Um, now I'm like kind of hungry. I feel like that salad was a mistake. I probably shouldn't have made a real meal. What do you mean by just moist? Was Jesus in a Hunger Games movie? That's true. That's true. Does, does Jesus have a closet of sex toys? I don't think so. <laughs> Free, oh, free V-Bucks? Yeah, if you follow me right now, you will get one V-Buck. <laughs> but it's free. It's free. You, you have to do something for it, but somehow it's also free. <laughs> if you sign up now for $5 a month, you will get free X. I don't think that's how that works. Eat greasy. Oh, man. Oh, man. <laughs> what, can, what kind of emotes do we have? We got ADR Reese's. What's that from? A Drive. I'm not familiar with A Drive. They've got 59 emotes, so clearly they're pretty big, and I should know who they, they are. Give me V-Buck. Straub from Straw Bunny. I feel like I've seen Straw Bunny around. <laughs> Lily Bork? Lily Pichu? I don't know Lily Pichu, but they've got 59 emotes too, so they're pretty big. To Zoding? To so Sodin. To Sodin. Is that related to, to Sodin Popper? <laughs> or to Sodin Popping? <laughs> Fuck, I'm old. I had to Google what V-Bucks are. That's pretty sad. The fact that you didn't get a V-Bucks 
reference in 2020 is pretty sad. C-sharp better than Rust? I mean, duh, it's a Microsoft product. Like, you're just preaching to the choir here. I only have emotes from the weirder part of Twitch. Well, we got some, we got some furry with some weeb shit here. And we also have some other weeb shit. So, do we got a weeb in chat here? Bester Gester, do we got a weeb in chat? Can we get a weeb alert? Check out for a weeb here. If I do an uwu, is there an immediate response there? Minecraft command system? Are you talking about the, the redstone hacking programming language? <laughs> Alright chat, I'm gonna go grab a pop tart and we're gonna get this going. Be right back. Oh, and another claw. I lied, chat. I didn't get a Pop-Tart. I got cheese and crackers. Got some good... I guess it's not cheese and crackers. It's cheese and baguette. <laughs> Any cuties in chat? We got some weeb shit going on now? Not a weeb, I promise. I don't know about that. <laughs> I think you've been outed as a weeb. All my uwu emotes? Yeah, I need more uwu emotes. I need to make an uwu emote. Someone should put Gamosa's face on the claw worshippers from Toy Story? What is that? I don't even know what that is. <laughs> In 45, thank you so much for gifting out a tier one sub. Hell yeah. Oh, this is fucking delicious, dude. I just got here and I thought I opened the wrong channel seeing chat. Yeah, we got some weebs doing weeb stuff right now. Oh, yeah. Why is cheese so good? It's just, like, milk sucks. But spoiled milk turned into cheese is delicious. Um... Do it, you won't make a make an uhu emote. Fun fact, cheese makes you bald. Nothing to worry about then. No concerns there. Uh the three eye aliens in the claw machine. Yeah, I know what you're talking about. <laughs> Is that true? I've been eating like one pound of cheese a week. <laughs> oh, 
Oh, that's good. Government cheese? Where's government cheese? Is that like massively over budget and under delivered? No button down shirt today? Nope, too late to get a button up, man. Too late. I don't think government cheese is cheese. Ah, the American cheese. The craft single in its natural habitat. God damn it, Sarsec, with your oo bullshit. <laughs> oh, yeah. Hmm. Fuck, this is good, dude. The 1950s government welfare program had cheese? Sounds mandatory. I would not survive without cheese. Like, what else do you eat? Where do you get protein and fat from if you don't eat cheese? <laughs> Ooh, ooh. All right. Three more cheeses left. Doesn't it make you uncomfortable to have your windows open at night? A couple people have brought that up. How sketchy is where you're living that, like, having your windows open is scary? Like, what's the threat? What's the threat? There's no difference than day. Than at... At daytime. Y'all some paranoid kids out there. God damn. Bears. Fucking bears. They are watching. I mean, why wouldn't they just use one of the many cameras inside my house? Literally never have windows open, but I also live in the ghetto. Oh, man. What do you think about Whistle? I think it's good. I like it a lot. I don't use it because I just use Linux like a real hacker. But I think it's really good. I think it's really good for uh, both Linux and Windows. Both ecosystems benefit from that transaction. IMO. Um... New here, what's going on? We're eating some cheese, and then we're about to get some hacking stuff. We're gonna be hacking in a minute. Oh, and we got some weebs doing uwu shit, because I, uh, I provoked that a little bit. I think I said uwu a couple times. And now we're getting some uwus in chat. <laughs> Doesn't it make you uncomfortable to have your windows open at day? Yeah, because I could get sunburned. Is that DWM I see in the background? It is indeed. All right. Int 45 is in full weeb mode? Yeah. See, he left the windows open, and now the weeb's got it. Oh, God. Got in. Your computer is like an air conditioner. It becomes useless when you open windows. I don't condone that behavior, chat. Fuck, that's good. Ruby grapefruit. Never had it before. New flavor for me. Fucking delicious. Nice desk you have. Thank you so much, Ikea. Ikea has worked wonders here. Got that nice Ikea desk. Nice little wiggle on it. Really stable. <laughs> During the day, you can see if someone is watching you, but at night, not only can you not see it, but the light emanates from you. Look, man, if someone wants a show, they get it. They got the show here. Got the got all the best, fanciest things here. Um, I've been loving the claws. Yeah, yeah, they're pretty fucking good. <laughs> Grapefruit could have had a salty dog instead. You know, this grapefruit, I was expecting pungent and bitter, and it's actually pretty, uh, 
pretty good, pretty tame, pretty nice, pretty polite. It kind of asks whether or not, you know, it wants to have an aftertaste, and I can say, like, no or yes. I can find it if I want. Will you ever consider doing random IoT router firmware hacking or emulating reversing? Yeah, I'm actually, after this stream, um, after this series is done, I'm thinking about um, hacking something where I physically have to desolder a chip, read the ROM off it, and then, like, resolder it in. And what I'm, what I'm thinking for that process is um, lift a chip off, um, basically analyze the behavior of it, make sure like we understand where some user input is, and then modify the firmware and backdoor it uh, such that we can get kernel execution. So basically dump the firmware off the device, um, read through to like look at, you know, where the kernel is. We can probably identify pretty quickly like where maybe packets are processed or something like that. And then backdoor the device such that we can get arbitrary code execution and then use that to dump the device like we're doing on this Android phone and then use that to load it into an emulator such that we can fuzz it and uh, single step through it and debug it. Um, so I'm thinking about going through and doing that. Mouse question mark? Oh, I'm always using the mouse here. Fucking love using the mouse. Do you have a YouTube? I do. Uh, bang YouTube will be able to find that in, uh, in chat. Um, what do we got here? Trying to, trying to do some locked moves. What is this? X86? Is that, is that a valid instruction? Yeah, that's actually, um, yeah. That is a valid instruction, except the lock prefix does nothing on a move. All moves are atomic on x86. Techni technically, technically, not an instruction, but the lock prefix will just do nothing. By, fi uh, by finding exploits in WinRAR, are you saying I could get a registered copy of WinRAR? That seems illegal. I don't want to bang YouTube. Sorry. Sorry. It's the only way to find YouTube in chat. Damn offsets. Oh my god. I love how x86 can have uh, four byte offsets. We're countering the uwus. Yep. The uwus have faded. Oh, we got a. Is that a reciprocal square root? Single scalar? Or, or, yeah, single precision scalar? Is that what we're seeing there? Is that even instruction? I think it is. Twitch can't be bothered to synchronize the chat and stream. Yeah, I'm gonna clap and then chat's gonna clap when they hear the clap and then we're gonna see how in sync it is. Look at that. Look how synced chat is. Look how synced it is. They keep coming in. It's like, it's like there's a whole round of applause. Just gonna pat myself on the back for that one. You fell for that fucking trap. Thank you for applauding me. Uh, thank you for uh, welcoming me to my own stream. Thank you so much. I'm glad you're here. <laughs> Time to get into it. We got played. Yeah, yeah, you did. Yeah, you did. Is this a is this a VCR? Because you guys aren't remount at all. Haha, <laughs> you got played. Woo! <laughs> we were tricked. <laughs> Jabated. You got a debate going out. Uh, we got in. I, I'm guessing this is German. Is that an Ike O Net O D U? It's coming in with a Twitch Prime. Remember, remember, chat. If you subscribe with Twitch Prime, you make me happy and Jeff Bezos sad. Huh? Huh? Am I doing it right? Am I. Am I doing it right? Am I doing the whole... Am I... No? No. Okay. Okay, no one say I'm doing it right. Lord Alpaca coming in with the 100 biddies. Thank you so much for that. X86. X666, man. Wham bam. Oh, you got intel there. <laughs> they're gonna... They're gonna really be hurting when they, uh... You know, make those billions of dollars a year. <laughs> You deserve it, hell yeah, German. <laughs> Intel more like... What? 
Where's your delivery, Int? Where's your Where's your fucking delivery? Plot holes? How? What? Intel more like plot holes? What? Where's the joke? I'm trying to entertain chat right now, and and you've you've made it worse. You you've ruined the chat experience. Now every time I lose a viewer, it's your fault today, Int45. <laughs> I made it better. <laughs> Reappropriate money from Bezos to su by subscribing. Exactly. Exactly. The stream has been live for 58 minutes. Is that a is that a slant at the fact that we haven't done anything but sit here on chat? And what have we done? We've eaten a salad. We've eaten cheese. And we've done some oo-woos. Intel, more like AMD, am I right? You, you're a Swift dev. You're a Swift dev. Aren't you an, an ARM person here? Find a new exploit and chat will be happy. I don't know if we're going to be able to find a new bug in this phone. It's pretty locked down. There's like... A kernel and user land separation. Cheese counts as science and technology. It is! Holy shit, we got a we got a hype train coming in. We haven't even done anything. El Twertog, which I've fucking botched before. Thank you so much for another gifted subby going out to Dimtree22. Well, I hope I hope you get your lights working and get that tree bright and fancy. Sorry that your tree is so dim today. Hype train incoming. Yeah, we got that hype train going. We haven't what have we done? We're on a level one hype train. Um, what does that mean? We're gonna, we're gonna unlock some emotes, but, but if we get more of a hype train going, more stuff happens. See, Dither coming in with the five subs, and Alpaca coming in with a hundred biddies, and my camera dying. And my camera coming back to life. We got nude fetter which i think we've seen that one before as well in chat thank you so much for the gifted sub going to zorg 666 the devil itself <sighs> oh lord alpaca dude lord alpaca you got some competition going on right now are you feeling like you're uh not the not the true 666 in chat because right now Honestly, I'm seeing a Zorg666 as the real chat. The real chatter. <laughs> N45 getting a gifted subby to Stringview. Ooh, woo. They've gifted two subs in this chat. Hell yeah, thank you so much. My simp powers are engaged. Oh, yeah. 100 biddies coming from Lord Alpaca with a bruh. A bruh. <laughs> bruh. <laughs> Taking back his reign as the prime 666 in the chat. <laughs> Just find some binary exploits. Stop trying to engage your audience. But my audience is my exploit. They're exploiting my happiness right now. See? That's what we're here for. I don't do this to find bugs. I do this to find friends and connections and happiness like right there Lord Alpaca coming in with t 10 10 billion bits coming in with an ooh thank you so much for that Lord Alpaca always see it in chat you're on the number one bit spot thank you so much for the 10,000 bits that'll pay for my cheese addiction for one more day 3155 converted a prime gaming sub into a tier one sub I don't know what that means but it sounds good. It sounds like I'm getting support here. Thank you so much, 3155. Cheers. The real friends are the bugs you find along the way. Oh, that's so cute. Holy shit, laugh my ass. <laughs> Stay strong, brothers. Dodge those gift subs. Don't become a cog in Bezos machine. Whew. That was my dodge. That was my dodge animation.jpg. 10,000 billion big ones, Pog. <laughs> oh man roadmap simp plus white claws into what what into qu question mark i mean i do have a white white uh white claw here dodge this <laughs> shit <laughs> shit 
I don't think I dodged it. Thank you so much, El Twerk Dog, for the, the next gifted sub. Sorry if I continuously butcher your name, but I, but I like the way I say it. 64 bits, 32 bits, 16 bits, 8 bit, 4 bit, 2 bits, 1 bit. We got the bit wars going on here. This is basically Sega versus Nintendo here. Sega does what Nintendo don't. <laughs> Am I right, chat? <laughs> oh, man. Oh, good. <laughs> do you play chess? No. No. No, I, I don't have those intellectual prowesses, unfortunately. Another unsubscribed brother has fallen for the cause. Absolutely. Linux does what wind don't. <laughs> talk about talk about wind blows more like. <laughs> Be more Vsauce and less Markiplier, please. I don't know the difference between those two. I don't watch Markiplier. I do watch Vsauce, but I don't know what the difference is. Holy shit, <laughs> they're coming in with 5,000 bits. I think that is officially the largest donation. I think maybe we've had 20, 20 subbies. Holy shit, now we got the level five hype train. That's the final level. I don't know what that means, but I think we're about to unlock a lot of things in here. Thank you so much, Dither. Glad you're enjoying the content. We got Daniel giving a gifted sub as well. Jesus Christ. <laughs> I wasn't trying to shill, but I am. <laughs> More like micro sucks, am I right? Woo -hoo. We now have, we have to beat this game. I think we have beat it. We got the level five. God damn. 20 subbies, holy shit. I think I get all of the biddies. I think subs I get like a small share, but I think I get all of the biddies. Thank you so much, Dither. That's fucking huge. That's gonna pay for, like... My White Claw addiction. We got my cheese addiction covered, my White Claw addiction covered. We're pretty good. Does he ever code today? Yeah, today we're gonna be learning the basics of Python here. New to that- new to Python, we're learning- we're learning for the first time, but no. To be honest, if you actually wanna know why we haven't started coding yet, it's because we keep getting like 25 viewers every minute. And uh, due to that, um, I haven't wanted to start because that will leave people kind of behind. And I'm just chilling, hanging out with chat. Um, chat interaction is always kind of fun here. But yeah, we'll be doing some coding pretty soon here. Um, 3155 with a gifted sub to Sarsec. That is a well-deserved gifted sub. Sarsec is always here hanging out. Glad you got the gifted sub. 198 bitties from Lord Elpac and my last bits from GlitchCon. Oh, did did we get bits from GlitchCon? Soshi Andrew coming in with 100 bitties. Soshi, that sounds fucking awesome. Sounds a little weeby, but also sounds awesome. Seven screens. Yeah, oh, yeah, we got a whole setup here. We got the whole hackins. We've got, I guess, nine screens here in total. There's one screen that's off frame that you can't really see here. <laughs> Hell yeah. Hand-holding teens by writing hello world in Python is such a twitch move. Yeah, let's get that going. Let's get to our standard content today. All right, today chat, we're gonna be writing hello world. Um, we're gonna just open it with a hacking utility called Vim, which stands for very important malware. And then we're gonna use this to open hello world. And we're gonna call this Pi. Pi stands for Python. It's not to be confused with like Pi the Radian or Pi the Food. This is PY. Um, and we're going to open this file up. And when we open this up, we're going to type a print and an open parenthesis. A parenthesis, you can find that. It's on your keyboard. Um, you have to hold shift to hit that. Then we're going to hold shift and we're going to press, um, we're going to press our quote button to make a quote here. And then we're gonna type hello world, which is an English phrase that is basically saying hello to the world. The world is the flat thing that we're spinning on and revolving on right now. Um, so that is the, the world. And then we're just gonna, we're gonna have to find that quote key again. If you, need, if you need some help, you can find it right here on the keyboard. We're gonna hit that key and then we're gonna close the parenthesis with that key. And we've, we've now done that. 
And now if we take Python and we invoke hello world, it will say hello world. And there, right there, you are now qualified for any developer's job. Congratulations, uh, you are now a developer. And in fact, you're a hacker, you're a developer, you're an NSA secret project, everything. Everything. Print hello world. <laughs> Where can I find the source code to this? Oh, fuck, I didn't stash it. I lost it. I lost it. I didn't commit it. Oh, no. Don't forget to important math. Is this on GitHub? Oh, shit. I, I think I have something like this, but it's in a private repo. Um... Yeah, unfortunately, I don't know if I have this exact code in Git. Um, I don't know. Yeah, private repo, unfortunately. This is lame? Yeah, absolutely, dude. You, re you realize we're making it lame because you think it's lame. Like, if you weren't saying dumb shit this whole time, we wouldn't be doing lame stuff. And every time you say it's lame, I just want to stay on the full camera view and hang out with chat even more. Because we're not here to entertain just you. We're engaging with chat, so we're the problem. Chat's always the problem. Pretty sure that's the L call. I'm pretty sure it's not, given I've had one. But thank you. Thank you uh, for, for kind of guessing. <laughs> we are here to make money. Well, that's, what we got. that's why we got Ode here. Why nine monitors? I typically have like a bunch of code open and a bunch of documentation open, so I can pretty easily use all of the monitors pretty quick, but it makes me extra hacker, extra elite. Um, please, I need a reason to buy nine monitors. Each monitor makes you more of a hacker. <laughs> that's, that's how that works. Does Twitch make enough revenue for you to survive? No, not even close. <laughs> Twitch isn't even close, unfortunately. Um, I don't plan to ever replace my job with Twitch, so don't feel obligated to sub or do any of those things. I do appreciate it, uh, but Twitch is mainly here to teach people and have fun. Boo, I have four monitors. I can only get a five-day. Yeah, you're not going to get an O-day with that. Are you kidding me? <laughs> Did he fix the camera timeouts? No, we're going to have to hack the camera to do that. We're going to have to dump the firmware and reverse it out and find where that... Where that 30 minute timeout is for now. We've just got our magical flute. If no one's familiar with the flute in chat, the camera times out every 30 minutes. And we use the flute as a poking object. Just because it's it's right here. And that, that's why. Alt tab is more monitors. Not necessarily, not if you're referencing something or typing something in another document. So in some situations, no. But yeah, in a lot of situations, a good environment definitely helps with that. My job makes me want to fizz buzz. Ma uh, makes, wait, my job wants me to make fizz buzz. And I was thinking about doing, ah, my chat keeps scrolling. Uh, doing it by using a matrix library. I don't know what fizz buzz is. Um... I'm not sure. I'm sorry. Um, um, is it a secret? I should not say, but if you have five monitors, you can ha Google. That is indeed confirmed. Now, you will only be able to get into the fifth page of results. You'll only be able to hack into the fifth page. If you want to get into like the second or first page of Google, you're going to need to have nine monitors minimum. FizzBuzz is usually a mod modulo uh, matrix library, something like that. Sounds pretty fancy. How are you so energetic? Because I'm hanging out with chat and having a good time. I'm socializing because I've n been neglected by COVID. <laughs> oh, man. Where's my flo flute emote? Yeah, I do need a flute emote. The flute does keep coming up. <laughs> Best Python program ever, some range 1 to 37. That, that sounds really dangerous, dude. I don't, I don't want to summon anything by running that. <laughs> Google CTF needs 5 plus monitors, exactly. My IP address is 8.8.8.8. .8 .8 .8. 
Well, now that that's down, it's now 4.4.4.4. .4 .4 .4. <laughs> Got him. Haha, <laughs> Google, Google DNS. <laughs> Woo! Oh, man. COVID, more like COVIM. Run it. I'm pretty sure that's 666, isn't it? We're gonna, we're gonna try it. We're gonna try it. We're gonna just, for the next few minutes, we're just gonna run arbitrary things that chat tells us to run. Um, <laughs> Let's see, what, what did you say we want to do? Sum range 1 to 37. Called it. Fucking called it, dude. Called it! For a second I thought it was more creative, but nope. Nope. I knew it. I knew it. Um, <laughs> best Python program is def random number return 4. Rolled using fair dice. What, what is that reference to? I, I see it a lot, so clearly it is something that is a is a reference. They don't call Gamozo Vim Diesel for nothing. Oh my god. OS.system RMRF star. Should we try that one? Should we try that? Hello world import OS OS system RM RF star. Let's try it. Let's get that one going. We're just typing things that chat wants us to do. Unfortunately, that is invalid syntax. I, tr I tried. I tried my best. <laughs> Can you print eight, 8008 and turn it upside down? <laughs> Whew. Whew. It doesn't really work if you don't do 8,085. <laughs> Don't listen to them. <laughs> Hello world and Fortran. Do I even have a Fortran compiler? I probably do. Um, yeah, G Fortran. I don't even know how to write Fortran. I I couldn't even write Hello world in Fortran. I'm not enough high performance compute. All right, let's get some stream terms open up. Get a dev environment going. Chat, get your last words in before we start writing some code. Start doing some hackings on stream. All right. Hello world in COBOL. What is this, a bank? Are we trying to hack into Wells Fargo? Hello world in 6502 assembly. I I wouldn't know how to output it, but I could, I could probably figure that one out. <laughs> Crack knuckles to release hacker energy. I, I... I already recently cracked them, so they're out. They're out of cracks. I can crack my wrists. Ah, oh, now I can't. Um, <laughs> print 145 minus 76. Let, let's try that, chat. Let's try, we're gonna try, um, print 145 minus 76. <gasps> Whoa! <laughs> what? His... Is that a dirty number, chat? Oh, man. Crack your toes for stream. Do I need to put my toes on camera to crack them? Because I don't think I can only do that audibly, right? Imagine being a hacker and don't know what Vim is. <laughs> Stop looking at me. It's not me. It's definitely not me. You don't know what Vim is? Nothing wrong with not knowing what Vim is. It's just a text editor. Nothing wrong with that. Help 42 in Vim. I don't know. That seems dangerous. Print 420 minus zero. Ah, uh, what would that print? What would that print? Uh, I don't know. Real hackers use Ed. Ed. Who is Ed, dude? You think Ed is on my system right now? No, 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 no. We got Eddie, but we don't have an Ed here. Ed is the only good text editor. Has anyone ever used edit on Windows? If you have Windows 7 or below, you can uh, you can do it by typing edit in command prompt. Actually, if you're on 32-bit Windows 10, I think it still works too. <laughs> oh, man. All right. All right. You probably have EX. I probably don't because I'm on Gen 2. Oh, I do. Yeah, sorry. We, we made it. We made it. We made it out of the editor. Real hackers use echo, cat, sed, and pipe redirection. Ooh. I only use nano. Really? 
Are you are you being ironic? Like, I don't think I've ever tried to use um nano. Like actually use it for doing code. The only, you know what I use nano for? It's one thing. I use nano for one thing. And that is to edit the vimrc so that I can add the no undo buffer and the no swap buffers and the no backup file into vim without having vim save those files. That way I have a clean vimrc directory, clean vim directory. Um, and then I delete nano. Um, all right. Real hackers close vim with kill nine. Oh yeah, I just use control, uh, control close bracket. <laughs> that was my mistake, sorry, no problem. Alamander. The Alamander himself. Is that like a salamander? An alamander? But an alamander? Do you do you mend salamanders? That's what I'm getting from your name right now. <laughs> Hell yeah. Yeah, I fucking hate swap files. Turn all that shit off. Can you show us how to use rainbow tables for brute forcing? Uh, Google rainbow table, download one, and then plug it into whatever your favorite cracking software is. Um, Salamander was not available, so you know what? I'm gonna go with Alamander. Actually? Alamander? Wait, was I right on the Salamander connection there? Or are you trolling me? Did I get jabated by chat? Is that another time we've gotten jabated? <laughs> we got some perfimos. Hell yeah, Ender getting the perfimos. Is that coming from the, the, um, what is that? The stream train maybe gives us? I don't know what gives those out. Why not edit with said? That's too advanced. Gamoza perf, Rip Jackson, can't get a perf out, no perf for Jackson, running on a, running on a Pentium 1, R running on an Apple computer, <laughs> taking shots at the Apple fanboys, have you ever benchmarked your fuzzing rig for hash cracking, it would be terrible for hash cracking compared to GPUs, I think it would probably be like, 10 to 15 times less cost effective than a GPU, Getting a gifted sub to Jackson. Oh, shit. Using the IRC API. Hell yeah. M1 squad. Huh. The what? The what processor? The what? What is that processor? Is that, is that the processor that runs on my M2 NVMe drive? <laughs> uh, Buzzing out his real computer. A 486SX. Loser doesn't even have a dedicated math co-processor. Co You're the real alpha? Are you saying I have an alpha computer in this house? Are you saying I have a classic deck alpha computer in this house? Because I don't. I want one, but they're very expensive. For, for like a nice quality alpha machine. All right, chat. We're going to do a quiz. Everyone ready for the chat quiz? What is something that makes memory ordering very unique on alpha that isn't something that is shared on every other processor? There you go. There's the challenge. There's the challenge. And then we're going to just start getting kind of e editors set up and get our environment set up. So I think we're going to want to go into Android Motorola. We're going to want to be in this environment such that we can... Uh, we'll go into the thrower. Let's actually make sure our exploit is still working. It should be. Um, Android Motorola. I forgot how quickly this worked. Uh, we're actually in simple thrower now. Um, we'll do a make run. We're going to see how quickly that can dump the um, dump the memory from the phone. But it... Okay, nice. 829 milliseconds. That's pretty good. So I think this is now going to be reliable. Yeah, the phone hasn't frozen Everything looks good. It's a little bit slow. Actually, it might panic right now. It just kind of froze. But I think I think it's just trying to page things in from disk, and I'm writing to disk. So I... Yep, it came back. Okay, we didn't kill it. Yeah. I didn't think so. Um, do you know what dragon hacking tool is? Answer. Dragon these nuts. 
Sick. Sick. You got me. Middle Indian? It's not Middle Indian-ness. I'm mainly looking for memory ordering, which is interesting. But the Middle Indian is interesting. There we go. G33 coming in with the, the big one. Dependent loads can be reordered. Yes. So Alpha has the weakest memory ordering of any architecture. It is insane. Basically, dependent loads can be reordered. So you need to make sure that when you do, when you like read values in a certain order, or you expect them to be in a certain order, that you actually put fences on them. Pretty fucking crazy. Um, You'll actually see that a couple times. If you're reading through like Linux kernel code, you'll see like memory barriers in places that makes no sense for a memory barrier. It's typically for alpha. Typically for alpha. Does draw does Rust even target alpha? Um uh, targets. Target target target? Rust Rust see a target list. Target Print target list. Ah, target hyphen list. Um, no. No. Aw, that makes me sad. I wish it did. That would be nice. What's alpha? It's a, it's an architecture. It's, it's a computer architecture. We got the MS reverse engineering x86 quiz. Are we, are we going to take this quiz chat? All right. You are not able to Google, reference an Intel manual, or use a debugger. Name two instructions that have a memory expression for an operand, but do not access memory. Ooh, chat. So, what's interesting here... Oh, this is Rolf Rolls. Um, this is actually really tough, because you could say, like, CL flush and Invilpig don't actually access that memory, but they do access memory. Um, you could also say LEA, which is an arithmetic instruction. Um, you could say a prefetch, but prefetch is a hint, so it can access memory, but it doesn't necessarily access memory. And then further, the instruction itself could be paged out, or it could be um, not in caches. And reading the instruction itself could do that. It will be, will be nice and pedantic. Conditional jumps with 16-bit, 32-bit displacements were not available on the 8086. How did compilers generate conditional jumps back then? Um, let's see. What did they actually do? I don't know what they did. Did they do unconditional branch? Uh, or did they do indirect branches? I didn't even know that. For mod RM32 memory expressions, such as dword, dref, eax, byte pointer, eax plus ebx, word pointer, okay, so all of these, what are the rules in determining the segment against which the address is applied? Ah, if it's ESP, it's SS. If it's EBP, it's SS. Everything else is DS. What about mod RM16 memory expressions, like bx plus si? Wow, these are actually like really tough questions. Fucking roll for rolls, dude. Going ham. God damn. Oh, long conditional jumps? Oh, did they do conditional jumps and then like an IRET or uh, an indirect? Or an IRET with a jump? I have actually never seen that. I, d I don't think I've ever done 8086 stuff. Um, all right. So, yo, what's up? How are you doing today? I'm doing pretty good here. So we're going to go and um, we're going to work on our exploit. We're going to kind of clean up our code. I think we left it in a shitty state. So we're going to read through our exploit code. Make sure everything is clean and well done here. Make sure everything's commented well. Um, I think there are a couple things that are not, especially when we get into the snapshotting tool. So we're going to start off this stream with something that I think is very important as a developer. Um, sit down with yourself and Twitch chat. Um, and basically read through your code. Make sure it makes sense. Make sure you have the right abstractions. Make sure 
things have been ripped out into functions if they need to be, make sure you didn't kludge anything together. And uh, mainly that's what we're gonna try to do here. Hello, how have you been? I've been pretty good. Pretty good. Yesterday, I don't know what I did yesterday. I kind of just chilled, I guess. Nightshade dude, see you get some good sleep. See you around. See you in the morning. Probably. <laughs> All right. Um. You can only do push address JCC to a ret instruction? Yeah, I don't know. Um, which programming language is this? Uh, it looks so nice and probably slash 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 is uh, some document comment. It is. So this is Rust, and all of the comments with three slashes are, are document comments. So if we did um, cargo doc open, this is going to document my code and open it in a browser, which I can then pull into here, and we can see the documentation for our exploit. So we can see... Uh, kind of what these different constants do, what they're for. We can actually see that a couple I want to put backticks on, so we're going to do that right now. Um, oh, nice. We got, oh, we got some spam in chat. Yep, we're just going to, we're just going to ignore that. We're going to ignore that chat because we don't care about spam here. Some, some good spam. Wow, are these hacked accounts? They look like hacked accounts. Damn. Yeah, these are definitely hacked accounts, unfortunately. Which kind of makes me sad. But, yep, yeah, so we'll just go into uh, sub-only mode, I guess. I don't even know how to do that, but I'll find a way. We'll find a way. Um, here, we'll do this. We'll go into emote-only chat. There you go. Now it's emote-only chat. Now you gotta communicate in emotes to me. Yeah, I put some smiles in here. Sir Rune's chat, yeah. Hell yeah, look at that. Now we got that engaging chat. Hell yeah, G33, I'm gonna give you mod. And I don't expect you to do anything with it, but I expect you to maybe do something with it if you feel the need to. Um. Hell yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> look at that chat. Look at this engagement. Yeah, we'll keep this going for like five minutes uh, while we go through this. So someone asked basically about these document comments. And yes, that's exactly what they're for. So all of those comments are document comments. And they are in, um, they use markdown syntax. So the back ticks will put it in pre-formatting. So there's one that we didn't like here. We didn't like um, sys and I syscall. We're going to put that in backticks. I typically make references to programming languages. I put those in backticks. Um, but yeah, so you, we can go through. We can read kind of all the comments for all of this code, see information, what they implement. Um, and it's super nice. All of these things are documented. So I'm pretty careful about making sure I use document comments fairly well. Um, okay, now I'm going to open up. Let's see here. I'm going to um we'll switch it into follower only chat. There we go. Um just for now, probably we'll do the trick. I don't know if those bots will follow. They'll probably be gone soon enough. We've been freed. Only the followers. Only the followers have been freed. <laughs> Freedom! Hello world. Yep. Don't forget to get your follows in. Now's a great time to do that. Um, <laughs> ultimately, we're going to keep it in this mode, unfortunately, for a little bit, and then we'll switch back. Non-followers exposed. <laughs> right when I was about to yell at you that the doc thing is awesome. Yeah, it, it is pretty fucking cool. So let's read through our exploit code here. Is this code available? It is not yet. Um, let's see. All right, so we have the config page offset, which is the base of the physical memory linear map. Um, you can find this constant in your uh, config, in your kernel config, with the same name, right? Um, there's the exploit ioctl for dev envos. This is the syscall number for PCI config write. 
Here we explain the exploit. We actually wrote that pretty well, so I'm going to just skip over that. Address of sys ni sys call, address of the gadget, address of upread, address of the semaphore global, address of commit creds and prepare kernel cred functions. Those look good. We have the structure for the ioctal, which is good, named nicely. Pointers to these records, which we do as u sizes, just so we can print it easier. And then an nv error enum, which we don't pull in because it just decreases the amount of code we have, which is fine. We have an Android implant. We make it so you can't construct it without calling new because this field is not accessible outside of this module. So I like that. Um, and this will implant the device using that dev envos exploit. Okay, that sounds pretty good to me. Um, create an implant we can use run as kernel on. We do. We try to check if the implant is installed by trying to invoke it. If it is installed, then it's already installed. If it's not installed, then we open dev envos. We create a parameter structure that's default. We fill in the address that we want to increment. And then we increment it a bunch of times to switch that uh, syscall dispatch to our gadget. That looks good there. Um, everything looks pretty clean. We then check to make sure it got installed. If it did not get installed, then return filled in install implant, otherwise installed successfully. We have run as kernel. That's actually all clean, well documented, nicely done. Pop into a root shell, super simple there. Get root, super simple there. Uh, root device, this is actually the kernel code that will run uh, to, get uh, to get root credentials, and that looks good there and well commented. And then exploit cleanup. Um, I actually want to move, um, I want to put check install above exploit cleanup. And I want to put root device afterwards. And these are basically, I'm reordering things to be in the order which they are called so that there's a little bit better linear flow through the application. Um, but that looks pretty good. Make run. Okay. And once again, this is just going to work. It's going to basically use that exploit, get kernel, and then dump all of memory, which it is doing just fine here. All right. Um, non-followers exposed. Let's see. All right, I think we're probably good now. I'm going to just, uh, I'm going to switch that back off of follower-only mode, but we'll see. Back to watch you more. Absolutely glad to see you back. Hell yeah. Sorry, we had some bots doing some spam in chat, so we put it into follower-only mode. We might switch back into that, so we'll see. Impl, impl. Do I have an impl, impl somewhere? I don't think so. Um, the best feature of Go is it isn't Python. Yeah, that's pretty accurate. That's pretty fucking accurate. Did you see the new Rust doc alias feature? I did not. What does that do? Can you go over the memory dump again? Yeah, we will. Uh, we were just kind of looking through this code. The memory dump code, we actually want to do a new audit on and this one we kind of just look through and this is really simple there's only 200 lines of code here um so it's pretty obvious that there are no glaring issues we actually cleaned up a few comments and reordered stuff hey what's up not too much we're going through an android exploit we wrote um and basically doing code cleanup and then we're going to actually build something with this exploit specifically we're going to use this to fuzz things um Foo, create foo foo, links automatically. Ooh, yeah, I always forget about that. Did you see the new Rust doc alias feature? I didn't, and I already responded to that. Um, instead of having to hard code the link. Oh, that's really nice. Just saw this channel, wanted to stop by and say hello. Hello, how are you doing? Uh, no mercy, no, no unter. No mercy, no. I don't get it. Impl implants. Um, are there other ways to... Uh, other words that start with impl. Oh, oh, I see what you're saying. Implied. Lucky me, lucky me I catch you streaming. Hell yeah, good to see you here. Good old fishnet. I'm glad we, uh, we, we, we caught you in the net. Have to go, but the stream is finally getting interesting. Hell yeah. Come back next time. We'll see you around. All right. So 
basically the snapshot code is the code that we run our exploit with. Um, so we, we use our exploit that gives us root and it gives us arbitrary kernel execution. And then we use that arbitrary kernel execution to save all of the registers and all of the memory states from the kernel. Um, and that's going to basically allow us to snapshot the device such that we can save it off and continue execution somewhere else. Um, we wrote that up two days ago. Uh, we actually wrote it up like four days ago, and then we rewrote it two days ago to be better. Um, but we also had a lot of things that were iffy there, so we're going to go make sure everything is nice and polished up here. And we're going to read this basically in order of how it's executed. Um, that way we can kind of visit all the things that are used, make sure they're well commented and well documented. So that should be pretty good. Um... Let's see. Important? I, I don't know if that's a word. I got a puppy dog. Congratulations. How are you enjoying having a dog? Have you had dogs before? Is that is this your first dog? Are you new to having a pet? I've never had a pet, and I honestly have no idea like what goes into taking care of a pet. I need to learn how to talk in Spanish. Hola, como esta? <laughs> Yeah, por qué no hablas? The Twitch app is slow. I have I used the Twitch app? I don't think so. I always just go through the browser. All right. So basically, the code that we actually start executing is going to be snapshot. So that's kind of the entry into here. I think this is the only thing marked public, um, except fizzmem, which we don't need to make public. And I'm gonna put some backticks on this while I'm in it. So we have a pub. Pub space, pub fn snapshot. So what we the first thing we do is we reset this global to zero. Um, and that that global is basically used to signal when one of the cores, because this is a dual core system, it's used to signal when one of the cores on the system is locked. And that basically makes sure that one of the cores is guaranteed to not be interfering with the system while we take the snapshot. And we'll go into that a bit more. Um, get root is one of the best uh, Rust functions out there. That's just going to give me root permissions on the device. And that is needed such that I can enable other CPUs as well as invoke mlock all. mlock all requires that you have root permissions or you give the correct permissions. I think through like ulimit, you can maybe give uh, permissions to users to uh, lock memory, but I'm not 100% sure. Do you speak German? I do not. Um, me estas muerto. Hmm. I don't know if that's the, the right thing. What do you just say? Soy, soy muerto? Um. All right. I'm looking for owner. Can someone pet me? You want to, you want a little uwu panda? You going to do some uwus here? If you guess, if you get pet, um, oh boy, yep, yep, we got a bunch of spam. All right, we're gonna go into follower only chat, like a champ. Fucking bots, yeah. I'm gonna go and make sure all of those are banned that showed up in this wave, um, but yeah, unfortunately those are hacked accounts, and since those are hacked accounts, they're a lot harder to kind of detect and ban. Um, it's always sad. Always sad to see shit like that. All right. Um, enable R9K mode. I probably could. I actually don't know where this setting is for that. Let's see. Where is that? I don't even know. Well, we're going to leave it in this mode for now. Um... Can you make it so some phrases are banned? I can, but that just takes a little effort. Why do you need to enable all CPUs? Aren't they enabled already? Um, this, uh, it's a phone. So a lot of phones typically are only going to turn on CPUs when there's heavy CPU use. They'll basically only enable CPUs to, to, to save power. They'll literally shut down cores and then bring, bring them back online when needed. And that is 
the case on this phone. It is a dual core phone, but one of the processors will be off until there's enough activity on the device where it will turn it on. So what we do is we explicitly turn it on. We ensure that it's always online to make sure that it doesn't end up just coming online randomly uh, while we're throwing our exploit or um, in this case, uh, snapshotting. So mainly we're just uh, locking that in. How did you find out about that? Um, it's just CPU hot plugging. It's, it's common on most phones, but it's also pretty apparent because you won't be able to set your affinity to a core that is that exists but is offline, and you won't see it in CPU info. You won't see it in some proc and sysfs entries. Um, so ultimately, there are multiple different ways that that can come up. Um, so in this case, that's actually one of the reasons we do sketch set affinity. If both cores are not online, this would fail. Uh, and basically this is saying that I would like to be able to run on this bitmap of cores. Uh, a three in binary is one, one. And thus we are asking that we can execute on CPU zero, bit zero, and CPU one, bit one. So we're basically trying to make sure we are scheduled to that um, for this process. Then we lock in all of memory. This will make sure that our entire process will not get paged out to disk and all, um, all memory mappings will get pulled into memory, if I'm not mistaken. Um, at least anonymous ones will. I don't know if file-backed ones will, but I think they might. We then create our snapshot. This looks pretty good. We're basically creating our snapshot implementation. We do some allocations here uh, in some really weird ways that I don't think there's a better way to do this. This is basically... Um, We'll put a comment on this to make it clear. Allocate a uh, four kilobyte aligned um, uh, buffer containing uh, room for this many bytes. All right, so we're going to allocate um, and initialize it to zero. All right, so we're going to allocate some memory and we're going to initialize it to zero. Um, and mlock will make sure that that gets paged in and is all uh, present in physical memory, which is good. Um, then we spin up a thread. And what we do with this thread is this is basically where we go and make sure that the other CPUs, so there are two CPUs on the system, we want to make sure that one of the CPUs is frozen while we take the snapshot. And that is done by having that run hanger as kernel. And hanger is going to disable interrupts for both IRQs and fast interrupts. It is then going to increment that snapshot lock. And remember that we zeroed that out. So after incrementing, this snapshot lock is now one. And this will loop forever until that snapshot lock is a two. Thus, this will spin forever until the snapshot lock is set to two or it's incremented because that would set it from a one to a two. And this way we know that one core, the core that we are not executing on, has halted in the kernel. And it, will, it won't execute interrupts. It won't do anything. It's basically frozen in an infinite loop, um, which is exactly what we want. Um, then, once we have that uh, thread locked, so here we're waiting. We're going to wait until that thread has uh, basically gotten spun up and that it has gotten locked in the kernel. So once that gets set to 1... Um, so while it's not equal to 1, we know that it's still 0, nothing has changed. And then once it gets set to 1, we know that indeed this code has executed, and this core has been disabled in a, in a very controlled manner, that it won't come online or interrupt or do something strange. We then take the snapshot, so here we call the uh, register snapshot function. Um, we run that as kernel, of course we need permissions to do that. Uh, once we have taken the snapshot, which we'll go into in a minute, we then release the snapshot lock, which is going to increment that by one, which will cause this to be equal to two, which will cause this to return out of the kernel, release the lock, re-enable interrupts, and basically bring that core back alive. We then wait for that thread to actually finish execution as a thread. Um, we kind of know that it's actually out of the loop when it gets to this phase. Um... But we kind of just wait for that thread to fully exit and return out. Um, we then print register states, check if the snapshot was successful, print some information, and then we actually create the file and we serialize out the registers. And we can put some comments on here. Serialize out the registers. And then here we uh, write the uh, physical memory 
uh, serialized serialized buffer. And then we flush the output, wrote all the data, and we're done. So that's basically how that works. Super simple there. Um, but yeah. That's effectively what we did there. You can do slash unique chat for unique messages only. Unique chat. Okay, let's try that. We've put that in that mode, and then we'll go into follower. Uh, we'll, un we'll unleash the plebs. All right. Um... OB11U32 uh, would be nice. Yep, you can do that. Wow. Bunch of people saying wow, and somehow we can see multiple wows in a row. I enabled unique chat mode, but it doesn't seem to work. <laughs> um, unless I see all of the wows, but chat doesn't. I'm not sure. The bots had random numbers in their messages. Won't work. Okay. Yep. Well, we'll just uh, we'll switch back and forth between that. Um, so we can do... Um, okay. So basically, uh, I can put that back in follower mode. Pretty easy. The spam doesn't affect us too much. Like, just don't click on the links, obviously, and don't do those dumb things, but... We're fine here. All right, so that looks pretty good there. So what we're gonna do is look at reg snapshot, and I think this is where things can get a little wonky. So we pass in a pointer to the register space um, as a parameter to this. We fill out all of the register state here. We save the CPSR, which is the processor uh, mode, the SPSR, which is the save mode. Um, we switch into system. We then save the user sys registers. We then switch to abort. We save the abort registers. We switch to undefined. We save the undefined registers. And we switch back to service, which is the mode that we were originally in, which is good. Um, we save all of these registers. Honestly, I didn't realize we commented this stuff well. So it looks pretty good. Um... We missed you stream more often. Unfortunately, I do have a full-time job. <laughs> I would I would love to stream more often. Um, and I think I'll be able to stream regularly in December because I'm taking December off from work. So we'll probably come up with some good project to work on. So then we'll branch and link into Snapshot Kernel. We'll then go into Snapshot Kernel. We have a list of all of the ranges on the device from PROC IOMEM. That's ADB Shell, CAT PROC IOMEM. Um, which is just the system RAM sections here. It's just this, this, and this. So that's easy. Um, we create a physical memory accessor. If it is none, then we return not zero. So basically, this is going to attempt to create something that allows us to um, access physical memory. It's basically going to find an unused entry in the page table that we can use um, to remap memory in. We're going to determine the size of physical memory here, which is going to go through each of the ranges and basically add all of these ranges together such that we can get the size of physical memory in bytes, um, which... Um, do we even use that? Yeah, we do. Um, but kind of not in the best way. Honestly, I don't think we need this. Um, and we'll, we'll think about that as we go through. But basically, um, we're going to access bitmaps based on the physical addresses of things. And we'll go update those as needed, rather than computing that. Because that's relatively expensive. Well, actually, that can get done at compile time, which is easy. Then we uh, make sure all the, re the ranges are 4K aligned. This code should co completely get omit by the compiler. It's working entirely on constants, and all of these will be true. But this is making sure that they're 4K aligned, and the sizes are 4K aligned, and the sizes are non-zero for these physical memory ranges. Get the page skip bitmap. So that's getting access to the skip, bit skip bitmap. 
which contains, basically it's a bitmap that if a bit is set to one, then we will skip saving that memory. Um, serialized memory must be four kilobyte aligned in both the base and size. Um, good, that is fine. Then we go through and translate each of the addresses in serialized memory to determine which pages sh should be skipped because they're part of the snapshot itself. So serialized mem is, the, uh, is basically the buffer where we are going to serialize the physical memory state to, which was allocated by user space. And obviously we can't fit, we can't fit all of memory into memory, right? Like we can't store a copy of memory inside of memory because it would have to include the copy itself. So what we're doing here is we're determining what pages are being used to hold the memory snapshot itself. And basically, if a page is being used, it's part of this address, part of the serialized memory, um, then we translate that to get the physical address, divide that down, and we set it in the skip, skip bitmap. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna do if let sum, um, if let sum uh, skip is equal to skip bitmap dot get skip index as u size, um, and we're just gonna do this. And this will make this a failable access. Uh, skip here. And then else return not zero. So that way, um, we don't want this code to panic, right? We can't have this code panic. And thus we want to make sure that there's no way this code can panic. And that was one way this code could have panicked if uh, one of the pages was out of bounds of that uh, memory range, it could have potentially panicked. So now it will return an error. Um, and this needs to be get mute here. So we'll run make, make sure this still builds and it should. Um, then we get a pointer uh, to the remaining bytes in the serialization, serialization buffer. So at this point, we know what pages we have to skip because they're storing the snapshot itself. And we're gonna go through each address in physical memory, each page in physical memory, uh, we're going to access the skip bitmap. Um, and once again, we kind of want to do the same thing here. And I don't know a great way to handle that. Because um, this page could be out of bounds of the skip bitmap as well. So we'll just say skip bitmap get page over eight. If skip page is none, return not zero, return error. Otherwise, um, this will just be uh, skip page, uh, unwrap, skip page. So that is going to access that now safely. So if it goes out of bounds, it will return zero, uh, return all Fs or negative one instead of crashing. Um, and then here, page mod eight get the bit and then extract the bit, check if it's equal to one. And if it is, um, basically, if we don't want to skip the page, read the physical page into the page buffer, um, make sure it's succeeded, and then uh, serialize the address of that page and then the um, page itself. If we didn't have enough room in our serialization buffer, then return an error and then advance the serialization pointer. Everything there looks good. Here we're going to serialize the address and set the bottom bit to one. So this is going to serialize the address indicating with this bottom bit being set that that page is to be skipped. Otherwise we're out of space uh, for storage. And then finally advance the serialization pointer. And in fact, um, honestly, this code is not as bad as I thought it was. Um, and then we return the total number of bytes that were serialized into that buffer. So yeah. What's going on in stream? Right now, we're working on some hackins. We're working on using an Android exploit uh, to dump a phone such that we can reload that phone into an emulator. And once we have the phone running in an emulator, we will be able to emulate the phone and kind of observe how it behaves in a much more controlled environment. Hell yeah. Um. Let's see. Um, so you're copying all of physical memory into a buffer. Yes. If the system is running with low memory, won't you have issue, issues? Yes, I would. And that would just return an error. Um, okay. Let's see here. 
feel like there's like a lot of weird spammy stuff in chat. I think some of these might be bots. Um. All right. Yep. There we go. Knew that was coming. All right. We'll just keep it in this mode. Yup. Here come the bots. This one doesn't even have, like, random characters. Like, these should be pretty easy for Twitch to automate banning of. So. Yeah. There is, like, a bunch of stuff, a bunch of things being said in chat that seem a little body to me. My card's word should be banned. Yeah, I don't know, uh... I don't know how to add that to the bot. Um. Okay. Next, make the exploit into a blue pill and make the phone virtualize itself for the perfect root kit. Unfortunately, this phone does not have virtualization support. Otherwise, that would actually be really fun. Eat bonds like you for breakfast. Yup. Yeah, don't forget to follow if you want to talk in chat. <laughs> um... You can add from the Twitch interface directly. Let me see here. Um, yeah, I don't see anything that's trivially accessible. I'm not too worried about it. I'm fine staying in follower only mode. Cut down on those bots. We typically don't have bot problems here, but you know, you get what you get. All right, so some of the code that we haven't audited yet, which is the scariest code that I have, is basically when we take this snapshot, we have to translate all of the physical memory. So let's take a look at translate. Going to get the address for the table, the TTBR table, um, and that's good, and get the index into the table. We're then going to read the entry in that physical page as a U32, and we're gonna switch based on the type of entry in that table. And honestly, I think this code's pretty good. I like for some reason I went to bed thinking this code was really bad quality and honestly it's like it's really not bad. Um so we got a table here, uh get an index into the table, read an entry. This is for a page table. If the bottom bits are zero, then it's not mapped. A large page and a small page, it's impossible to reach this location because all of the possibilities are hit. Then we have a section here. Um same sort of thing. Honestly, yeah, I think that code's good. I think it's, let's see, comments. Translate a virtual address into a physical address. Yeah, I think I'm plenty fine with that. Flute time. Okay, that looks good. And then the next thing that I want to look at are the actual physical memory accessors. And that is mainly here. And this is the code. This is the code. That is sus. Um, SP source fizzmem.rs um, routines for managing uh, physical memory in the kernel, uh, or more specifically for accessing physical memory in the kernel. Okay, and we'll throw this into here. And we'll pull in a fizzmem from this. So we'll do pub mod is mem and this will now fail to build so we're gonna pull in use crate fizz mem uh fizz mem okay and that's private all right 422 um oh yeah we also need the trait Fizz reader traits. And I think we need to make that trait public. Right? Pub traits, fizz reader. We'll make that trait public. Okay, and then fn new, we'll make this public, which will give us uh, create a new physical memory accessor, which is good. Uh, 408 private field. Oh, that's in here. Okay, so we'll do D1000. Um, we're gonna move this and we're gonna do a pub mod uh, page table. And we're gonna make another module called page table, source 
page table.rs. Um, this module contains the code for walking uh, page tables, right? And translate, and then we'll do use create fizzmem, uh, fizzmem. And we'll use create fizz, uh, actually we'll put uh, fizz adder and vert adder in here as well. So we're gonna move those quickly. And basically what we're just doing right now is just cleaning up this code uh, to be a little bit cleaner and move some things around so we don't have so much going on in one file that's unrelated to what that file is said to do. Um, so we're gonna need to fix up a bunch of errors here. Uh, read fizz, we need to pull in this trait, which is uh, fizz reader, which allows us to read physical memory. Uh, 16, um, this TTBR0 off of fizz. I'm just gonna make that pub, I guess. Um, so I think these need to be unsafe. All of these accessors need to be unsafe to access um, physical memory because if you give it a bad address, it could have undefined behavior. Uh, we'll say a flush TLB also. Um, flush all TLBs um, and branch uh, predictor and branch caches are related to address. Okay. And then, since we made those unsafe, we can make that field public. Um, 328. Virtual address and physical address, we need to pull those in. Uh, use create, um, uh, this is in snapshot that we need these. Fizzmem vert adder, uh, fizz adder. So we're just doing some code cleanup, some boring stuff to start things off, get everything going, then we'll get into the fun hackings. Um, nice, we already have fizzmem. It's about to say, sure we pulled things in already. Okay, translate. We're gonna make this a pub unsafe function. And we'll, uh, translate is called here. So we're just gonna say um, page create page table translates. Um, and this is gonna be virtual address is equal to this. Paste, put some new lines in here. Um, and are we unsafe? Yes, we're unsafe here, good. So we'll say virtual address and we'll try to translate that address. So that should be fixed now. Uh, 330 patter, oh, dot zero. So both of these are gonna be pub and then make these structures pub as well. Okay, and then fizz adder, we don't have in fizz mem. So we're gonna do, oh yeah, I want these in fizz mem, not here. There we go. Fixed, read fizz. Um, okay, uh, config page offset. Um, I don't think that's used anymore here, sweet. So we'll pull an implant from crates and then we'll pull in here. Uh, use crate config page offsets. Okay, 133. Read fizz, uh, unsafe FN. 147. Bunch of these unsafes are no longer unsafe. Unsafe. Uh, like those ones are no longer needed. Right, so we've moved a lot of this into unsafe blocks, which I'm okay with. Making a new physical memory accessor, that should be unsafe because we might, we might not be running in the kernel when this happens. So we can get rid of the, that unsafe block and make it just fully unsafe. Um, this one we definitely don't need unsafe for. Uh, drop, that one we do need unsafe for. Read fizz, 
No longer need on safe here, and we're almost done with this code cleanup. Uh, 124 in Fizzmem. Okay. Um, yep. This is uh, restore the old mapping for the address we took control of, and then flush the TLBs. Okay. So that looks good. We've kind of reorganized our code to be a little bit cleaner. And let's take a look at our, um, we looked at translate, let's look at our physical memory accessors. So um, this flush TLB, see our 8610. So we're gonna have to go and look that up in the ARM manual, file home pleb Android. And we're gonna just look to make sure that we are flushing those caches correctly. Organization of CP15s. And then we want to look at the C8s, which are TLB maintenance. And we have a use of C8, C6. So C8, uh, 8061. So 8061. Invalidate, uh, data TL Invalidate data TLB entry by uh, MVA and ACID. And in this case, we know ACIDs aren't being used. So this will invalidate that TLB entry for that address. And then we also flush the branch predictors if we take a look at um, C7. And we'll look at 7056, 7056. Invalidate all branch predictors. Um, so we can say um, flush TLB um, ACID associated with address. And then this is flush all branch predictors. Okay, and we have a data a serialization barrier or synchronization barrier. Um, we do those instructions, then a DSB and an ISB, which is what is required by the, um, by the manual. The manual says that we need those barriers, which makes sense. This is gonna make sure that all memory operations have occurred before we do this. This is gonna make sure that all memory operations have occurred, and this is gonna make sure all instructions have executed before we continue on. It basically makes sure that those, um, those modifications to those tables don't end up happening out of order, uh, which is what we do there. Okay, then uh, the next thing that we do, here we actually create access to physical memory. Um, we read the TTBRs. We make sure TTBCR is zero. That's the only mode we currently support translations of. We get, an, we get a slice to the table by taking the page offset for the um, linear memory mapping, and we take the physical address of the table, and we use that to get a slice of 4,096 U32s. We then search through that table to find the first entry or the lowest virtual address that is not mapping anything. Um, and if we fail to find one, then we return with an error indicating that there is no memory that we can map in, compute a virtual address that we're of the mapping we're going to create, and then we save off the old table entry here, uh, which is good. That's just saving off the initial state. We then return a structure that kind of represents uh, the free index that we found, that mapping that we we're going to create. And then on a drop handler, we restore the old entry back to where it was and then flush the TLBs for that address. So that looks good there. Then what this is going to do, uh, we already have comments on that through the trait, so we're not gonna comment this. Um, this is going to read physical memory. We're gonna say while there is data that is expected to be read, uh, get the physical, get the one megabyte aligned address that corresponds to this memory. Uh, then we're going to write in the physical address of what we want to map into that temporary entry in the page table. So we're modifying the page table to map something in, flush the TLBs for it, get a slice into that memory. Um, and then here we're reading that memory. Um, into the buffer, we're basically computing how many bytes remain in the page. This is how many bytes, um, yeah, how many bytes remain in the page, the offset into the page that we're accessing, and we basically find the smaller of the two, the number of bytes that the user wants to read from the page or that exist in the page, because we're windowing memory, right? We're basically, we're um, 
we're changing the page tables to represent a different physical address, and we change that out with a new physical address every time we want to read something new. And what this is doing is basically checking to see whether or not the bytes can be satisfied from the currently mapped thing. If they can't be, then we will read them in the next iteration of the loop. So here, we determine the smaller of the two, the buffer length, or the remainder of bytes in this page. We read the memory into the buffer, we advance the pointer in the buffer, we advance the address, and then we go to the next page and we loop indefinitely until we fill in that buffer with all of the memory that was requested. Um, honestly, that looks pretty good. And that's the end of that code, and that's the end of all the code, and everything looks really, really good now. So, took a snapshot really fast, 834 uh, milliseconds to take that arm dot equals dot equals dash what equals dash swap okay get status um vim get ignore we're gonna ignore um full core files which is our snapshot format get status get add source star get status get commit am everything looks uh, clean snapshots take about 900 milliseconds. Okay, so now we've basically gotten this code to a nice polished state. So, um, writing this snapshot to disk is really slow. And due to that, um, we might see if we can write this over the network. So I'm gonna I'm gonna experiment with that. We're gonna um, we're gonna get this phone hooked up to my Wi-Fi, and we're gonna see if we can um, send data over Wi-Fi faster than we can uh, write it to disk. I don't like how long this takes. Get push. I don't have an upstream right now. Why is the TTBCR in assembly and not Rust? It's accessing a um, it's accessing a system register that I'm not aware of a built-in Rust accessor for. So basically, we have to read a register that is kind of only visible in assembly. Okay, so I'm gonna get rid of this register print um, here, and I can get rid of spinny thread is back. That is implied. Snapshot time was that. Um, what other prints do I have? Implant already installed, spinning thread, that's gone. That print's gone, that's gone. Got that many serialized bytes. And now what I can do is make another timer. Um, um, what I think I'm gonna do is let IT is instant now, and then uh, let elapsed is IT elapsed as seconds f64 and then print um wrote out snapshot data in 10.6 microseconds all right we'll just say milliseconds and we'll do that up here too milliseconds and we'll do one e uh three here um okay um so say uh wrote snapshot to disk in this many milliseconds. IT, um, 128. Elapsed. Yeah, um, oh, I see what we're doing there. Okay. So we're just gonna say IT dot elapsed and get that time, okay. So now this is going to go through and kind of print statistics about the slow part of our exploit. So in this case, 873 milliseconds, so almost a second to actually take the snapshot of the kernel. Um, and now we're writing all of that memory out to disk, which is taking some good time. White Claw for the boys, hell yeah. So we're gonna see here. Write to dev null, we actually need this data, so we can't dev null it. All right. Let's see where this goes. 
I have no idea how long this actually takes. It might be more than a minute. It is slow. Yeah. Yeah. 800, 873 milliseconds. Yeah, 53 seconds. 53.8 seconds to take that, to save the snapshot to disk. So that's a bit of a problem. So what we're going to do is um, I'm going to hook this phone up to Wi-Fi. So let me get that done here. Let's see how hard that is. Um, unfortunately, that means I have to type in my Wi-Fi password, which is going to be a pain in the ass because it's on a shitty phone. And I also have to find my Wi-Fi password, which is also really difficult. So I have no idea what this phone is capable of pushing um, through Wi-Fi, but we're going to see. Hopefully it can push, What what is that, 400 megs in 60 seconds? So this is like 3 or 4 megabytes per second, which is atrocious. And then we have to do an ADB pull, data, local, temp, snapshot.faultcore. Um, oh, and I, I pulled it. Um, but it also takes, uh, we're going to time this. So it takes 54 seconds to save the snapshot, and then it takes the time we're about to learn uh, to actually um, read that from the phone. So it's a lot more than just that one minute. So if we have it save over Wi-Fi, uh, we save quite a bit of time here. So let me see here. Actually, I can, hmm, let me see. Um, Okay. All right. Um. Uh. Okay. And connect to Wi-Fi. Obtaining IP address. And connected. Okay, so that phone is now on Wi-Fi. So we can turn the camera back on. Um, how big is the snapshot? 400 megabytes. But yeah, that still hasn't pulled down. So basically, it took 54 seconds, 54, uh, 54 seconds to take the snapshots. And then, how long is this going to take to pull it off the device? Uh, 60 plus 49 divided by 60. Yeah, it takes two, two minutes and um, two minutes and 42 seconds for us to snapshot a device and pull it off the phone. That's unacceptable, right? Um, so what we want to do is hopefully uh, get it faster by doing it over Wi-Fi. So I'm just going to do. Um, We made our snapshotting really fast yesterday, um, like taking taking only 100 or 800 milliseconds is really good for that snapshot, and I don't think we can really improve that much. So this should return really quickly after we uh, do that. Implant already installed. This is taking time to allocate memory, I think, unless it just died. Nope. It was good. Um, okay, so that took a lot of time to allocate memory. So I'm going to kind of clean some of that. Um, up a bit, so we'll see here. Um, is the snapshot compressed? It is not. Okay, so we're going to try and write this to the network. And to do this, I'm just going to do um, an ncl123 dev null. Uh, 12345, okay. And then we're going to do a, um, I think it's TCP socket in Rust. I forget TCP uh, Rust. I think it's TCP, TCP stream. Yeah. So stream is equal to TCP stream um, connect 
And then we'll do gamey.bfa.lk, one, two, three, four, five. Make sure that succeeds. And then we'll do stream dot write uh, buff writer on this, which we should be able to do. So wrap that up in something that will buffer the IO. And then we're gonna write all snapshot dot serialized mem dot dot ret. Okay, so that's basically the same thing. Um, and then we're gonna temporarily just say uh, standard net for now. Make that mute. Let's see what happens. Okay. And come on. As long as we can beat two and a half minutes, it's faster. Um, yikes. Even the Wi-Fi is slow on this damn thing. Um, unless the connection failed, but I don't think so. Or Netcat's really slow. I don't know if Netcat's going to be happy with that. Candle getting rowdy? Oh, yeah. Candle's always rowdy here. What is a snapshot? All of physical memory state and all of register state. Yikes. <laughs> can you see how big the snapshot is if you compress it? Yeah, I can. Um, okay, it took 77 milliseconds. I wonder if some of the pages are all zeros. Many of the pages will be all zeros, I, I would suspect. Um, compression ratio will be pretty high. And we can do that by doing like snapshot.fultcore. I think netcat will be fine here. I don't think netcat is going to slow things down. Um, what is that transfer rate, though? This divided by... Um, how long did that take? 77.8. That many bytes per second... Divided by 1024, 1024, 4.92 megs a second? The fuck? Can you tell me this phone is only capable of 4 megs a second over Wi Fi? That seems unlikely. Um, what is that in bits? Times eight, 40 megabit. What flavor Wi Fi? I'm not sure. Status. Um, I don't know where to find the uh, status on that. And then that netcat completed, and we have all the bytes here. So unless Netcat and Cat is slow, old phones are very slow with Wi-Fi, yeah. Morning from the UK, good morning, Tom Cass, good to see ya. All right, so we can do a gzip um, snapshot.faultcore. So this is taking a long time. Um, yeah, that took a really long time, but it got a 4x compression, right? So if we gun zip snapshots, so let's see what happens when we go in a zoom mode. Uh, gzip um, dash one snapshot dot fault core, um, and then time this. Four seconds uh, to decrease it by a four x. So we'll go to basically if we're doing. Um, if we're doing five megabytes per second, this is now 101 megs. So we could say 101 divided by 4.92, 
20 seconds plus probably 20 seconds to compress it. Um, it's probably faster for us to gzip it. Now, do I want to do that? Do I even, like, do I want to increase the complexity by gzipping it? Uh, kind of depends on Rust support for that. Let's find, let's see if there's a good gzip library. Um, not worth it, yeah. It's going to speed it up by, like, 30%, but it adds complexity. So I don't think it's worth it. Unless I can, like, get something, um... Unless I can get something from, like, uh, bzip2, um, fast snapshot.faultcore, and we'll see if this is somehow, for, for some reason, fast, but this should be much slower than gzip, but we'll see if it gets some crazy uh, compression. What's the worst info that can be leaked through this? Is there anything valuable that couldn't be leaked through memory? I mean, theoretically, there are some secrets that are higher than memory. Yeah, that didn't compress any better. Um, so, no reason to do that. BGN, so it should be able to do much higher speeds. Yeah, that's what I would think. Um, is Netcat slow? Like, is NCAT slow? Is it the... So I can do a buff writer um, in Rust. I can set the capacity higher of the buffered writer. I think it's uh, I think it's 16k by default um, with capacity. And was it by default 8k? Oh, that's not a huge amount of buffering, but typically that doesn't matter with capacity. Um, capacity and inners. We'll just say uh, one meg here. So I'll send one meg at a time. This is going to fail to connect. Nice. Flate 2 is the best compression lib. Okay, cool. Um, so I'm just going to make a server quick. Cargo new bin discard server. Um... And we're just going to uh, TCP listener, I think. We'll just do uh, use standard net TCP listener. Um, let's, or uh, for let's listener is equal to TCP listener bind 0, 0, 0, 0, uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Um, IO results camera just died um res io results nothing use standard io so i'm getting rid of basically if for some reason ncat is slow i don't know if it is i can't imagine why it would be but we're just gonna be careful and then for stream in listener dot incoming um We'll do stream dot uh, read. Um, reader is equal to buff reader stream um, new stream stream dot read. Hmm. And we can just do this. Uh, let me buff is uh, one meg. And then we can do a uh, loop um, stream dot read mute buff. So we're just going to read into that buffer. And that's all we're going to do. Okay. Uh, cargo run release. Incoming. Is that not right? What? Why did? Oh, not fun on results. Oh, okay. Yeah, question mark. And we need a question mark on this as well. Um, 
let stream is stream. And then we need uh, self and read. And this is just going to make sure we're truly discarding that result, uh, which is important for us. Okay, so that should be listening. That will, this will connect into it. And this will hopefully be faster, maybe, or something. But I don't think so. Unfortunately, I just think Wi-Fi is really slow on this phone. Um, hey, Craze, how's it going? How are you doing? All right, this didn't speed it up at all. Good to know. Not too surprised. The only thing that would make sense is if NCAT is really slow. But, yeah. I have no idea why it's that slow. Wi-Fi settings. Um, hmm. Should take like 75 seconds. All right, yep, 73 seconds. It's technically an improvement, and then this should have maybe crashed or something, but we don't care. Um, ARM RF discard server. So, it's better, it's better to do it over the network. Uh, it saves us a minute and a half. So this is, um, write out the um, snapshot data over the network. So unfortunately, it's, it's faster. Okay. Stream. Then this is stream. We'll do stream.flush and get all of that written out. So now, and we'll just do a buff writer new, and then TCP on standard net. Use standard net TCP stream, and now TCP stream. This is going to basically create that and send it off. We don't need file anymore. Nice. Connection refused. Yep. Um, NCL12345 snapshot. Uh, we can just go into... I'm just going to do this on another monitor. Sorry, chat, but uh, this stuff doesn't matter too much. We're just going to go to Android, Motorola, simple thrower, remove the snapshots. Um, I'm also going to remove the old exploit entirely. Thrower, just so we don't get confused there. And we'll go into simple thrower. And uh, NCL12345 into snapshot.faultcore. Done. Make run. So this is now going to take a snapshot, and we're going to make sure that this boots in Q QEMU. And if it does, then we'll continue on from here. All right. Chat, don't be thirsty. Chat's so dumb today. Yeah, don't be thirsty, chat. It looks silly. So dumb. You are really dumb for real. <laughs> no thirst in here, dude. We're just chilling. We turned into what we hate. We just we just need to take a step back, become a normal chat. This chat should behave like a chat would in person. That's my that's my view of this chat. It should behave as if you were talking to someone in person. And thus, no cringe, just chilling, just hanging out, being cute. All right. 
Hello, gamers. Hey, Supercuber, how you doing? Is that an Arian chair? It is. This steam dry. This steam. This stream drier than the Sahara Desert. Wow. Wow. Rude. But maybe true. Okay, so we're just waiting for that snapshot. And it might seem like it's slow, but we've done everything we can. I have a feeling some of these would behave like this in person. Yeah. How do you plan to boot the snapshot in QME? We already wrote that the other day. We just load up physical memory and the register states uh, with this snapshot, and we just continue from there. I feel like it's been 75 seconds by now. Right? It feels like it's been 75 seconds. It's not dead, is it? Nope, phone's still alive. Phone's good. It does feel that way. Hmm. Come on. Maybe I need to, like, press the phone to squeeze the bits out. So I'll try and, you know, like, kind of roll it up like a toothpaste tube and try to, like, really squeeze those bits out of there. But it, it doesn't seem like it's helping. That didn't work, unfo unfortunately. Unfortunately, that didn't work. Um, what the fuck's going on? It did take like 75 seconds when we did it over Netcat, right? It totally did. And I don't think it's frozen. I don't know. Can the radio go to sleep? Not if I'm using it. I'm just in user space. I'm not doing anything too, too messy. And there we go, 193 seconds. Wrote snapshot to disk. It's not actually to disk. Um, I don't think the buffered IO was the change. Um, wrote snapshot to network. We did add flush. But I I don't think it's that. I mean, we technically don't need flush because we're going to close the socket. Um, let's see here. With capacity, one meg. So I'm going to make one meg capacity. We're going to try this again just to see... What's going on here? Maybe that was a weird fluke. I don't know. Okay. If the signal is bad enough that you can't use 802.11.n, you're stuck with 50 megabit. Yeah, and that we're basically right in that ballpark, aren't we? We calculated 39 megabit, which I'm sure with encoding is probably right in that territory something like that um the signal isn't bad i am i am about three feet from the access point now there's a chance that being that close to the access point is actually hurting it um but i have full bars on the wi-fi according to this so yep Um, I don't know if I have a good way to see the, um, the status for the network. I don't know if I can find that. I'd like to see the link state, but I don't see it anywhere here. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe data manager? Data delivery? No. Nope. It's pretty bad. It's pretty bad. 
Um, I also have to shave my head, but it doesn't look like that. I mean, my head's not shaved. I still have, like, a couple millimeters of hair on it. Try streaming comp compression inflate 2. It's basically dropping on top of TCP stream. Yeah, I might try that next. NC was one change. You might try switching back to the Rust server. I unfortunately deleted it. 136 seconds. Unless it was to dev null that we got that perf. I'm going to try dev null. We're going to keep AB testing. I wouldn't be surprised if redirection is really slow. Eh, it shouldn't be that slow, though. Netcat is pretty optimized. Yeah, but I am doing I am doing um standard out redirection. So maybe that's slow. Huh. It's time to get on a next level creating a Minecraft server. Oh man, I'm not smart enough to, for Minecraft. You gotta be like at least 12 to play that game. I'm not there yet. It was the Minecraft server on your bear servers. In theory. That's a crazy difference between doing the same thing. Maybe Wi-Fi is just flaky. Oh, like these? Yeah, that's true. We did we did change the width capacity to a larger number. Um but yeah. We're trying to dev null here. Get a M5D large server on AWS. That's that's weaker than the servers I have here. I would, I would, that would literally be a downgrade from my computers here. What is that? An M M5D large? What is that? 64 cores? Some shit like that? Some pleb cores? That ain't gonna be much. Is that even a real thing or are you just making up numbers? M5D dot large. M5D dot large. Yeah, two cores. Two cores. <laughs> it's got two cores. That's impressive. I like how they call that a large server. Computers don't run in clouds. Too wet. Too moist. Too moist. God damn, dude. I'm gonna kill this. Um, can you netcat to a file? Can you output dash O, something like that? No. No, I don't see an output option. Am I crazy? Two. And one, yeah, yeah. Okay. All right. Hmm. That's that's so random, you know. So we do have a snapshot. We're gonna convert that snapshot. See if it works. Uh, go into um, PMEM analysis. And then we'll uh, remove this cargo run release. Make sure that we are able to successfully convert that. Looks like we were able to. Looks good. And then we can go and run. Um, hmm. We'll go into this directory here. Oops. CD into there. And then we'll go into... Um, We're experiencing the 4 a.m. thirst. Yeah, I'm, I'm about to do some timeouts here pretty damn soon. All right, Craze, get your shit together. Get get your shit together. Um, What else we got here? 
Who's el who else isn't behaving in chat and being fucking cringe? Get your shit together. Don't be cringe. Where's the emulate thing? I had that in thrower and I deleted it. Um. Yeah. <laughs> Let me go grab that quick. I won't be cringe ever again. Yeah, we come down with a heavy hiss fist here. We moderate the shit out of our chat. But yeah, I'm okay with some cringy shit if it's not 95% of the chat. But if it's two people doing cringy shit doing most of the chatting, then that's when I'm going to basically stop people. But if there's a real conversation going on and then some cringe shit in the background, that's all fine with me. Almost certainly the same person, yeah. Does seem like that's the case. Um, there just need to be more of us. Ah, <sighs> okay. Let me find where this code is. I think I can find um, this command that I need to type from my Twitter, and then I can go to my own Twitter, and then I can go to my the uh what to this and then i can maybe can you copy and paste out of here i think you can there we go there we go okay nice uh vim emulate.sh look at that uh set paste paste okay just some weird formatting not too big of a deal just make sure these, get those on new lines. Get some new lines going. Um, I guess we want this on the new line. And then we have to delete trailing spaces. Not a big deal. Clean all those up. And there we go. Good enough. We did it. We're in. chmod plus x emulate emulate. All right. And then this is going to run the snapshot we just took in the Emulator, GDB commands, ah, oh, fuck. GDB commands dot text. What do we want to do? Um, target remote one, two, three, four. Um, add symbol file. Um, we want home pleb Motorola VM Linux. So we want to add this. Add symbol file home pleb Motorola simple thrower simple thrower and I think just thrower is the name of that. Okay, so um, and then x uh, display i pc that looks pretty good. Um, couldn't load that. Uh, home pleb Android Motorola. There we go. I know how to type a path. I can do basic Linux things. There we go. And now we should be in the kernel with symbols. Noise. Um, why did stepping fill there? Oh, because I need to rebuild, uh... Cumio. Android Cumio make J32. Um, what happened here? Um, I had an emerge fail, and I'm curious if that is dead. Let me see here. Um, I might just need to reconfigure lib. Um, yeah, it looks like that got updated, so we just have to reconfigure. Um, configure uh, help. And we just want to configure for target list is arm soft MMU. Okay. 
Just gonna reconfigure all of that. Hopefully this does the trick. I actually don't know if I can configure. Didn't they change this to use Mason or whatever? I think we should be fine. Let's go. Son of a bitch. Okay, um, J32, the absolute flex. That's not, we don't even have that many cores. We only have eight cores on this system. Yeah, so that's rebuilding basically everything. Oh, um, help. We need TCI. We want to build this with TCI. Enable TCG interpreter. Enable TCG with the bytecode interpreter. That's what we want. J192 next, yeah. Yeah, we'll do that in a second. Um, We're actually pretty close to moving all of this work over to that server. Uh, once we actually get, I mean, we're pretty much at the stage now. So let's go into, uh, let's go into Polar. Um, we don't need those. DFH, and we're going to uh, get clone wherever QMU is on GitHub. And I forget how to build it because they don't have the configure stuff anymore, but whatever. And then we'll be able to build it much faster here. Not that it really matters. I mean, we might start doing make. We might start making some modifications to QMU pretty quick here. Um, so we'll kind of see what what goes into that. Android with two terabytes of RAM. That would be fun. We'd finally be able to run Java. Java wouldn't run out of RAM. <laughs> CD Quemu. Yeah, and it, um, we do have configure. So hopefully we can do a um, configure help, configure. We might not have all the libraries we need on this system to enable this. Uh, target list arm soft MMU with TCG interpreter, I think. Mm, TCI interpreter. Okay, okay, be like that. Uh, enable T enable TCG interpreter. Okay, so this might not be able to build. We don't have QMU installed on this machine. Yeah, we need those. Or just sudo emerge ask quemu emerge ask quemu, and we'll get sudo and quemu here. Okay. It's okay, we want these things anyways. Um, what's this gonna build? Uh, libping, all of these things basically you will instantly compile. Um, the only thing in here that'll take a little bit of time to compile is QMU, which is fine, they'll build pretty fast. That HTOP, hell yeah. Okay. Oh yeah, we did sudo as well. Nice. I want sudo. Um, libjpeg turbo. Oh yeah. Do we already have sudo installed? Not yet. Okay. And then I don't have all the targets, but I think it should be fine. We should be able to get most of what we need here. On the host, I have all the targets, and that might have pulled in some more libraries or dependencies, so we'll see what we need here. Installing JPEG. There's glib, which is one of the things we needed. Okay. Shared mime info. We got a little mime going, a little mime action. MTA, that one should be nearly instant. Hey, we got sudo. Libslurp, that's a good one. 
that user land networking, pretty good. And then there we go, we're getting Q QEMU installed. And then also, what else is still emerging right now? Sudo? Is sudo, su like, why does sudo take more than one second to build? <laughs> That's kind of weird. 2BH. See if all the cores light up here. I don't know if they will. We're probably in the configure phase right now. There we go. Now we got sudo. Hey, it is going to use some cores. That's not bad. It's not great, but it's not bad. Oh, did QMU build that fast? <laughs> Was that it? Was that it for Q QMU? It's theoretically still running. But I think it's probably just linking at this point. There we go. QMU. Okay. Vim Etsy sudoers. And then we're going to just basically give us sudo pleb all equals all no password all sudo su nice nice okay so now we have sudo and we'll build a q qmu here and this should be able to pass dependencies now of course Ooh, it's cloning those things. Man, fucking external dependencies. That's some stupid shit. Configure pulling down repos. That's kind of dumb. IMO. We do have Ninja, which is good. Make J192. And now we'll just build this. Here we go. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Fucking capstone. Is that using C++? Yeah. Oh, the capstone make, make files don't build in parallel? Nice. What's going on here? Fill to add default path? Why is it trying to do X11 stuff? Let's see if we can disable that. Um... I just want it to be headless. I don't know how much Q QMU hates to be headless, but I feel like I should be able to say, like, no GUI or something. Um, default is enabled. So what? what is default? Default is enabled if available. Thoughts on Capstone and Unicorn? Unicorn is incredibly slow. It's pretty shit. Um, Capstone's okay. Like, perf doesn't really matter too much. Flute? Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Beep. So... Why is it trying to do, like, a UI? That's what I don't understand. And I think the build process maybe is just broken. No support for those. TCG support, debug, interpreter. Like, nothing in here. Nothing really looks like um, it would be using X. So what, okay, what was that? What was the error code? Let's just see why it's failing. Um... Hmm. 
Let's see. Yeah, make. Should fail right away. I guess it's in some other shit. Um. J32. Fail to add default include path. User share X11. Yeah, that's not going to exist because we don't have X11. Um, huh. Hmm. Seems like a weird build system thing. From the headless arc package? Okay, let's try that. That looks good to me. I like that. VirGL, OpenGL, BRLL, VTE, GTK, okay. Same problem. Um, let's see if this is a recent thing. But I don't think so. Had some nutty people in chat today? Yup. Yup. Just people trolling and being stupid. Thinking they're like getting attention when they're just looking like an idiot. The standard. Um, XKB should be pulled in by default. Yeah, I mean, I have XKB, right? Like, XKB, um, like, it's, it's working, but it can't find that default include path, which is kind of strange. Um, I don't know if there's a patch in Gentoo for it, but... I don't know. I'm tempted to just add. Let's see. It's XKBD, right? This is going to pull in some X stuff, but I think it mainly just wants this for like font things. That's fine. I'm okay with that. It's not a big deal. I don't really care if this machine gets cluttered with shit. I'll just reformat it when I'm bored with it. So we'll get some libx stuff too, uh, like libx11, which will be probably important for this. Not a big deal. Not too worried about it. Okay, so we should hopefully be able to run this now. Um, step. Yep, that looks like that's working. And we should be able to return back to user space. And we just did. So now we're in user space. Yep, that looks good. So we are basically... Um, yeah, our snapshot mechanism over the network works. It's a little bit faster. Um, so we could try, uh, we could try the, uh, crates.io. We could try flate and see if that speeds it up. How much that improves it by flate two. Deflate compression, decompression, and it should be drop in place is the rumor. Um, so hopefully I can just drop this to a, uh, a gzip file. Disable XKB common. I'm just not going to care about it. I'm just going to let that go. I don't really care. Um, so let's pull in Flate. First, let's actually make sure Flate builds. There's a chance that it doesn't. I wouldn't be surprised if Flate doesn't build. So let's first make sure we can even use it. Um... What? My internet's up, right? I didn't lose internet. No, I should be good. Um, uh, 
What? Uh, let's see here. Okay. Weird. Why would that happen? Well, that's that's weird. I think the Rust build might have failed um, due to an LVM build failing on my ho build failing on my host. So there's a chance that might just be in kind of a fucked state. Let's see if this works now. This should now be fine. Let's see. Are we using cores? Nope. Did it fail? I think it's waiting on capstone. No. Oh, come on, dude. Fail to add default. Okay, what? Do I need to tell it where XKB is? Unless I need lib XKB. Um. Hmm. That's a bit strange. Do you have network sandbox? I do not. Um. Try emerge that to fix rust. Okay, okay, okay. I'll try it. I'll try it. I'll try it. I ain't scared. I ain't scared. But yeah, I, I have a basically the latest uh, Gen 2 update failed uh, due to L of. LVM added a new target that clearly they weren't expecting that someone had enabled. And I have all LVM targets enabled with an asterisk. Um, so we'll see here. Hey, I think that worked. Yes, thank you. Yeah. Those are just in kind of a weird state. Um, okay, what the fuck's going on here? Um, disable xkb common. Let's see. If it's going to respect that. But so now what we should be able to do here is um, connection refuse. That's good. So we'll pull in. So that built. Good to see. Um, Zlib encoder. Okay. So we should be able to, uh, let's just look at the docs. And yeah, there we go, gzip encoder. And then we just wrap uh, an op, uh, we wrap, I guess just that buff writer. So let mute stream is equal to gz encoder. And then this will just take stream and probably move that in. That won't need to be mute then. Um, and then we'll just need to pull in those things from flight. Um, flight to GC encoder compression. I think we might need specifically the right one. Yes. Use flight to uh, write GC encoder and then compression. And hopefully that'll do the trick. Looks good. Looks like it builds. So now I should be able to netcat this into faultcore.gz. And let's try it. Poggers. Hell yeah. Disable uh, W error. I don't think those are warnings. Um, OK, did I, is XKB printing in here? I don't know, let's just see what happens here. Hopefully that does the trick. I don't know why it would need that. Um, looks like it failed again. Maybe, maybe. 
Yeah. Um, what the fuck is it doing, dude? Does Gen 2 have a patch for this? Like, is Gen 2 applying a patch? What the fuck is wrong with this thing? I think it's expecting, like, a full X install or something like that, which is kind of stupid. Um, frustrating. Frustrating. Um... Hmm. Let's use flags. Let's try to install XKB common. Uh, I think I have it. Maybe not. Oh, maybe not. No, that's for rebuild. Yeah. Yeah, we already had it. Which makes sense. Um, yeah, it, it's just trying to use a path that's incorrect. Um, right? Failed to include this path, right? It's trying to use this path, when ultimately it probably wants, like, user local share, maybe something. Or user x11. Let's just, uh, we're just going to do the real thing. We'll just do the fuck you, um, and the fuck you is going to be, um, uh, what do we want? Just xorg? Xorg. Yeah, this is the large software suite. This is like everything. Pseudo Etsy updates. I'm fine with this. Um... Uh, I'm fine with replacing all of those in this case. Um, unmet requirements. Yeah, I see. Um, e select profile list. Um, set. I guess we'll just switch to desktop. I don't know. I mean, I could try and figure it out, but I just, I just don't care. Um, new use. Uh, we'll just do a depth clean first, quick. Export XKB config root. Yeah, we're just going to go with this, though. Um, update new use deep. Um, with BDEPS Y World. 10 gifted sub subs by Fantil. Thank you so much for that. Poggers in chat. That's getting the, that's getting the whole sub train going. Uh, pseudo Etsy updates. Oh, I need to ask for those to apply those. Okay. Yeah, holy shit. 10 gifted subs. God damn. Cheers, man. Glad you're enjoying the content. Would you like to add these? Yes, I would. Etsy update, negative five. Let's go. I don't know. How much shit is this going to build? Not too much, right? What made you decide to build Gentoo? Being able to or use Gentoo, building everything from scratch is fun for me. And we don't even need this machine yet, so we're just kind of getting that configured for the future. Okay, how long did that take when we did the gzipped version? 227 milliseconds. Unfortunately, it's literally slower. Um, it's literally slower. Okay. I mean, we could try, we could try the fastest compression mode. Let's do that first. Got another gifted sub going to SureSack. Thank you so much, Fantil. Hell yeah. Glad you're enjoying the content. Optimize for fast. Uh, compression. We'll just say, let's use fast compression here. And I'll get rid of the flush, but... I don't think that should matter. So now we're using faster compression. 
Optimize for zoomies? See what we can do. I didn't forget about you. Aw. Yeah, I mean, it's trying to do compression on that shitty phone CPU. What are you What are you saying about this phone CPU, dude? You dissing? You dissing this phone from 2010? I'll actually, I'll have you know, I think it was May 2011 when this phone was released. So this phone, I mean, I think it's an 800 megahertz dual core. So I think LZ4 and Z standard would be even faster. It's probably true. So we're seeing what this is doing. At least our snapshot is fast now. We got that much better. Switch into that desktop build. Fuck yeah. Might as well. I'll figure that out some other time, but I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna do that on stream. That's boring as fuck. Um, okay, so GDB died. Standard. Standard stuff. GDB just crashing. Okay. So this looks good, and then this is gonna go into the kernel, right? So there we just did a service call into the kernel. We're gonna dispatch to the, um... We're gonna dispatch into the time 64 syscall. So we probably, it probably tried to do a time, then a time 60, ooh. So that's without the sync. Or without the flush. Um, uh, tar uh, xf snapshot.fullcore.gz does not look like a tar archive, or sorry, uh, gun zip snapshots. Dot gz overwrite. Let's make sure it's valid. Um, snapshot length looks correct. Was the issue the flush all along? Maybe, but we also decreased the size in the network. Um, we can try. We can try going back to new. I don't know why. Like the flush shouldn't slow it down, but we'll try it and just try and A/B test this a bit. Um, uh, default. Thank you. Oh, uh, pseudo, uh, this machine I don't think has ever been updated, um, for like two months, so we might have some problems. We're gonna do a pseudo, uh, emerge web rsync. Get that all pulled up. All right. Yeah, I don't know why that flush would matter for perf. It doesn't really make sense, but here we go. Let's get this going. Default compression level is six, yeah. About what I would expect. So we'll see. Causes rebuilds, that's fine. Building Spider Monkey, nice. Spider Monkey is gonna light up those cores, which is good. Failed to find kernel source directory. Yeah, we don't have Linux kernel. Ah, uh, no, we should have kernel installed. Couldn't find a make file. Hmm. Not too worried about it. What do you want to optimize for getting snapshots? Do you fetch them often? I plan to probably do a, a couple of stream. Um, and it just also increases my confidence in my code and makes my code better. So, wow, maybe it was fast. Just the, the fast mode, I think, was big. Oh, come on, use those cores. Use those cores. Yeah, a lot of things just don't build with all cores. It's sad, man. So many cores getting neglected. Spider Monkey should use that up. No button up, not today. Not today, we're just chilling. It's already pretty late. Yeah, I think this is taking the 200 seconds or so. So yeah, I think we'll go back to fast. Um, I'm just gonna do one more test to see if that lines up. We'll see if this builds. 
I think it should. I can't remember what I was using for this kernel on this. This was like the first Gen 2 thing I installed, so I think I did some dumb shit on it. Too many cores can't light them up. Yep, that's pretty standard. Most things just don't use cores. Failed to emerge. Okay. Okay, and why? Why? The C compiler cannot create executables. Well, that's not great. Oh, that's trying to build it 32-bit, I think. Ah. It's probably trying to build a 32-bit thing. Um, and this system was installed uh, multi-lib, or uh, no multi-lib. Um, we might just reinstall that machine. I'm not 100% sure what we want to do. Um, all right, yep, 219 seconds. So now we're going to try fast, see what that looks like. Yeah, fast makes sense. Yeah, for sure. Basically, we just want to run length and code this. We don't actually really want to compress it. It's just like we really just are looking to reduce like repetitive pages and maybe some like basic ASCII. So we're not really asking too much of the compression uh, compression. Um Yeah, let's go get uh Um, let's just go and grab a stage three. Um, we'll just restart with a stage, a clean stage three here. Um, that looks good. And then I just want to get all the flags right there. Are like some flags that they, they really like to have installed. Um, yeah, we'll do this. All right, get a good thing going here. All right. Exiting with failure. Really? What was the failure? I'll get rid of verbose. Permission denied on syskeep. That's fine. Don't care about that. Not a big deal. Um... Oh, nice, 78 seconds. I'm gonna try one more just to see if it's consistent. But yeah, I think that's going pretty fast. Uh, just sys keep. See if I can remove that. No, I think that's part of like uh, portage or something. Not too worried about it, I think we're fine. We'll do an Etsy, uh, we'll do an emerge web rsync. Uh oh, did we just break everything? We might have broken everything. Um, really? GCC permission to nine? Ah, I should have stayed as root. Um, I lost the password because we had Etsy password get replaced. Oh, that's going to be a tricky one. I think we're fucked on this server now after doing that exit. Uh-oh. Yeah. Um. Yeah, and I don't think I have root at. I think we're just kind of gone on that server. Not a big deal. I was going to reinstall it anyways to get that ready for my offline network. So, not a big deal. Totally fine with that. Let's, uh, all right. Nice. Road snapshot in 78 seconds. So that's a big improvement. Um, 
fucking noise, dude. Let's go into, um, where does that configure? So this is what we're using for the configure command. Um, let's uh, stream term, SSH Grizzly, uh, sudo um, apt build dep qmu. Um, do I need to specifically say qmu um, system? Okay. Uh, oh, I already have that. Wow. Yeah, we've already done a bunch of sh shit on here. Uh, arm rf qmu get clone. Let's pull down qmu here. Um, from GitHub latest. Get it building over here. I shouldn't overwrite my Etsy password. Yeah, I turn, apparently that's a little bit of an issue. I mean, I could go fix that, right? I could just go boot into a recovery CD and, and chroot in. It's really not that big of a deal. Um, uh, CD Quemu, and let's try this. Pseudo Emer, uh, pseudo apt install uh, ninja. Oh, yeah. Um... I don't even know if nin Ninja is in Debian. Uh, ninja build. There we go. Okay. How fast is your internet? Uh, it should be gigabit, but it varies on the day. Okay. Okay. Make J192. There we go. There we go. And done. Not bad. <laughs> Literally takes longer to generate the man pages and link it. Yup. I blinked. Can you do it again? Use Ccache for more insane compiles. It would slow this down. Ccache would definitely slow it down. Um. Let's see here. Okay. Um. Yeah, I think I'm good with that. I might go and try and recover that server quick. Let me grab a flash drive. Where's my USB thingies? Oh, I fell. Be right back. Yay. All right. Camera go brrr. Yes, it did. Let's go grab the install CD. Wow, what a shit mirror. Um, what a terrible mirror. Holy fuck. Huh. Oh, it might take less time for me to plug in my Gentoo mirror hard drive than like literally anything else. Oh my god, that's slow. All right, we're going to race it. Okay. Plug in a hard drive. Come on. Where is it? Find the socket. Son of a bitch. Okay, if I can't plug it in, that's going to be a problem. Um, not used to this microphone angle. There we go. Turn that on. All right, sudo dmessage. Sudo mount dev uh, sdb1 mount mount. Mount. 
Mount, Mount, Gentumir, um, Gentoo releases, Arm, uh, AMD 64, Auto Builds. There we go. Um, DDIF. Uh, actually, I need to go into. Is this a thing? Is that a file? I think it is. Oh, that's the folder. Okay. Um, DDIF is equal to the install CD. The output file is dev SDA. SDA is the flash drive. Block size is one meg. Pseudo. Uh, sync. There we go. Though a few mirrors good in my experience, yeah, I think that's what I mirror from. Um, pseudo U mount mount mount. Okay, I'm gonna go plug this into Polar. Get that going. Beer back. All right, hopefully I plugged that into the right server. Um, yep, it looks like I did. Um, we'll go into, uh, yeah. We can just go and find. Um, polar IPMI. Oh shit, I haven't logged into this on this computer, have I? Yeah, I have no idea what the creds are. Um, shit. Let me see if I can find them. See if I can find them on my phone. Should be able to find them. I think it was relatively recent. Do, do, do. Where are they? I'm gonna assume this is polar, but we'll try it. Um, fuck. Um, okay, okay. Uh, maybe it's this other password. We're in, boys. We're in. 
Um, okay. Just reboot that, go into that. Reset. All right, so I just need to get the boot menu. I forget what it is. I think it's F12 on these servers. Or delete, or F12. I love how you just never know with BIOSes. You just randomly have to guess things, and then hopefully you're right, because if you're wrong, then, then, you're, then you're wrong, and it sucks. F12, Dell. Oh, we can do delete. Delete will get us in a setup, and I'm fine with that. Setup is totally fine here. Unless I missed the window. I might have missed the window there. I guess I can frame it a bit better. There we go. There, there, there. there. Fuck. Um... Yeah, let's see what we got. Was too late. I was hitting the wrong key, and now I have to reboot the classic fucking BIOS. Just smash the top half of your keyboard and you're in, but you might go into the pixie mode. You might go into the disc controller. There's so many things where it can go wrong. Okay, we should be good. There we go. Entering setup. Look at that fast RAM. 2934 megahertz of RAM. Zoom in. There we go. We in. We're gonna boot from, uh, let's override boot option and we'll go into uh, partition one or partition two of the USB stick. And that's gonna be the right one. Yes. Good, good. We're in, we're in. How is it snapshotted? We used uh, we used an Android exploit to um, basically save all of the state out, uh, all of the register state and all of the physical memory state uh, over the network, and then we load that up into QMU. So it's effectively what we, what we do here. Um, so mount uh, SDA. Two mount mount. Um, oops, mount Gentoo, and then we just need to mount the other things. Uh, I always forget the commands that they want you to use. I don't think they're like super critical, but uh, mount types proc proc mount Gentoo proc mount Arbine sys mount Gentoo sys. And we can do that for dev as well. Troot into mount gentoo and then password. And I should just be able to set my password. Oh, come on. Oh, they don't let you do fucking... <sighs> um... Is there a way to just let it set the password? Like, cause that's what I want. That's what I want. Why? <sighs> Does it just need to be eight characters? 
No. God damn it. Controlled an Etsy security config. Hmm. Yeah. Can I just say like none? Enforce none. Man, um, what's the name of that file? Enforce none. Nice. Had it right first try. None. We in. We in. Okay, so... Um, we're just gonna W get that, uh, stage three again. Just make sure everything's all good there. Um... Do we have links? No, we don't. Um, actually, it's in our history. This is the recent one. Uh, 2010, 11, 18. Yeah, looks good to me. And we're just going to re-extract that just in this clean environment. Honestly, we might just set everything up here, make sure everything's good. Um, uh... What flags does it want to extract? Can't remember what flags it wants. I don't think it really matters. Um, actually, I think there are a couple flags that are good. Tar. Um, tar X PF stage three uh, X attributes include. I think this doesn't matter unless you're using SE Linux, but whatever. And then numeric owner. Yeah, no perms on that. I have no idea why. Arm RF sys keep. I don't even know if that file exists. Oh yeah, it's in sys. Yeah, I I don't understand why they have a dot keep file in sys. That's kind of strange, but whatever. Should be fine. Gonna be building with debug? Yeah, all, all of my systems have debug info installed. I guess we probably overwrote the portage configuration file. Um, Etsy portage, portage. Um, what? Make.config. Yeah, um, so just, uh, ggdb, um, what do I do on my host? ggdb, uh, use, um, multi-target will want, and, uh, features, uh, no strip install sources. Make options J192 uh, and emerge default options. Uh, jobs 8's fine here. Portage niceness. I've been doing this recently, portage niceness. And then we can do QMUS. Uh, we don't care about soft targets for those. That should be good enough. Um, emerge. Um, what is it? Man emerge dash uh, I forget what it is to just build everything. Is it dash Change the features last character? Yep. Not too big of an issue. Would have figured that out fast. Um, God, what is it? I 
I forget what the command, uh, I think it's in the first half of the alphabet. <laughs> Not that that's of massive use. Um, treat C. Fuck. Dash E, thank you. Um, emerge E world. Ooh, E select. What? Profile? List. Oh, yeah, yeah, I don't have desktop set. You select profile set um, desktop. Okay. Hello, Mr. Streamer. How you doing, Robobato? How you doing today? That looks good. Yeah, let's see if that's going to succeed. Uh, this is pretty... I don't know. I've never actually tried doing something like this, so I'm curious if this is going to succeed or not. Um, this is a pretty big uh, remerge of everything, and basically we, we replaced our stage three. We reconfigured Portage. The only thing we're really relying on is like some previous installed packages that aren't part of stage three um, staying. Um, but we overwrote pretty much everything else, so I will be very curious... Uh, to see how much stuff this breaks. Um, oh. That might have killed the stream. Oh, God. Did I I switched, uh, I switched terminals on my host. Am I still here? Oh, my God, I'm still here. It might have, it might have broken temporarily. Um, but, yeah, I, I control shift, uh, F to switch to a different terminal. Um, let's, uh, let's not do that. Macro, um, virtual keyboard. <laughs> it froze. Noise. Uh, Truth Mount Gen 2. H top. So we can see that nice H top output. Oh, yeah, the CD-ROM only has 64 cores enabled. Yeah, I forgot about that. <sighs> Fucking CD-ROM, dude. It's not too big of an issue that we're not using all the cores there, to be honest. All right. Anyways, so basically what we want to do is we want to set up... Um, did the stream come back to life? I think it did, right? At least it looks like that on my part. So hopefully we're fine. Um... Okay, I'm gonna throw some food in the oven, refill my water, and I'll be right back.
All right, so basically, we can load our snapshots up into QMU. And we do a stupid snapshot format, but I'm not too worried about that. But I think mainly what we want to do is make it so that we can fuzz this. And if we want to fuzz this, then we need to be able to reset the state of the VM to a prior state. Um, and basically, we need to restore the, restore the register state and restore the... Um, we need to restore the register state, and then we need to restore the memory state, uh, which is basically all that is in our snapshot. And it's been a while since I've been in the QMU source code, so this might be hard. CD uh, Android QEMU. And we're just going to look at... Um, TCI, uh, or find star grep TCI, um, TCG, TCI.C. And we're going to hack this in, right? We're not going to actually do this correctly. We're going to hack it in because that's how we do things here. Um, how do I want to monitor this? I don't think the host system is going to write to memory. Um, so it should be fine. So this this is basically the main emulation loop of QMU. So we're just going to put printf test in there and make sure that we are able to hit that. Because obviously if we can't hit that, then we're going to have some problems because we don't understand how it's working. So should be able to run this. And step, there we go. We got test printing out. And since test is printing out, um, okay, those symbols are wrong because we uh, took a new snapshot. So we're just going to reprocess that snapshot quick. Um, PMEM cargo run release. This is going to make sure that we're on the latest version of the snapshot. Actually, is it? Because we need to extract it. Uh, gun zip snapshot dot gz overwrite. Then we run this. Then we make q. Uh, that's the wrong QMU. Then we make this. I'm gonna close that for now. Okay. So this should now be on the correct snapshot. This is on the latest snapshot that we took. And when we step, we'll see test printout. Um, some instructions it won't. Some it will print. That looks fantastic. Okay. So we should be able to see basically what like memory is being read or written. Um, and we can do that through TCI. Uh, read R32. Yeah, how do I want to hack this up? Historically, I haven't used QEMU with a system-based thing for fuzzing or in, in system mode. So... Um, let's find, where does this read memory? These loads and stores. This is going to a uh, read S32. We're just going to read an S32 from memory, and that's going to go into here. That's a constant. TB pointer. TB pointer. Read an indexed register, read a constant, and then just deref that memory? What? What? Um, that might be right. Um, T1, T2. I don't know if LX is correct here, but um, they might just have all of physical memory mapped into one location. I'm not 100% sure. Let's see what that looks like. Step instruction. Yes. Okay, so that did a load reg of... Uh, uh, what did that do? 
Yeah, that did a load of R9. So if we take a look at the data at R9, or we want the instruction before, X10i PC minus four. Um, no, we're about to do that. We're about to load R9. Okay, so let's step and plus TI flags. Okay. Um, X 10 XW. We're going to deref this. I guess. Oh, shit. Um, so R9. R9 is there. And we read a word from there. Now, that might have been a page table walk. I'm not 100% sure. The the negative sixteen is kind of interesting. Um, but I think this might be RAM. I don't know if they do physical memory as one big blob. Not a hundred percent sure, because that's reading index register. TB pointer, okay, and TB pointer, so opcode, yep, that's to the TB, arc state, I don't even know where they store the RAM, arm state, here we go, so on arm where is ram at we know how to restore registers so that's easy um hmm by the way will the stream be uploaded yep all the streams get uploaded to my youtube hell yeah um, op call branch set condition. Load. Oh, flute. Uh, under LD. Load, load 32U. Where did we put our printf? Load U32, upload. Hmm. RI, TB pointer. If debug, blah, blah, blah. You guys are up early? Hell yeah. Um, if config soft MMU, load UB, unsigned byte, that goes into MMU, goes into load helper. Is this where like all loads happen? I think so. This might be where everything ends up going through. It'd be nice if there's some comments, but there aren't, if not TLB hit. So it's checking for a TLB hit, checking for that, checking watch points. Um, so this is for If it's a TLB hit, handle CPU. Okay, basically what this is doing, um, if the CPU does not allow for unaligned accesses, then this will throw an exception there. Um, this is gonna check the TLB. This is gonna check if, I think we 
miss the TLB, and if we did, then that's gonna go um, load mem up, okay. IOTLB, handle online accesses, spans two pages, or IO. So these will do these mem ops. Um, host address, okay. How can you even keep your eyes open at 5 a.m.? It's not 5 a.m. here. It's only 2 in the morning. Um, maybe try to catch in the emulated RAM instead of TCG. Yeah, that's kind of the plan. I don't actually need to do it in TCG. Um, basically, I need to figure out where all physical memory accesses go through. and I So that's I.O. Otherwise, address plus here. Entry add end. What's entry? TLB entry. If it's not hitting the TLB, then it fills it in from the TLB. And okay, so this is where it's gonna fill it in. This is gonna do the page table walk. Um, so we don't necessarily know who fills that in, um, but ultimately that's gonna do a page table walk. So let's look at TLB. Uh, fill. See where that is assigned. That's going to be CPU specific or architecture specific. In our case, we just care about um, ARM. And here we go. So ARM CPU TLB fill is the dispatch. And then that goes into here. This is going to get the physical address for something. Um... Yeah, this is tough. Um, this is really tough. Can you see chat? Yeah, I can. Is this Android? This is. Focusing length using technical equipment flute. Oh my god, that's fucking good, DeFerez. Holy shit. Hey, Wiggle Every Time, how are you doing? Hope you're having fun. Um... RGTLB hit. Let's see where TLB hit is used. Couple places. <sighs> so. Um, SP TCG TCI dot C. So if it's soft MMU, then here's like the loads. Here's a load I32. It will dispatch these memops. And then, uh, what is this? That will do the helper. Okay, be right back. So, these are all the loads. So, if it is not soft of MMU, it just deref's memory. Guess to host. So, it does a guess to host, which just adds the base, uh, and that makes sense. But if there is a soft MMU, then it goes through all of these helpers. Um, and so, let's see what these look like. L, D, U, W. So... Load helper. I want to make sure that all of these go through load helper at the end of the day, and I think they will. Um, load helper, load helper. Okay, so load helper is basically, I think this is where all accesses are going to go through. Uh, printf load 
um, percent X. Uh, we'll say load helper. And then we have an address. So this is going to do a read from memory. And not everything is going to go through here. So like some page table walks might not go through here. Um, but that is probably going to be acceptable for our requirements. So X and I PC, we're about to do CPS ID, does nothing. Then we're going to do a, a, what is that register? C0 something? Um, C03. Um, that's reading LR, returning, reading the return address. Oh, which was the same as PC before we did this step. So that read, that read PC. Now we're going to step, and this is, this read PC again. In this case, uh, IRPC, so it read the PC we just executed, but it also read another address, and it should be the value at R1. Um, or R9, I think, was that. Yes, and it did. Okay, so um, really the first thing I wanted to figure out was whether we were in the virtual or physical domain, and we are in the virtual domain. And I don't want to be in the virtual domain, unfortunately. Um, so what we're going to try to do is find the physical domain that's nearest. Um, but unfortunately, that might be really hard. Um... I don't know if there's a way to hook this. Is it possible to say we're power button, volume button, and recent button? I have no idea. I'm not familiar with doing Android dev. Um, like theoretically it's possible, but is it made accessible that it's intended? I don't know. I'm not 100% sure. So, um... How do I want to do this? I basically need to figure out how I want to hook physical memory access, but that's really hard. Um, and let's see what this does. Do unaligned access. And that's going to be in here, I think. Do unaligned access. Now... This will just raise the data fault, but it will uh, return. A it doesn't actually perform the access. It just basically does the access check. Um, this code's actually pretty clean. I'm impressed. Kimi code used to be a lot worse than this. Um, uh, if it's not a straight memory access, okay, then target page mask, okay. Then this is like MMIO space. Um, hmm. This is tough. Let's see what TLB hit looks like. TLB hit page. And wait, to be address, which comes from, uh, okay. If it's a code read, then it's address code. Otherwise it's address read. And that's off this TLB entry. Okay. Yikes. Um, This returns a CPU TLB entry. Add in to get the host address. Add our code. Yeah. <sighs> um. So those are the virtual address. Non-zero access shouldn't should not go directly to RAM. Uh, 
This is where I really hate using a pre-made emulator like QMU. Um, it's going to be really hard to be confident about this. Um, I'm at a critical point where I need to basically make a decision if I want to write an ARM emulator or if I want to hack up QMU. Um, Arm emulator, yeah. I mean, that solves a lot of our problems. Um, arm emulator sounds fun, yeah. Arm emulators are not trivial, right? Arm arm is a pretty complex architecture. But we would get full control. <sighs> would get views too? Yeah, I mean, I, I have time to do it. it. It'll take basically a day, right? It'll take a day to write an arm emulator. Um, means we get to write it all in Rust. We can probably write an ARM emulator without any unsafe code. We'll be able to have faster snapshots and restores. Uh, we'll be able to do taint tracking. Um, we'll be able to emulate devices easier. Like, seriously, I think it will take less time to write an ARM emulator than get this working in QEMU. Like... Do we get a vote? I mean, I know what chat's going to vote for. Um, let's take a look at the ARM ARM. Let's make sure... So ARM is really difficult due to, um, first of all, the instruction codings are brutal and the way that flags are updated is pretty difficult on ARM. Um, um, We might have to do floating point instructions too. Um, yeah, this architecture just fucking sucks, dude. It's It's got so many instructions, it's insane. Um, I don't think we have to handle thumb on this specific device. Um, The banked register stuff is also new to me. It's difficult to write a system emulator when you don't understand the ramifications of how all of these things work. But um, I can probably figure that out pretty fast. Phone was soft float, wasn't it? No, I think it's hard float. For most of the kernel stuff we want to fuzz, it doesn't really matter. Um, this is a tough decision. Um, like, if I hack up QMU, what can I do here? Um, basically... So that'll go to... Okay, so this will go to unaligned if it's unaligned. Do unaligned access. Um, if size greater than one and unlikely, blah, 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 do an aligned. Okay. I don't know how we get there. Um, if it's, if it isn't just a straight memory access, then we go into here. Um, that's going to do IO stuff, which is going to be tough. Um,
Hmm. Now the downside is we'd lose kind of our our um GDB stubs. We'd be able to get better introspection and we could probably get close to the performance of QMU. Um at least TCI. We'll understand what the code's actually doing. Um The downsides are like, I don't know if I want to write an ARM emulator that I'm not going to use for my own work. So like that sucks. Um, hmm. All right, my food's ready, be right back. It builds its soft float though. That might have just been like for the kernel only. I'm not a hundred percent sure. Um, kind of hard to say. Um. Ah. Uh. I mean, it's only like a day of work that I would throw away. So I think it might be like a good example. What do you have in chief? I have some uh, spicy chicken sandwiches. Hell yeah. Oh, fuck girl. Um. Hmm. <laughs> God, these are really fucking tough decisions. Um, day of work to do what? To write a to write an Android emulator. Um, or to write an ARM emulator. Um, does look really dry. Oh, it's it's not dry. It's fucking delicious. It's not dry at all. Um. Hmm. This is going to be really annoying in QMU. Um, if we can make it work. I'm basically trying to figure out what will take less time, writing an ARM emulator or getting QMU to work. Hmm.
And then maybe I can show people how much arm sucks. Um... Because everyone, for some reason, thinks ARM is an amazing architecture. When it's actually an absolute heap of shit architecture. Um... So... Hmm... I thought Arm Sucks was the official, uh, or the unofficial title of the last five streams. Yeah, that's pretty accurate. Yeah, I like it. Must be something like Stockholm Syndrome. Come back to me when you understand how, uh, how inner and outer work, and then we'll have a conversation. Arm 64 is better, but it's, it's just going down the exact same path that, um, that Arm is, right? It's just... The only reason ARM64 is good is it doesn't have 20 years of shit added to it, but it will. In five years, it's going to be a shit architecture because, like, ARM, the ARM Holdings Company is just fucking terrible at making decisions. They make decisions based on what will sell, and those decisions are often, like, is there a single vendor who has $50 who wants us to add an instruction and a new encoding? Yes? All right. We're going to add it because it means more people will be running ARM. Like, it's stupid, but that's kind of how it is. Um... The microcontrollers are pretty cool, though. Yeah, for sure. I agree with that. The instruction component encodings are so fucking complex. Um, and that's kind of what I'm looking at to figure out, like, how much shit I'm going to have to deal with. I do love running emulators, though. Fuck, this is good. Um, and who calls exclusive or Eeyore? Who does that? No one hardware or software calls it Eeyore. Fucking arm. Um. A fan of Winnie the Pooh. <laughs> yeah. Um. Yeah, we might just write an emulator. Could be kind of fun. Um. Now, how much do I actually want to fuzz this phone? I don't know. I mean, as long as I do ARM v7, I'm most of the way there. Enjoy implementing two instruction sets with thumb and arm. Thumb should simply map to a restricted set of arm instructions. Yeah. Well, I have to do thumb and thumb two, right? And arm. Depending on the uh, processor. Thumb is just stupid. What is this? Um... Modify new media. Oh, yeah. yeah. <clears throat> the, the rotated immediates. I actually kind of like that. I think that's a cool idea, to be honest. <clears throat> the LSL, LSR. Thumb 2 has si uh, three different 16-bit prefixes. And then further was 16 bits of Thumb 2. Yup. Yup. Are we still investigating bugs? Now we're looking for more bugs. 
basically is our goal. Um, unfortunately, uh, Arm is a flagged architecture, and flags are a pain in the ass. Um... Uh, okay. There's so many stupid instructions. I don't know, man. <sighs> I find it ridiculous that this can be considered a risk architecture. In this day and age, risk just means load store. It doesn't actually mean anything other than that. Like, I'm pretty sure sign stat saturate two, uh, 16 bits is not a fucking risk instruction. Or signed multiple, assigned multi, multiply, subtract dual, pretty sure. Sign multiply, accumulate long dual, pretty sure that's not a fucking risk instruction. Now, these are the, uh, like, media instructions, but... I just love how everyone thinks, like, arm is risk, and thus it has, like, four instructions. It's really not that much better than, than, uh, x86 in terms of instructions and encodings and all sorts of shit there. Um... Hmm... Fuck, man. Let's see. TLB entry. Looking that up in the table. If it's a hit, that's going to check the address. That makes sense. Um... Victim till we hit. And then till we fill. Yep. Hmm. I don't know, chat. What are we going to do? What are we going to do here? Um, get fizz at her. Okay, we see the access type here, which is good. Um, that's not bad. We can, um, having those access types plumbed in might make this a lot easier. Um, that's EL2, stage one, MMU index. Just the stage one. <clears throat> hmm. Fast contact switch. Yup. Hmm. Um, what's going on right now? Trying to figure out if I want to write an ARM emulator. <clears throat> or if I want to hack up QEMU. V6. Mmm... 
Extract 32, PTW. Translate. That's the S1. That makes sense. Um... Hmm. Um. I don't know. I mean, right now I'm just trying to finish my food. But um, if I do a emulator, an emulator, I can probably make performance better than QEMU. I can get much faster resets and I can be confident what it's doing. Basically, I'm trying to figure out if it will take more or less time than modifying QEMU right now. And I think it might actually take less time. Like, if I were to do this, I would have to emulate these first instructions. Step Okay, load register. How hard is that? Where is LDR? LDR. There we go. Um... Oh yeah, ARM has a bunch of immediate encodings too, which is really frustrating. Um, the encodings on ARM are so stupid, dude. They're so stupid. They make it so hard to decode. Like, it's just random bits stuffed into random places. Um, and the whole condition concept on armor is really, really annoying. They are super random, yeah. <clears throat> are you going to implement a JIT if you're going the emulator way? No, no way. No way. I would do a... I would do an interpreter. And most things are undefined. Yep, undefined and unpredictable. I mean, I've written an ARM emulator in the past. It's not my first time. Um, hmm. We could maybe try and go to a more modern phone as well. Um, and then do ARM64. But ARM64 has ARM uh, V7 compat, doesn't it? So you still kind of need to handle it. At least until recently, um, Android would use like a lot of 32-bit libraries intermixed with 64-bit. It was really stupid, but... I think that has since changed. Um... So we have load register thumb. So that's the register encoding. Reg 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 offsite. Um PC based things. They have their shifts. Their pseudocode is so fucking hard to read, too. <laughs> if it's not the last thing in an IT block, then it's unpredictable. Um... <laughs> what was that saying? This is saying if it's, if it's loading into PC, and it's in an if-then block... And it's not the last thing in an if then block, then uh, then it's unpredictable. But that's that's the thumb encoding. There's no IT blocks. Actually, um, I don't think I've written an ARM non thumb uh, emulator. Um. 
No candle today. There's a candle. We uh we put it out. It has ARC 32 support, uh, but if you take a modern enough phone, they drop support. iPhones drop support of ARC 32 since the last three years. Yeah, Android like iOS moved a lot faster on that than Android did. Android took its sweet time. Um. So that's. Oh. There's just so many encodings. Here we go. Load immediate. This is the one that we have. Um, if the if it's PC relative, then see load literal. If P is zero and W is one, then it's LDRT. If RN is fourteen, um, or not fourteen. If uh, RN is thirteen and P is zero, and U is one, and W is zero, and immediate is this, then it's a pop. Like... <sighs> Fucking arm, dude. Like, basically, if, if, if the register is PC, and then P, I guess that's defining the post index, is what they're doing there. Um, Pop is a special case of LDR. Yup. What the fuck is this encoding? Welcome to ARM. Yeah, it's just going to do a load of the stack uh, with a post index, right? It's going to do a post index stack load. So the encodings here are just a, a load, a pre index load, and a post index load. Um,. Or I think this is post, and this is pre. Um, so I can mux that out a little bit better, I think. I know it's like slightly off screen. I'm sorry. Um, that's not what I want. There we go. It's a terrible architecture. I have no idea why like people fucking love this architecture. Uh, the encodings are awful. The complexities of systems dev are awful. I mean, we understand why it actually got popular. It's cheap. That's it. That's the only reason why people use ARM, because it's cheap. Um... Um, it's good for learning too as well. I'd say it's terrible for learning. It's terrible for learning. I'd learn like MIPS if I wanted to get an introduction into like architectures. I thought the Risk Five immediates were annoying. Oh yeah, welcome to fucking ARM, dude. This is a load. This is the logic of a load. This this like basically the simplest operation you can do, and this is this is what you have to do to make it work. Um, why won't QMU work? It's just really, really, really hard to hook into and to get good resets. Um, I mean, we, we can do it, of course, and we're kind of weighing the options right now. Um, unfortunately, hooking physical memory access, like... All I want to do is hook physical memory accesses, right? That's the only thing I care about. Um, but unfortunately, hooking memory accesses is... Accesses... Is really difficult. Um... By complexity armor shit, but how's the performance compared to Intel? Shit. <laughs> like it, it's it's only better in uh, power savings, and that's largely because that's what ARM a lot of ARM things do. Like x86 doesn't allow you to make a 64-bit processor without uh, MMU, but ARM does. There's like a lot of stuff like that. Uh, glue, outer space, LDL internal. Okay. 
So this uses some like C include stuff. So they like generate some, what is this? Physical memory access templates. Um, what about the Apple M1 for perf? I mean, we're still figuring that out. We don't really know yet. It doesn't look that good. It looks pretty meh. Um, Triforce QMU? I'm not going to use Triforce. Not a fan. Super fucking slow. Um, there he is, Fabrice Ballard at the top. What a lad. Yup. M1 is a little slower than the Ryzen 2000 series. Yep. Um, it's also not nearly as hard of a space as like high performance compute, where Intel still dominates um, by an absolute landslide. Apple Perf is only high because Intel stopped innovating since 2009. I mean, Intel still crushes them on multiprocessor. Intel crushes literally everyone on a multiprocessor and high-performance compute. Like, it's still not a thing yet. Still not a thing. I think ARM64 can do it. I don't think there's anything architecturally preventing it from being a fast thing. There's just not enough money or market there for someone to make it. Maybe just for the instrumentation part on memory, that's the slow part. Like, that's that's literally the slow part, right? Like, I don't know. It's like, all of these mods that people make are, they're really bad, right? Like, doing these things is not difficult if you don't care about perf. Right, like hooking this stuff would not be too bad if we didn't care about performance, but we're trying to figure out how to make it work well uh, in a performant way, and that makes it very difficult. So, return glue. Um, <sighs> translates. Another thing, like, if we write our own emulator, we also get determinism. Like, we actually can guarantee determinism, where with QMU, we're not going to get determinism. Can you use one of your older ARC32 emulators so you don't have to write everything again? They're written in C. I haven't written an ARM emulator for four or five years. Um, so those take suffixes. So it just like generates this, I guess. Glue, glue. So that's LDQ, LDL. Those are gonna dispatch LDQs, LDUB. Um, are these the fuzz hooks that were added recently? Config fuzz to add a weak symbol and stub for the DMA callbacks. Yeah. Um, I mean, you always end up writing an emulator anyways. Yeah, I mean, that's, like, uh, hooking this in is, I mean, it's probably not too hard, to be honest. We have to go through all of these accesses to physical memory, um... Switch Indian? Is that dynamic? Oh my god. Wow. Um, fuzz read callback. Okay, here's a callback. Oh, that's DMA read. I don't know why they call it DMA read, because I'm pretty sure that's just memory read. Um... Let's see here. I'm curious, in config fuzz, what does that actually affect? Because it doesn't look like it's thorough. 
Yeah, that adds some hooks on memory, but that won't make... That won't allow you to hook memory accesses. Like... God, I hope someone's not using that. That's not sufficient at all. Um... If you're gonna hook into it, do all that work and then complain about perf and write an emulator anyways? I mean, yeah. That being said, this is kind of more of a learning adventure, right? This isn't this isn't for me. I don't care about finding bugs in this phone. I don't even care about ARM. Like, I would write this in vectorized emulation if I actually wanted to do anything here. So like In that regard, I think that's a lot of my hesitation to writing an emulator because I just I'd rather write the emulator with vectorized emulation. Like, I don't really want to write a interpreter emulator when I have an environment to write high-performance emulators in. Um, is this QMU source you're looking at? Yes. Um... I don't know. I feel like maybe I could get this pretty close. Size is one, or it's unaligned. So this is unaligned accesses, and this is an aligned access. So we can like printf access memory, right? So we can use that to determine when memory is accessed. I mean, technically, for resets, I don't really care. Um, For emulation, or for, for fast resets, which is what I really care about right now, I actually can just kind of hook at the uh, store memory level. And I can maybe just do that at the load helper. How much harder is it to write the vectorized emulator? I mean, it's a lot easier to write the... Um, it's a lot easier to write um, lifters for an architecture. But as a whole, it's much harder to write. Significantly harder. Um, want to avoid the completion of ABI specific, blah, blah, blah. So, I wonder if the instruction fetches go through here. And it's always difficult to determine, basically, if all accesses go through one central point. And I think the answer is no. I don't think everyone everything goes through here. Because if we take a look at CPU fill, right? Here we're doing page table uh, walks. And um, this is all loads. And these are going to go through, like... Address space LDL. I guess it's these like memory L dests where they physically access memory. Let's try this. Printf phys access um, percent LX address. And let's just see if we even hit that. Is mem. Hopefully this is being used. I don't even know if it is. Oh, nice. Fizz access. Okay, so there we can see the physical accesses. Um, so, like, as long as we flush the TLBs correctly, I think we actually are fine hooking these. We're not going to be able to trace all of the memory accesses that occur, which is fine, I think. Um... So let's find the um, LDST. That's load store, is what that means. Um, yeah, so the, here's all the fuzz callbacks, right? So these fuzz callbacks. Um, they basically give you a, a hooking point. And that might just be good enough. Um, I don't know why they call it DMA. But I think they have all of these. Where it's just address and size. 
And that's gonna probably do the trick. Um, memory region. What's memory region? A struct representing a memory region. Okay, if we get past that, we might be able to make this work. Let's um, let's do configure. Let's rebuild this. Help a grep i fuzz. Grep fuzz. Hmm. I swore I saw it. I swore I saw something for fuzzing. Um, vim configure. Fuzz. If it's fuzzing. Yeah, I don't want that. I don't want that. Config fuzz. So where does it go otherwise? There's gonna be two implementations of this function. One is here, if def config fuzz, and then this is um has not been populated since the last loop. Uh, don't have a great way of reproducing right now. So this is for generic fuzz. Okay. So... I don't understand where the else implementation of this is. Unless config fuzz is set. Um, where does it echo that to? If def config fuzz. Yep, that's in here. Fuzzing support there. Configure 45. So these have all of the hooks into physical memory reads and writes, which is good enough. Um, and then we have an is write. We have a memory region. And that does MR RAM block. And we can look at MR RAM block. Okay. And that should give us access to the actual memory. Um. All right. All right. Does this have to be in a memory region? Ah, oh, fuck. Yes, it does. Translates is direct. That's memory region. Is RAM. Um, right now, I'm, I'm basically trying to look at, like, if I want to just hook all memory accesses, uh, which I can do, um, can I just supply arbitrary physical memory? And I don't think so, because I need to make a memory region. And I can maybe make that where I create the... Um, QMU device, but yeah, I think we're gonna go the QMU route. I don't, I don't want to write an emulator for. I just don't want to do anything outside of Vecimu anymore. Um, I don't want to write a non JIT. To be honest. Um, hey there, Otezai, how's it going? And that also means I think we can probably get this working in. Uh. Not necessarily the way I want it to work yet. Um, we are specifically doing ARM. Like these are how reads to physical memory occur. Now, in theory, something could bypass this, and that's one thing that I'm always concerned about is, like, is it possible that something else is reading this? Uh, so let's try and find this code. SP. Let's go into soft MMU fizzmem and map RAM pointer. Return a host pointer to the RAM allocated with QMU RAM alloc. 
have you worked out why it didn't work with CSPR or SPSR, or however it was called? Yeah, we figured that out. Uh, we just had to manually set the processor mode to do that. If Zen enabled, so we're not using Zen. If the block is null, then get a RAM block for the address. Yeah, and this is where QMU fills in RAM, kind of with zeros, effectively. Um... So it will create that block, and then here it's just going to do block host offset. Okay, um, that's not very difficult for me. Um, so we can maybe hook that. Let's see. Um, I'm going to get rid of this if def config fuzz, and we're just going to do printf um, access uh, if is writes. Uh, Rights to patter of uh, LX uh, size percent LD, LU, um, or we can do a ZU here, address and len, and we'll do Z on this as well. Um, else, and then we can do a read from physical address, blah, size, okay. Get status, get checkout, um, get diff tcg tci, uh, get checkout tcg tci dot c, um, get status, get diff. Okay, that one's fine. Um, make j16. Um, did we fuck it up when we configured? I think so. Just re rebuild it, I guess. So basically what we want to do is we want to see all writes to physical memory such that we can record that physical memory has been modified and that we know how to restore that physical memory. So that's the first thing we want to do is basically make it such that we can restore physical memory when it's accessed. Um, and that isn't too hard to do. Um, and then we'll use, uh, I guess, shared memory to communicate fuzz statistics, and we'll need to hook exceptions as well, and then reset the register states, which I think the way that we reset reg or we set register state right now, we can also do to reset register state. So we'll kind of see what we can do there. All right. Um, memory region info. Uh, redefinition of that. Yeah, see, that's what I was wondering. Like, where was it defined? In memory H. Fuzz. Fuzz DMA read CB. Okay, that's where it is. Yeah, um, okay. So I was basically curious where that was coming from, and it turns out it's from this header, um, and that makes sense. So um, we're just going to set that config fuzz. Um, but I don't know how to set that fuzzing support. Um, grep fuzz, and there's no references to that, so I don't really know where they want that to go. Um, I mean, I can just if end if that, right? Um, which is gross, but we can do that. I don't know why running help is destroying the configure state. That seems to be a really fucked build process. Um, like, something's deleting those make files for seemingly no reason. But this should cause this get dispatched. 
Um, make J32. Now we have to start building it again. All right, so. Uh, I got a question for you. Most make programs run compilation sequentially, but why isn't there anything that just burst compiles as many files um, as it can on different CPU threads and waits for the compilers to, fin compilers to finish? I mean, that's what it does, right? That's what it does when you do dash J. Um, I say this because as a job, I did this hack and it reduced the build times from 15 minutes to two minutes. Yeah, if you just do make dash J, it'll just, it'll do exactly what you're saying. Like that's what I'm doing right now. I'm using 16 cores when I build this. Um, I know this is an annoying question. Can you explain uh, what you meant by your right setup is your own internet? Like, how did you manage to get your own w Google and Wikipedia there? I hope I didn't bother you with the question. So I don't actually have a Google on that network. It, it, he's asking about basically my offline workstation. I don't have Google, but I do have Wikipedia because Wikipedia can be mirrored. You can basically go and download the entirety of Wikipedia and then mirror it. So I've basically done that and set it up so I can host it offline. So I downloaded basically all of the content of Wikipedia uh, and put it on that network. And then I just run that off of a, um, a web server. It's basically how that works. Um, what's your opinion on the Go language? It's not a language that I like, but it's fine. It's fine. Yeah, th that's a lot of spurious reads. Jeez. Holy shit. How large was that download? It was relatively small. I think it was like a couple hundred gigs. Um, yikes, man. That's a lot of physical accesses. Wow. And I thought I saw like a 6,000 hex address access. So step. Um, now a lot of these are probably due to uh, Q, uh, GDB. So I don't think it's that many accesses to be honest. Um, I wanna find a write. Um, here we go, here's a push. So that push, okay. Yep, and that's kind of what I would expect. Um, so that stack was red um, before it did those pushes. Um, yeah, I think this might be kind of what I feared. Um, I think the TLBs maybe cache the permissions. Let me check, a, take a look. Um, they might kind of go ahead and store address, read, write, and code. TLB entry, it's gonna do a TLB fill. TLB fill is gonna go in through here. Um, TLB, where was it? There we go, TLB fill. It's gonna do a page table walk. Um, we're gonna have an access type in here, which is gonna determine if it's a load store or a instruction fetch. Um, access type. It's gonna go through and try and get a physical address. Ultimately, it's gonna come down through here um, where it's gonna try to get the type, but who actually stores that? MMU index fizz pointer access type. Okay, where does the cache get filled in? 
ret um cpu state mmu index so this is going to fill the tlb and it's going to do that set page with attributes here and are these going to return the attributes yes i see um it'll be bits super annoying super annoying do you do any smart contract coding no i have no interest in smart contracts i think they're dumb they're dumb contracts, not smart. <laughs> hey man, really enjoying the content. Keep it up. Hell yeah. Yeah, we're trying to figure out how we want to hook into Kimi here. And unfortunately, it's going to be extraordinarily difficult. As is standard when working with shit like this. Um... I'm really tempted to put QMU in an emulator. Um, and then I can reset QMU instead of resetting the guest. I lose some performance there, of course. Um, time to write your own emulator. Yep, that's, that's, that's in my head. But I think what's going to happen is this fizz adder. When these are return attributes... Uh, arm cache attributes. Um, cache ability and share ability attributes. Okay. Um, TLB fill. So this will fill this in. Attributes protection. And what's prot? Yeah, I think prot's going to come from here and ultimately get fizz adder is going to um we're just going to go into v7. This takes prot, sets prot to 0. Um actually is that the one that I want? No, I want this. Uh let's take a look at prot. Prot they set to read write execute for that domain and then here they uh ap to our rw prot um so their tlbs cache the protections um <sighs> and that makes it really fucking hard to know if memory has been accessed or not. Like, put Kimi inside of an emulator. Yeah, that's something I often do. How much do you stream? I just finished attending college and you're still on. I mean, we're, we've, been, we've been going pretty ham recently. We've got some good projects here, I think, going. Um... Fuck, man. This is exactly what I expected. Like, I just wanna, I just wanna be able to hook all rights to memory, and that's hard. Um, I might just do it myself and add my own hooks. That's probably gonna get yield better success than trying to use those like fuzz hooks, which are in a pretty shitty spot. Um, but I think I'm gonna miss some accesses that go directly to physical memory. Like, I think there are. Does does ARM have dirty bits? I think it might. Um, let's check out the VMSA. 
But I think it might have a dirty bit. Basically indicates whether or not memory has been written to um, physically. Unless that was arm V8. Because honestly, uh, CBS, NS, and GAP. Oh. Do they not have a dirty bit? I thought they did. I swore I used a dirty bit on arm once. Not global section. Huh. Where's everyone watching from? I'm from Albania? Oh, hell yeah, dude. Only a five hour stream so far, rookie numbers. Dirty bits. Dirty bits, yeah. I don't know if they actually have them then. I swear I've used them before on arm, but maybe not. It might have been arm V8 that I did that on. I'm not 100% sure. Arm V8 arm. We're gonna try to find the arm arm for arm V8. That's for M. We want the A. Uh, that's a supplement. Maybe there's enough in here. No, that's SVE. Um, that's the vector stuff. Home or office? I'm at home. Home is the office. Yup. Arm V8 arm. God damn it. Where is this? Arm V8 M arm. Nope. Um. Overview. That's not what I want. Why is this so hard to find? Arm V8 A arm. Um, architecture reference. There we go. That's what I want. That's a good search. Here we go. This is. Ah? 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 Ah, yeah, there we go. Um, let's just save one of those two. Okay, so let's go take a look at the, um, we're gonna look for, where is the virtual memory model? And it's been a while. The application, nope, don't care about that. Uh, virtual memory, okay, here we go. VMSA. Um, there we go. Um, shit, do they not have dirty bits? I, I swore I used them at some point. Maybe they don't have it. And then if they don't have it, then I'm not 100% concerned with writes happening during page table locks. Hmm. I might be okay. Uh, basically writing my own hooks then. Um... Shit, I thought they would have had dirty bits, but I guess not. So, uh, printf, um, accessing percent LX, um, adder, and then, what's memop? The size? How do I know if it's a read or a write? Oh, that's load helper. Okay. Um, store helper. Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh huh. This might be good enough. I don't know why that caused 700 things to need to get rebuilt.
What what are the benefits of Gen two? Basically, building everything from scratch. That's one of the nice parts of Gen two, is you get to just build everything from scratch. Um. Whoops. Um. It wants unsigned int here. Okay. Okay. Hopefully it doesn't have to rebuild all of that stuff. No, it doesn't. I don't know why that happened. Maybe we changed like a header or something. Or didn't let a build complete. Okay, so hopefully we will now see. Um, I see no rights. Step. Uh, we're going to get rid of that hook as well. The... Basically, these this hook is useless, so we can reset that, and then that means we can also reset this, and that's going to cause a lot of stuff to rebuild. Um, get status, um, get diff, only the printf, and then our register state stuff. Okay, sweet. So we're basically back to bone stock, Kimia. Um, so this store helper might be good enough. I don't think there's going to be too many rights to physical memory. Uh, without going through store helper there it's theoretically possible um, that people go directly to these memory accesses but I don't think it's a big deal we really only care about the code that's executing um, obviously dirty bits and page tables would be an issue but there there doesn't seem to be right back on those page tables um, or the page table entries right if there is a dirty bit then um, then page tables would be written to when they're traversed like when something is accessed for a write for the first time. And in this situation, we don't have that. So I think we might be able to just hook here for writes and that's gonna be good enough. Um, so we're gonna try it and see what happens. Load reg, okay. So, um, Branch and link, CMN. Here, this is going to be our first instruction that does stores. And it's going to store two values to memory. Um, it's going to store two things to the stack. So let's see. Yes. Uh, so we get two writes. Beautiful. Here's another store, just one store. We see it. Um, two stores to that push. And then this should have six stores, and it does. Um, I'm happy with this. I'm happy with this. Three stores there. Okay, I think that's working fairly well. Um, when we quit out, it just eventually exits. Okay, so this isn't 100% confidence, but I'm pretty sure that we'll, we'll basically be able to see all most of the memory writes here. I don't know if we'll see all. Like on x86, this would not give us a hook to all writes because writes would occur inside the uh, the page table accesses. Um, but this might be fine for me. And thus we'll know what memory needs to be restored. Um, and at this point the TLB will be filled in, so we'll be able to know the host address that holds that um so writing to this and then these are i guess that's a virtual address and i need that to be a physical address um hmm see that's where it's a little tough um, I don't actually know what the physical address of that is. It'll be fill. It's going to fill that in. Writing to that. So we see the virtual addresses it's writing to. But we don't know the physical addresses. But we might be able to get by. Um... We might be able to get by by looking at the uh, TLB entry. And so we have the address for read and address for write. Um, and I think those are the host addresses, right? 
uh, adder. An adder is... So, unlikely blah. Otherwise, so this is the default address. And plus entry addend. Okay, and entry is the TLB entry, which is this. And there's an addend in here. Yes, this. Um, addend to the virtual address to get the host address. IO accesses use the corresponding IO TLB value. So, as long as we're not hitting IO space, um, we should be able to get the, we should be able to print that address and then the add ends, which is a TLB, uh, or entry add ends. And I, I think that's an LX. I think they say uint pointer T. It's going to be a, an LX right now. Actually, it'll always be an LX because it's a long. Well, it isn't on uh, Windows, but that's fine here. Um, step, 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 step. Okay, there's the push, and then those are the host addresses. So basically, um, if I were to read that memory, so uh, PSAX grep QMU, uh, we're gonna GDB 17050. Um, why can't I p trace that? So we'll do it as root. Um, okay. So if we take a look at 20xg, if we look at this address, this is probably not mapped in. Cool. But if we add this offset to it, this is going to be mapped in. So this is the guests, um, this is basically the guest memory that I guess holds that. It's kind of an interesting way that they do that. We can look at XW. So this is the stack, right? We're looking at the stack and we just stored um, we just stored two values there. If we look at R4 and LR, so this is R4 and this is LR. And let's just double check that by doing an IR. Um, and we see, uh, what was it? R4 is zero and LR is five, six, eight, six, eight. So we can see like where it's actually writing that into host memory. Um, I don't know, I'm, I'm gonna see uh, basically how many syscalls GDB does, or uh, QMU does, and we might just write an emulator for QMU. Um, can I ask something that's off topic and still reversing? Absolutely. Uh, source. Uh, what do we want to do? Uh, emulate. And we're going to do S trace on this. Ooh. Surprised I don't have S trace. Okay. Um, but yeah, there's a chance that we're just going to put QMU into an emulator. Um, and then we don't have to worry about any of this stuff and it makes it really easy. Um, that's a technique I've used before. Um, basically we're going to have to see how many syscalls QMU does. Uh, but we might actually just put QMU into our OS. We might grab, uh, like chocolate milk and boot that on hardware. And then we can like quickly snapshot restore, uh, all of the state and we won't really care. Um, at that point, we wouldn't really care uh, what it does. And we could probably enable the JIT too, if we do that and we'd get determinism. So we'll see, I don't know why S trace takes so long to build. I'm kind of surprised. Can you use CRI used to snapshot restore? Um, I mean, kind of. Like, I, not in a very efficient manner. Um, LSL, not if I want maximum, maximum perf. Okay, uh, does QMU fork? 
Because if it forks, things get a lot more difficult. But if it doesn't fork, it's not too bad. Um... Hmm. Bunch of shared libraries, but that's not too big of a deal. Um... So I'm mainly looking for things here that are hard to emulate. I, so we're going to try and get QMU to build statically. Um, I mean, I guess I can probably build it static here with just configure. Let's just see. Um... Actually, I don't know if I have static for most of the system. So what we might do... We might try, um, we can get rid of this install and this snapshot and this test.c. Um, we're gonna make a tool chain. We're gonna make a muscle tool chain. Um, pseudo cross dev. We're gonna make a uh, AMD64. Yeah, here's what we're gonna do. We might just run QMU on our OS. But we're going to see what it takes to get QMU running. Um, uh, AMD64, uh, unknown, Linux. Uh, I'm going to do T help here. Hopefully that tells me. Okay. Um, AMD64. Oh, x86-64. x86-64, unknown. Um... Linux muscle. Um, let's try that. Uh, cross dev uh, dash dash or uh, just dash t. I think for targets. So this is gonna basically give us a uh, x eighty six sixty four unknown Linux muscle uh, cross compiler, and we'll be able to use this to basically build everything statically. Um, You need to use static user, static libs. Yep. So, obviously, if we go the muscle route, we don't have to worry about that. And that's the plan. Um, muscle is just going to be a lot easier to kind of interact with, but I don't know if uh, QMU will build with it. Um, I know, like, Box does, but I don't know if QMU will. QMU might do some pretty heavy things, but it's also relatively ported, so it might be fine here. Um. Just waiting for that to build. Bin utils, GCC, Linux headers, and then muscle is the libc. And then hopefully we'll be able to install QMU. But I don't know. <laughs> it's hard to say. Like, I don't know if uh, QMU will build with it or specifically all of QMU's dependencies. Um, but if we can do it, it'll be really, really cool. Should run this on Grizzly? I can't do this on Grizzly. I don't have a, I don't have a Gen 2 on it. Okay. So, hopefully, I'll be able to just literally emerge QMU, and it will just work, um, which will be kind of interesting. This is one of the reasons why I really like Gen 2. Um, this doesn't take too long. I think it only takes like a couple minutes. So, it's probably almost done with bin utils. Um, although, I... Pretty much only do like ARM and Risk Five cross compile, so I don't know how long the x 664 compiler takes. It probably takes significantly longer to build. 
just more complex. Do, 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 do. Um. Okay. Yikes. It's taken a real long time. Unfortunately, Polar is currently going through its phases right now. Um, but yeah, here's to hoping all of this stuff will build statically. It'd be amazing if it does. I know um, there's pretty good muscle support in uh, Gentoo, so I would imagine they probably have it working. So... If we get that building, then we don't actually have to worry about how Kimu works at all internally, and we'll be able to just reset it as one big blob, um, which will be pretty awesome. Uh, and then we'll be able to do some OS dev, maybe. So, here's hoping. Um, okay, now we're getting our stage one. All right. God, I hope this works. I hope I can just emerge muscle and it'll work. Or emerge QMU and it'll work. Do you do work related things on my offline computer? Yeah, it's pretty much the only place I do work. I don't really do anything on this computer except stream and play games. Um Do you have any monitors in the server room? I have one. <laughs> I have one just as like plug into computers for uh like debugging. I like those trolley things. Yeah, I want to get one of the, like, 1U KVM things. Um, that would be really nice. Where I can just kind of pull it out of the rack and, like, have a monitor that folds up nicely instead of just having something that I stick on the servers. I've never actually looked at bu buying one of those. Figured CrossDev would be a lot faster in your machine. It's only an 8-core. It's or only a 6-core. This is a pretty standard machine. It's really not that fancy. It's a lot faster on the other computer, which is an 8-core. Um, yeah, that's building LLVM right now. That's the slowest part of the build process. I've got to build LLVM a couple times, actually. Just trying to build shit. Um, I have this executable running on a Windows XP VM and want to step into an enter instruction. I did set up currently bugging via another VM using serial ports, but I um, don't know how to run the executable through the debugger VM uh, using WinBag. So basically, you're going to want to just do like bang. Um, you'll just want to do like, well, there's basically in WinBag, you can set it up where it will break on a process creation. You can just Google like, uh, Windows kernel debugger break on module load, right? And technically the exe is a module. And that will like cause it to break on the first instruction in that executable. And then from that point, you can set your breakpoints and single step and all sorts of stuff. Um, I forget what the specific command is to do that. Um, if the exe is already running and you have a kernel debugger attached, then you can simply do bang process zero zero. Uh, zero space zero and that will give you a listing of all processes on the system and then you can do a dot process space slash I um, space the process um, not the process ID but the process um, object which is just going to be like a hexadecimal value uh, which process zero zero gives you and then that will allow you to enter into that process and basically debug that process um, From the kernel as if you are uh, a user land process and single step and set breakpoints and all sorts of stuff um, There's a little bit of, of knowledge that kind of goes into it, but yeah, you can totally do it um... And <laughs> I emerge LVM yeah Unfortunately, LLVM is written in C++, which means it takes forever to build. 
Um, it takes so long to build that shit. Kind of annoying, but that's what you get when you write highly templated C++. But technically, I don't need all of this to run. We're basically rebuilding this system. Um, I think that's basically going to set everything up. Because uh, we, we, we accidentally broke that system, and now we're just kind of repairing it. Um, but yeah. Okay, nice. Cross Linux headers. Let's go. Let's go. Been AFK for an hour. What's new in that time? Nothing. We haven't done anything. We're looking to build um, QMU with muscle, and our goal will be to just emulate QMU instead of trying to figure out how QMU works internally. And that's likely going to give us uh, much better performance and much higher confidence that we're actually doing things correctly. And then we'll be able to do the JIT and stuff too. So that's kind of what we're looking at doing right now. So we're going to build muscle now. Muscle doesn't take long to build at all. So you're building a QMU emu? Yep. Yep. We were eating chicken sandwiches and complaining about ARM. Oh, yeah. All right, GCC stage two. Oh, yep, here's the stage two GCC. But muscle built, that's good. That's good. Not surprised. Um, there's, like, Gentoo has pretty damn good support of muscle. I suspect that this is just going to work. Um, which is fucking awesome. Like... Fucking go, Gentoo, dude. Did I miss a rant? Not really. We were just scrolling through the ARM manual and basically saying how awful of an architecture it is and how, how hard it is to use. <laughs> or write an emulator for, or interpret, or understand anything about. Um... Why don't they make glibc support static linking properly? It does, but I still want to use muscle because it will um, make a much more controlled environment. glibc is just a fucking mess. You could say that about any architecture that exists for more than a few years, to be honest. Like... Honestly, x86 is relatively clean from a system programming perspective. It's, like, not too bad. I don't know. I think ARM's just very fragmented with how many, like, use cases it tries to support. And then you basically, like... I don't know. I mean, like, you have two, two three... You have, like, three different ISAs on the same chip. So you need to handle, like, three different instruction encodings for everything. Um, you have, like, really weird uses. Like, the ITNE blocks, like, while cool, they're also <laughs> unnecessary state machines in a processor. The encodings of instructions are abysmal. Um, but, like, I don't know. Because Intel truly failed to make a good low prior processor. Yeah, and I don't think that's a failing of x86. I think that's just a failing of Intel. And I think it's like they just haven't had a strong reason to to basically try to play in that market. Um, glibc statically linked does deal open and other nonsense. Yes, it does. That's another reason we're using muscle. Muscle makes uh, much uh, lighter use of syscalls on the system, and thus it's much easier to emulate um, all the syscalls that a muscle library does compared to a um, compared to a um, uh, glibc one. Zen three mobile processors processors look very promising. Yeah, I'm kind of holding out. I. Mobile processors just always seem to suck. <laughs> like, I don't know. I'm actually really happy with my... I, I got a new laptop this year that has, like, a 5 gigahertz 8-core processor, um, 64 gigs of RAM, and that thing's a beast. It's actually more powerful than this gaming computer. Um, but, like, cooling and TDPs can be a problem. The battery life is great, though. 
We should compile LVM more often. Well, we're not waiting on LVM. We don't really care about LVM. Actually, that install just happened, or it's installing right now. So that's done. So hopefully we'll get access to Polar again soon. Um, I don't know if I need to do any more maintenance on that. Uh, basically, as long as I can log in as root, I think I'm fine. Um, so I think we should be good there. MD is already looking at an interesting, uh, already looking interesting on the low power front. Will be interesting how M1 compares to them. I think M1 will slaughter them. How's it going, Chief? Pretty well. We're just kind of chilling right now, waiting for some things to build. So, just talking with chat mainly. I'm hoping that Lenovo can update their uh, P1 X1 chassis. Not familiar, not familiar with uh, Lenovo's gear. Low power Intel is at least a gen behind already. Yeah, Apple is at least um, at the same perf as AMD, probably better, as you said. Yeah, yeah, I think I think the the um, the M1 is gonna probably be the best uh, performance per per watt um, that we've seen a in a while or ever. Um, so I think that's gonna be really impressive. How, how hard is it to write your own emulator in OS? How much time does it take? Depends what you support, but I can write an OS in about a day. That does, like, something basic. Um, isn't M1 5 nanometer, though? I have no idea. That being said, the, um, the nanometer things just don't mean anything. Like, it, they haven't meant anything since, like, 40 nanometers. Uh, or 45, I guess, would have been the, would have been the spec. Um, but since then, it's just an arbitrary metric that doesn't really mean anything. Um, basically, it's it's meant to define the smallest feature size of a processor, but then different people have different definitions of a feature, and thus, like, <laughs> like you could have a processor that is 15 nanometer and a processor that's 5 nanometer, and they might literally be using the exact same technology. So... I wouldn't follow the NM stuff. It's kind of bullshit at this point. Um, I imagine if you were to install Linux on the M1 Max, the battery life would uh, go drastically down. Yeah, I suspect that as well. Um, battery life on Linux is just often pretty bad, um, just because there's often a lot, like, power management is often very vendor-specific, and thus it's, like, those drivers don't exist, or those specifications don't exist, so I wouldn't be too surprised. Okay, so we should be able to maybe, um, uh, x86-64, um, unknown Linux muscle, and we should have an emerge in here. So let's just see if we can pseudo emerge ask um, QMU. Let's just see what that will say here. Uh, unmet requirements. Um, um, Hmm. The following required use are unsatisfied. Python targets. Okay. Um. Um. I think I actually need to set up an environment for this first. Um, uh, update, new use, world. Because um, I don't think it has that world. Need to select profile uh, before that. Yeah, let me see how I do that. Um, because there's no e-select, is there? No. Um, uh, 
Let's see. So we have that. Um... Profile is just a sim link. You can add it. Yeah, but I'm trying to see if there's like a correct way to do that here. I'm just looking through this. There we go. Um, arc. Uh, well, I guess arc is already set. Portage, config, roots, user, um, um, unknown muscle, eselect profile list, and um, we're going to set, I think we're going to try to go with the lightest thing, which would be... Um, I think all of these are fine. I don't think any of them are going to fuck with muscle here. So hopefully we can just say 11. No multi-lib. Uh, oops. And I'll need to do sudo on that. Let's see if that works. Hopefully that didn't do sudo on my actual host, because it might have. Um, eselect profile... List. Just make sure. And it did. Okay. Um sudo e select uh profile set. What are we on? I'm on desktop. There we go. Okay, uh we'll just do sudo su. That way we don't have to worry about the Okay, here we go. Pink. Oh, uh there's muscle here. Do I need to use that? Wait, now I'm confused. Um, you select profile list. Oh, I have pseudo again. Whoops. Um, okay, so there's nothing set, and we're going to set this to. So there is muscle, and I don't know if I need to use the muscle one. <laughs> Um, it says ellipsy muscle, so yes, you do. So is there no muscle for 17, 17.1? 17 so I have to use 17.0, uh, set 30. Um, let's just see, uh, I'm going to see what they say on muscle. Um, I just don't want to fuck something up here. That would make me sad. Um, forces needed. Yeah, I th like that's obvious, but I don't know why there's not a seventeen point one version. But uh, oops, set. Force question mark list okay um so that has been set and we can do a x86 unknown muscle um uh, emerge ask new use updates with b depths y Um, okay, so install all of these things. Um, those look reasonable. 
I kind of want to do this on Polar so I don't clobber my own system. Um... And is that actually what I want to use for the command there to update everything? And I think so. Um, let me just double check. Uh, I'm going to try to find something here. Um, so new use update. Uh, we'll want to do deep as well. New use update deep. With BDEF's Y world. Okay. That should be everything. Um, and how much shit is this going to build? Uh, needs Zlib. Static libs. That makes sense. Um... So I'm surprised that some of these don't have static libs, but is that just implied? Or does does muscle work with not static libs? Should I just set, set static libs? Um, in, uh, we could throw that in vim uh, user this etsy portage make.conf. Uh, GGDB. I kind of want to do the no strip as well. Features no strip. Uh, install source. Oh, we, we won't do install sources yet. So, debug, no strip. Oh, yeah, here. No strip. Collision protect sandbox, blah, blah, blah. So, do I need to set static lib? It defaults to shared libraries. Oh. Okay. Um. Okay. So, um, what I could do is basically bear with me. This is new uh, static libs um i guess we just throw that in our use flags and we'll just do um static user static libs okay pretty happy with that so we're going to build debug builds um And I don't know what these messages are. <laughs> we'll go figure these out too. What's this complaining about here? Um, it's deprecated, not supported anymore. E-select into that. Yeah, and just do they not support muscle on 17.1? I think that's what's really confusing to me. So, static libs. This is going to make sure we build the static libs um, for everything. There's also a static flag. Is that going to actually build the binary static? I think so. Just ignore the message. Okay. I think you switched your system profile as uh, I e select profile list. I think I set it back. Yes, I did. Um, I need the static flag, yeah. So, what does static user do? So, static libs is obviously going to build the static version of libraries. Um, static user, I don't know what that's going to do. And then static is actually going to make the binaries themselves and link them as static. Um, and failed to satisfy, has unmet requirements. Required use... Um, Uh, pi requires not static. Oh. 
Fine. No pie. <laughs> Get fucked. Maybe. <laughs> Don't enable static globally. I don't know. I kind of want to try it out. Just name it on QMU. I know. But I kind of want to try it. Um, how much shit is this going to build? Not too much. Static user, build the user targets as static binaries. Oh, that's for QMU. I see. that. Yeah, that's specifically QMU. Um... I don't know. I kind of want to try it, right? Doesn't that sound fun? Doesn't that sound fun? God, I wish Polar was up and running. <laughs> oh, um... I don't think I have this using jobs right now. Yeah, let's go uh, do that quick. Um... Cat, let's see... Uh, porridge make... Um, host CC and we'll just throw these in here. Uh huh. <laughs> It'll be Rust and LVM. I think we might just go for Kimu. Yeah, so the other machine, like, I probably should have just reinstalled because I had like a bunch of shit kind of installed on that machine. Um, but let's see what happens here. Let's see what happens. So, Pi is turned off, and then let's see. I feel like there's a good chance that this just will not work. Like, that this will literally fail, uh, to work. Wait, why does it want Rust? Yeah, what the fuck does that want Rust for? Something depends on Rust, I guess. Son of a bitch. Um, unless that at world is my host world, but I don't think so. That wouldn't make sense to me. Like, I'm a little concerned that this is my host's world. I, it definitely isn't. Put Rust in Mask and check. Rebuilds Rust in the host for whatever reason. Yeah. Um. Is this, oh, this might just be because my host never finished its LVM build. I think that's what's happening here. My, my host basically, um doesn't want to build LVM. Let me see if I can just do QMU. Can I do this? But yeah, I think that's trying to build my host because I have an update that's like partially complete. Hey, there we go. There we go. Okay, uh, QMU. Um... Building those targets. We don't really care. Static user and static. Okay. That should be better. Oh, it still wants to... What What the fuck? Why? Yeah, so basically it's this VE target that was added to LVM that's broken. Can remove the other fancy things? Oh, yeah, I can just, uh, just do QMU, can I? Because I set the, um, yeah, thank you. That's what I meant to do. Um, right. There we go. Thank you. Um, okay. So theoretically, uh, it doesn't see any conflicts with these flags. So theoretically, it's confident that it can make this happen. Um, this is actually really cool because this is going to build like all of these binaries as static. Um, 
which will be kind of cool for uh, testing things out. So, just wait for Polar. Yeah, the issue is VE, right? Basically, VE was added to LVM as a new target. I don't even know what VE is, um, but that's failing to build with LVM. So I have an update on my system that's failed because on my system, um, I have uh, I basically have LVM targets equals star in my uh, make.conf because I I like to have my compilers basically ready to target anything. Uh, it pretty often comes up that I work with some exotic architecture. Um, so I like to have that pre-prepared. Pre um, but unfortunately, LVM just added a new target that fails to build. And thus, uh, my like whole system update is kind of fucked. So I don't know if that was fixed. I could go look at that and see. Um, let's just look at uh, Gen 2 um, LLVM. But yeah, I guess all I had to do is I just had to set the profile and then I was able to just uh, emerge ask on this. And this is really cool. Like if this actually builds a muscle statically compiled Kimu, uh, that's gonna be fucking awesome. Um, we have those mods that we make to it to just give it support for, um, what do we do? Uh, we basically, yeah, we gave uh, support to um, basically setting our registers, but we could probably do that externally if we really have to. So what do they add? VE, what is VE? Nick SX Aurora vector target experimental. Okay, so let's just see here. Let's see if there are any bugs because historically I built no problem. Um, and I don't know how many people have LVM uh, as an asterisk. So, um, like, there's a good chance that no one has reported this or even started working on fixing this bug. Um, unless it was fixed, but does this show fixed bugs? I don't think so. Confirmed, unconfirmed. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I can, I can literally just do like maybe star space minus, um, VE and I'll be able to get that to build. But, uh, let me actually try that. I'm going to get that working over here because this machine has the same build error. Um, it's literally the last thing I did and, uh, um, yeah, there's like this L, it basically fails to link with this like initialized VE target info. So I'm assuming it's VE because I think that was very recently added. Um, so I'm going to just remove that. Um. So, um, I actually don't know how to do a wild card and a minus. Seems like it does not work. Um, is there a way to like? Do a wild card and then minus something from a use flag? I guess not. Seems to just kind of crash. Let's see where this is at. No failures yet. Um. Okay. 
All right, so we'll see basically if that builds on the other machine. If it does, then uh, I do have a workaround for that build issue, and then I can get everything back up to date. So. But yeah, this is building just fine. No problem so far. All right. Um, needs to put C matrix on the six monitors for extra hacking. What is C matrix? I was I was looking for like something that would make some cool output, and I'm guessing that is exactly what I want, isn't it? Oh yeah, that is literally what I wanted to put up there. <laughs> it's literally what I wanted to put up there. Okay. Uh, I'll emerge it after this. Um. Basically, basically trying to make sure all my servers are set up good. So, I was doing an update yesterday, and that's when everything got fucked. Um, but one of my servers is fine. Yeah, one of them is fine because it didn't have LVM targets, and then my uh, workstation I'm basically rebuilding right now. What do you usually do on the six monitors? Just a bunch of research. That's my offline, that's my offline um, uh, hacking workstation. So that's where I do pretty much all of my research. Um, so I just play around on there pretty much all the time. So, hell yeah. Yeah, mainly I've just been kind of setting things up and hacking on some old projects that I worked on. There's also a Unimatrix. Ooh, with some Unicodes? Yeah, I can't handle Unicode. Unicode is way too advanced. All right, lib slurp. Okay. So like it's getting close to having stuff built. But yeah, yeah, I just do a bunch of stuff off there. It's just an offline machine, no internet from there. Why not stream from that PC? It is not online. There's no internet on that machine. Why is it offline? So I don't get my O days stolen. <laughs> Because I have valuable bugs on there that are sensitive. Um, do, do, do. Okay. Oh, there's XKB Common. <laughs> it might just be an issue with building uh, latest QMU. Like, it's probably, like... Probably just a bug with that, but sweet muscles installed all of these libs and here we go emerging Kimu Emerging Kimu is it gonna work? Your setup is fire. Thank you so much. I fucking love my setup here. It's pretty nuts actually to bh Um, all right <laughs> Everything else built and installed which is fucking cool, dude. This is another reason why I like running Gen 2, because this, because this, trying to do this on any other architecture, you would have to, or any other OS or distro, you'd have to probably go and like manually build all these things to try and get this shit to work. It would not be easy. <laughs> yeah. How do you install stuff when the computer's offline? I have everything mirrored off there. So basically I have a copy of, of Gen 2 that I move over to that network. That's actually the hard drive that you saw me, saw me move over here to grab that ISO earlier. That was from the, uh, the hard drive that I used to transfer the uh, latest and greatest to there. But yeah, I just sync that over every couple, uh, every couple days. I'll sync it over and update everything. Will Kimu be massive now that all the depths are statically built? Not really. Like, it'll be big, but it won't be massive. So it looks like it is on the linking phase, so... I think it's happening. <laughs> I think it's happening. There's no warnings here. No warnings, no errors, no weird spew, no weird behavior. I think it just literally worked. Like, it just worked. That machine's building LVM right now. My other server's good. Oh, installing. 
And there it is. There it is. So then, in theory, we should be able to go into user x86 unknown. Um, user bin uh, kimu uh, system mips. I didn't. Oh, that's on my host. Um, yeah, yeah. We we didn't build all targets for Kimu, but that's fine. Uh, we didn't want to. Kimu system. This. Let's take a look at file. Statically linked with debug info not stripped. Um, <laughs> woo. Uh, system. Yeah. So it's 103 megs. Um, and that's not terrible. Um, Kimu system. VNC server. Okay, so basically headless Kimu makes a VNC server, I guess by default. Cool. Okay. Nice. Um But yeah, isn't that fucking cool? <laughs> That's actually so cool. Um I would love to have install sources set up, to be honest, but um yeah. Ain't that sweet? So basically, okay, now I need to figure out how to, in Gentoo, I want to modify or like apply a patch to the build. Um, and then we also want, uh, we want to, we want to, of course, build ARM. So um, I don't know if there's way to do like incremental builds where I can like develop it in tree and hack on stuff there. Not 100% sure. 2BH. Um, like, does anyone know that in Gen 2? If there's a way for me to just say, like, extract it and apply patches and configure it and build it, and then let me go back into the directory and run make. Can I run, can I add patch info? I don't want to do patch info because that's a pain in the ass. Um, ebuild. So I can run ebuild manually. And I know I've done this before, right? Um, oh, run ebuild in the, um, literally in the, like, portage thing. Prepare on packs. Okay, um. Yeah, so at that point, it behaves more like FreeBSD portage, doesn't it? Um. So, how do I, um. I don't have ebuild, so um, I guess I just have to set my flags correctly on my host. Well, actually, there isn't going to be so packages. Yeah. Um, where is it? Uh, var db some somewhere. Um. So, how do I do an e-build inside of here? Because that's kind of important, pseudo sue. Um, so, we, were, we could do the portage config route, but I don't know if that's right. Not vardb package. Um, let's see, um, yeah, right, that's where I'm at, isn't it? Unless you mean the root vardb, but basically, how do I... How do I e-build um, for that environment? I'm not sure how to get your end set up. Yeah, I agree. Um, pass a whole load of environment args. 
Yeah. Um. Cross. I don't know. Maybe it's just as simple as the portage configured. <laughs> um. Is there any way I can steal that from this somehow? Um. Oh, can I do emerge e build? There was an there was an action for e build, right? Um, action e build. Alternatively, you can literally cheroot into it. I guess, yeah, I could, couldn't I? Um, so, yeah, is there a good way to do that? Like, I, I know I can cheroot. That's one solution. Um, but in other situations like imagine i'm cross building if i'm actually cross building here then i can't cheroot so i want to like kind of play around with this oh that's just a path to the e-build you think i literally can just do like this oh emerging by path okay no no um like, I know you can cheroot, but that's not realistic for cross-building, which in this case, we're not cross-building, but that's fine. Um, but it's something that I like to kind of understand, right? So, let me see if... Um, where is this? Let's just see what this does. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. And sets the config root, cross command, which is emerge. I don't know what that curly's doing there. Oh, that is the command. Okay. Um, root depths, r depths, export these. Yeah, how do I um, e-build with emerge? Let's see if there's a way. Without having to cheroot, because of course if I cheroot, then that's kind of cheating, in my opinion. Uh, rebuild, customize, blah, blah, blah. Like, obviously I can set all those environment flags, but I wonder if there's like a way that I can do it. Um, so, emerge without clean is effectively kind of where I want to start, um, Gen 2. Um, um, See how Polar's doing? Polar's doing okay. No clean is a feature. Um, so how does that work? Um, Gen 2, no clean. Features, no clean. Um, so there's keep work. What's keep work? Man, make.conf, yeah. Um, do not delete the source and temporary files after the merge process. So... Okay, I like that. Um, uh, 
No, well, that just... Uh, what's keep work? Do not delete the work directory after the merge process. Can then be reused since this feature disables most of the clean phase that runs prior to the each build. Due to lack of proper cleanup, this feature can interfere with normal emerge operation. Shouldn't be left enabled for more than a short period of time. I would hazard this is what I want. This will keep the work dir, and I imagine, like, here's what I want. I want that when I emerge Kimu, I want it to, um, uh, features equals this. Basically what I want is that um, this will build, like go through the whole build process. But then I want the next time that I run it, um, I want it to basically, um, I want it to effectively do nothing, right? Like, that's what I want. I want it to basically go in and just run make again in Kimu and leave the source intact um, and maybe reinstall. Um, But that is kind of what I'm guessing here, right? Features equals, um, and then that'll leave the work directory there. Um, I'm just looking, network sandbox, all those things. Um, keep work, do not delete the work directory after the merge process. So that's kind of what I'm hoping for, is that I can just run make again, or run emerge e again, and it won't do anything, um, since it's already built, right? I want it to basically be the same as if I'm developing Kimu and running make. Um, and if that's the case, that's awesome. If it's really that easy, because um, that that's kind of why, like, that's why I pulled down uh, Kimu and basically manually built it. Um, but obviously, if this works, then there's no reason to do that. I think you'll be able to develop in it, but you'd have uh, to install, you'd need a clean build. Okay, that's fine. That's fine. Um, so basically, the theory is that if I do this, um, this rebuild will hopefully be fast. It appears it's already pretended. Remove that to force pretend. All right, I think that's building it again. Wait, no, that did it. That was definitely faster, right? That definitely was differential. Um, that was definitely differential, right? Let's try it again. Like, it's not as fast as just running straight make. There's no way this is rebuilding all of Kimu. It's just linking. No, it's doing a B zip. It's B zipping. Um, and I don't know what it's B zipping, <laughs> to be honest, but let's let's go and find a pseudo su. Uh, user um, temp portage. I don't know where the work dir is, but I'm guessing it's here. Okay, here's Kimu. C tags are dot. Do jobs one dash V. Um, okay, uh, then tag main. Is this main? Um, shit. Um, Fuck. Fuck. How many mains are there? Son of a bitch. I just want to put a little printy boy. Softmmu main.c. Probably that one.
Um, Kimu and Nit. Kimu main leap loop. Okay. Um. So that is if def SDL and if SDL, and then that calls Kimu main. What's Kimu main loop? That sounds good. There's only there's only one instance of that. Printf. Welcome to main loop. Oh, if we'll even get there, maybe a knit has to happen. Oh, I'll put a print here. Printf apples. We're just gonna try that. So hopefully, now when we run Kimu, we'll get apples printed out. Um, if that's the case, this is amazing. And like, it means we can just literally like build anything in any environment and any cross architecture and that just makes makes it so powerful um uh user bin kimu uh what was it oops um was it not there? So is that not installed? Does it uninstall it and then... Um... Does that not end up installing it? Right, it should be QMU system. Unless it's not actually building it and it's just. Ah, uh, I mean, we have a build here. This is, this is what I want, right? Um, find star grep. Okay, let's go into here. Let's try this. Wasn't it in here? Um where what what did I just do? Ooh. Yeah. I don't think that's working unless we missed um LSL Modified uh, date, okay. Uh, so we're just gonna see if the date gets updated here when we emerge it. There's some dot files which control which phases, phases run, okay. Mainly I wanna see if this binary gets relinked. Um, no, that binary has not changed. Um, you said dot files on this? Oh, compiled. Uh, remove compiled. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to imagine that will uh, get rid of that. So I see configured, compiled, prepared, package, packaged, whatever. So this will hopefully uh, differentially build that now. Oh, yeah, and then there's probably also like an installed. What else was in there? Prepared, packaged. Which one do you think is installed? All right, so I would hazard this has rebuilt it. LS work. Um, LS work. Kimu. Um, Kimu soft MMU or soft MMU. The fuck was it? Um, soft MMU. Build. X86 this. Um, Kimu system. LSL. Uh, 437. No. What the fuck? Mm. 
Maybe they're in order or something. Pretended, prepared, packaged, unpacked. Um. Hmm. Hmm. Um, compiled file has size zero. Yeah, that makes sense. It's just a marker. Configured is obviously the config stage. Ins prepped. I don't know what that is. There's probably some of these that I need to remove. Um... IPC and out, prepared, pretended, packaged. I don't know what some of these are. Um, set up, yeah. I'm looking for that because it's the, did I mean that? No, I did not. Um, E-build. Um, Hmm. I'd remove anything related to the install phase. Yeah, but I don't know which things are. But yes, that's what I'm trying to do. E-build clean on pack. Patching. So go into there. So basically, this is what it's saying. When you want to hack in stuff, uh, e-build clean on pack. Um... And so dev manual. Yeah, so that's like going through like writing patches, trying that stuff out. Um, I don't know, I need to figure this stuff out, how to do this correctly. Only seems to list phases, okay. Okay, um. Okay, uh, I think these are in order, right? Here we go. Preints, post ints. So obviously, um, configure and compile makes sense. Inst prepped, I'm guessing is maybe install prepped. Um, inst prepped. Uh, God damn. Running ebuild on a host and inspecting the dot files to see which phases, yeah. Um, I'm going to assume, um, set up. No. Hmm. I'm going to guess packaged and inst prepped and compiled. I'm going to get rid of those. We'll give it a shot. I'm surprised there's not like a better way to do this. Like patches are, like it's hard to find a patch, right? It's hard to make a patch by writing patches, right? You need to kind of incrementally try things out and get it to work. Um, and then I should have an LSL for this. Um, that didn't build it either. Okay, um, yeah, I think I might need to make it, um, <sighs> keep work, right, because that remade compiled, which is weird to me. 
That's so fucking weird, man. Um, so packaged IPC, all of these things get run again, unless it's set up, set up did, but I would expect to see this binary get updated. Um, unless I hooked in a bad spot, let's just make sure, let's make sure that we definitely affected the QME build. Um, and we'll do that by going into, um, okay, QME main loop version. Let's just see if that version, if that's what actually gets printed, version, emulator version this, copyright. Okay, I'm pretty sure that's where that actually gets printed. So let's just, um... Let's just see. I'm not going to remove any dot files. Maybe we just did the wrong main location. And, like, this will actually try to recompile it. But um, I think all we have to do is remove compiled. I think there's a chance. There's a there's a non-zero chance that we just didn't affect the actual build um, with the place that we added the print. So we'll just see here if this does it. And if this doesn't do it, then we'll try and remove... Um, Okay, that didn't do it, so we can remove compiled now. And I find it hard to believe that it would, like, not compile it if that's... Like, it, it's creating the compiled file, but I would expect it to actually have to build it then, too. Um, so it's doing a bzip. Um... Not giving me much confidence. Yeah, what the fuck, man? Like, how would that not cause it to get rebuilt? That makes no sense to me. Like, that seems pretty important, right? Um, like, why would it create the compiled file if it didn't fucking compile it? Right? Right? Like, just before source configure, you should have uh, prepared, prepended, set up, unpacked. After you configure, you get configured. Yeah. Um. So. <laughs> so, the... F the fuck does that mean? Um, and after compile, you get compiled, but it's clearly not invoking compile. Or for some reason, it's maybe not using this work directory. Like, is, is it building from somewhere else? Like, that makes no sense. Um... Um, let's see if build.log is recent. Um, build.log is recent. Okay, so this is recent. It appears it is already set up. Skipping. Remove setup to force setup. Uh, to force prepare, configure, compiling source in here. Make J12. Nothing to make for all. Okay. So it is running make. Um, and then it's trying to install it. Um, but there was no QMU in user bin, right? Okay, what is something it's actually installing here? Um, 
image install. Um, it feels like it's not building system because we didn't see system installed. Um, maybe it isn't. Like it, it. Let's do a. Let's just do an ask quick. See what it's trying to do. Um, no, I want to see info. Soft MMU targets. Um. I'm not overriding features and that's causing problems, is it? I don't think so. I think features on the command line is, is augmenting and adding. I don't think it's replacing the features. Um, so I think it is kind of working. So we have the build.log and Richter is up to date. Yep, keeping. It appears it's already prepared. Uh, compiling source, uh, work Kimu 510. And then it installs and installs those things. It appears it's installed. Inst prepped is actually um, so inst prepped. Uh, remove. Let's just see where it says this. So we have compiled, and then inst prepped is actually I think going to install that to the system. So Kimu desktop. User bin. You can see ebuild what it do. What do you what do you mean by that? Um the fuck, man. All the features. Yep, keep work. Sweet. All the previous ones. Use flags, here we go. Soft MMU target, so that is set. Set up, prepared, configured, make. <sighs> now I'm trying to think of like what code would be guaranteed to be part of this that I could, um, TCG. TCG dot C. Um, uh, a lot of if defs in here, a lot of if defs in here. Um, What's soft MMU build? That's where the output is. Um, so I'm just gonna remove the output and we're just gonna see what happens here. Remove that, remove compiled, and we'll see. Oops, not info. Let's go see what this does. Um, it's just be zipping again. Soft MMU builds. 
x86. Yeah, it didn't build it. The fuck? Um... Hmm. <laughs> I don't get it at all. Um. Uh, I'll get rid of uh remove. So configured and then inst prepped Let's see what happens here live on the west coast yeah i'm on the west coast here um yeah e okay um cannot create directory already exists yes yes Yes. Um. I don't get it, man. I don't fucking get it. Work, um, dude, that makes no sense. Why wouldn't it be running that? Clearly it's something about the e-build. Um, um. I think this might be something chemo specific due to the uh, soft and MMU stuff. And I think ultimately it's like, I mean, like I built it, right? And that's probably good enough. Um, x86-64 chemo uh, system, right? Like that is a new build that we just made. And it is static, right? We, like, it configured it and set everything up in the way that we wanted it to. But it, like, this works, right? This is fine, right? We can basically do the keep work and, and it's all good. So I'm just gonna, um, I'm gonna CD here, CD out of that. I'm gonna get rid of, yeah, um, um, we're gonna dep clean Kimu. So we're basically gonna remove Kimu, get rid of that. Um, that should get rid of probably work as well. I'm not 100% sure if it will, but I suspect it will. Um, maybe not. Okay. Um, I actually even, I don't even know how to remove that, but we'll just do this. It's probably fine. So remove that, and then we're just gonna basically do keep work, emerge, chemo. 
And we're basically gonna reinstall it, build the whole thing, and then this is gonna make that, uh, yep. It's gonna make that, and then we're just gonna piggyback and we'll run make in the directory. Um, we won't use emerge to actually build it. Um, we'll just rely on emerge to configure it and set everything up and set the arguments up and all the make files, and then we just know that we should be able to run make in there, which is fine. So, that's the plan. How do you learn binary exploitation? Where should one start? I have no idea. Like, capture the flags are a good place to start, but it is just a lot of work. Uh, like, I would learn C and I'd learn assembly. Agamoso, my, my mates are sucking your dick in one team speak. Uh, can you say, hola fachitas? Hola fachitas! <laughs> Like Saran, I have no idea what I just said there, but luckily I can just pretend like I don't know Spanish and then I can say uh, it's fine. <laughs> Thanks, no problem, dude. I got you, fam. I got you. I'm picking up what you're putting down. <laughs> Lol. <laughs> um, all right. Once this is built, ah, fuck. We didn't even build it the way we wanted. Um, we, uh, yeah. So... And I'll, uh, remove this. Yeah, so that's not installed. Um, when I have keep work, basically some things can be unstable there. And we're just gonna do, um, QMU, uh... We're gonna do QMU um, soft MMU targets is equal to um, arm QMU user targets maybe empty remove everything yeah something like that ask okay yep yep it's not happy about that um, hopefully I can just say empty and it's fine with that. Um, no. Oh, it's because that's not, oh, I typoed it. Soft MMU targets, give me user targets, okay. So this is gonna build ARM and everything as basic as it can and no user targets. Yes, I want this. And then we said no clean or no whatever, right? We passed that argument, I, I'm pretty sure. Features, uh, where was it? Uh, features is keep work. Okay, so we're keeping the work. This is gonna build everything, keep the work. We're only building ARM. Uh, we're not doing TCI. I don't know if there's even an option for that. That's okay. We might be able to make this work with the JIT. We'll see what we can do. Um, I like this, this is good. Vamos Primo, thank you so much for the twi the Twitch Prime! Woo! Whoop! Hell yeah. And before you unknowingly said something really bad. See, I I don't know if I did or not, so it's okay, right? <sighs> um Static Static User. Oh yeah, that's some good water right there. Mm -mm. Beep bop, beep boop 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 beep bop. I agree with you, Pietos. <laughs> I wholeheartedly agree. How do you stay awake? I mean, I'm fine right now. I got up late. I got up at like noon or whatever, so it hasn't been that long. Tumbo with the Twitch Prime, hell yeah. This is a true Pog Gramer. 
Pog Grammar. All right, so that has built and we have work and we're just gonna piggyback off of the fact that this has been built and we can go into soft MME build and we can just run make in here and make will do nothing. But if we were to change soft MMU um, main.c and we change this to print f apples, right? And then we were to run make again, it will build it, and this will relink uh, the magical thing that we wanted to. Um, oh, library search path is unsafe for cross compilation. Um, I mean, I, th I don't know if that's like an environment variable that's not right, but I think we're fine. Arm soft MMU, QMU system arm, apples. Nice. Okay. 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 All right, let's see, uh, let's strace it. So these M maps are basically just allocations. Um, memfd create, um, that's be basically making a, oh, just making an anonymous file, okay. Returns a file descriptor that refers to it. Behaves like a regular file. It lives in RAM? I didn't know this existed. Well, that's cool. Well, now I know that exists. Um, exec. Uh, this is basically allocating room for, uh, or I guess, I don't know what that's necessarily doing. Uh, set FS, that's setting the stack, uh, setting the um, locals. Uh, set the TID address. Uh, of course, we got Burke going. Um, that's basically allocating a room or figuring out where data is. Uh, M map, M on map. Those are easy. Ooh. I can't remember if Kimu uses signals. So it does a clone. Why does it do a clone? That's kind of annoying. Um, child tid pointer. <sighs> Futex. God, Cumu is heavy. Memfd, mmap, s set comp. That's fine. I can just return error from that. Epol, eventfd. Oh, jeez, dude. Kimu.conf. I have no idea what that is. That's fancy. Um, more Burks, more M maps, Mun maps. Um. Hmm. Memfd create test. Hmm. And then the right Vs for the errors. So I'm basically trying to figure out how hard it is to emulate this. Um, and it did a clone, right? Yeah, it did a clone and one of the threads went to sleep. Um, what is it, what is it even doing? Why is it making a thread that early? So no threads yet, and then obviously that has spawned a thread. Um, but but why? Why does it even make a thread at this stage? Um, can you run Kimu inside Kimu? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can do that. No problem. Um, Hmm. 
Do third create. Um, let's just look at soft MMU for now. Nothing in there. Um, okay, yep, we have that. All right, let's just go and see where that is called. Fuck. Whoops. Whoopsie daisy. Um, soft MMU build arm soft MMU. Kimu system arm help. Okay, so I can do help. Uh, is that going to spawn threads too? Yes. God damn it. Why? Why would that make a thread? Why would that make a thread? Fuck you, Kimu. Uh, GDB this. Um, I should have uh, symbols. And I can put a break on clone, hopefully. Uh, that might go through. Syscall dispatcher and muscle. Um, break uh, sys. Call GDB. I forget. You can do like syscall something. Uh, catch syscall clone. Okay, let's go. Run. Okay, here is clone. Kimu create thread. Why? 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 Why, Kimu? Why do you think you need to do that? Um, I think that is stupid. That is the uh, pthread creates. So Kimu thread create is in there, and then this RCU and it completes. The fuck is this? RCU library. Okay, we got. Oh no. Wait for readers. Register thread. Synchronize RCU. Do I need this? I don't know if I do. I feel like I can just get rid of this thread. It's probably not important. It doesn't look super important. They probably use this for, like, some of their RCU data structures. I mean, is this creating it? I feel like it's just creating, like, a dummy thing that's listening for RCU stuff. But I... Like, it does this very early. Um, let's just go into here. Okay, um, and it's complete. So it's called in here RCU init child. RCU init. MP global init. Uh, RCU init, where's this called? It's not. This is an entry point, isn't it? Um, it's a constructor, yeah. Um, the fact that it does even for help is alarming. Yep. Kimu code is not, you know, necessarily the simplest. Um, The caller is assumed to have an IO thread lock. Yup. I just don't see how that executes. Um, init child. I guess this can get called, but that's pthread at fork. RCU. Oh, yeah, it's literally a constructor. Oh, Jesus. Oh man, Kimu, what the fuck are you doing?
So that gets run basically that and that's why we didn't see that's why we didn't see main right it wow wow the fuck is this can i turn this whole thing off what uses this What in here is not static? Just the RCU reader data? Synchronize RCU. Synchronize RCU is the only thing in here. I guess call RCU? No, fuck off. Okay, let's see what devil RCU. Yeah, I understand how RCUs work, but okay. Here's the API. Lock, synchronize, call RCU. Uh, um... Oh no. Um If not defined user only, called from the RCU crit sec. Oh god. Atomic RCU read. Great. I feel like every time I look at Kimi, I just got more and more pissed off. <laughs> Fucking gross. Fucking gross. Why do you not like the fact that it's creating a thread? Unneeded overhead for fuzzing? I mean, it's just one of the most complex system calls to implement. Um, it requires that you write a scheduler. Um, I feel like that's terrible. Like, is that seriously? I guess that's just a comment. Um, call RCU, then call RCU is going to call RC1, RCU1. And this is like, why? Why would you do this? Um, like, I feel like I'm surprised there's not like a single threaded mode that doesn't have this shit. You're saying uh, you'd like to run this in a custom OS? Yeah, that's the plan, is to run Kimu in, in an OS. Um, <laughs> fuck. Um... I'm trying to figure out if I can just nuke that thread and if it's fine. Did I solve the keep work problem? I did not. I'm just running make in, in here and it's fine. Manually running it. But I'm not using ebuild or emerge. Which kind of sucks, but whatever. 
Um, flat view on ref. Okay, I'm gonna hazard that I can maybe just not create that thread. Like seriously, S seriously, seriously. Um, get status. Um, get diff. I want to modify target arm CPU. Okay. Um, okay, where's that code? Um, that's not the binary, is it? Yeah, it is. Um, oh, my end. Oh, I'm two levels deep. Okay, uh, target arm CPU. There we go. Okay, and then we want to change. We basically want to include this. We want to make this change in uh, arm CPU reset. Basically, at the end, we're going to try and make this work with their snapshot. So we'll bang this in. I think that's basically what we did. Um, okay, uh, make, and we should hopefully have a new binary, QME system arm, and hopefully our scripty doodles, um, let's just find that quick, uh, cats, where was that? Emulate here. So we're gonna try. We're gonna try this and see what happens. So we're gonna make sure that this is capable of running, and it looks like it is. So we're gonna do a uh, lower s cap s, um, and then we should be able to gdb gdb commands and ir. Okay, so we have registers. Uh, we're in our syscall, we're turning out. Okay, so that's good. Um, nice. Info registers. Okay, so that works. Um, I think this gets stuck here, x10i this, I don't know why. Um, Oh, hex. So we are able to use this emulator and it works. Info registers. Um, I want help. Uh, I want to enable the trace thing just to see what that looks like. I count over commit. I always forget what the trace thing is in Kimu. Um, I think it's somewhere down here. Uh, dash D. And then we want uh, CPU. Okay. So here we can say basically all the instructions that got executed. Um, and that looks good. It looks like we are having instructions executing. Um, let's just do a head. Okay, do we need a two and one? Uh, head n 1000. I just basically want to see the transition into user space and then back to kernel. Um, and I think that was it right there. Okay, there is user space. So kernel, kernel, kernel. Uh, return back to user space. Everything looks good. So obviously we are executing stuff. So let's see now s trace, um, s trace follow fork. How many threads we got? So we got some poles going. And okay, process one two detached. Is that just two threads? 
If it's just two threads, I can make this work. Um, that's all I'm seeing, right? Um, nothing. We see the we see that clone creation, and then we don't see another thing here, do we? Cumu monitor. Probably just one RCU thread and that's it. Yeah. So like, why does it even make that RCU thread? What's even the point of it? Um, like why even make a thread? Or is that just because they need to initialize RCU? Like, do they actually need a thread here? Call RCU thread. Okay, so this is the RCU thread. And in a loop, it will read the call count. Check if there's something ready. If there is, synchronize RCU, DQ. La da 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 la da 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 la da 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 la da 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 la da 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 la da da la da 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 That's not where it is. Armsoft of Mimu. Okay. Um. There's still a thread. What the fuck's that from? Um. Catch syscall um, clone. Oh, whoops. Up there, the wrong one. Um, arm soft MMU, I think, is what it was. Arm soft MMU. Uh, catch syscall uh, clone. Okay, run. Backtrace. Pthread creates init vcpu. Okay, okay. That's not bad. This sounds doable. Um, thread. Where's that if def? Sig bus re -raise. Hopefully they don't use signals. If they do use signals, that can be a pain in the ass. CPU get thread. I mean, we can literally just go to where it is. Um, whoops. Cumu thread create. TCG and it VCPU. Um, if this else, okay, that seems pretty unconditional. If this is enabled, multi-thread TCG. <laughs> Yeah, we should be able to maybe turn that off. Um, that sounds like something we can disable. Right. If max CPUs is one, 
So there's that, or not this, which I don't know where that is from. Um, ah, I remember seeing a thing for this. Um, whoops. Thank you so much, Incognito044, for the Twitch Prime. Hell yeah. Uh, crap. I. Key, uh, TCG. Uh-huh. 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 Uh, this is less. Uh, TCG. Yeah, where's that fucking thing? I saw it. I saw it. I saw it. It was in here. Right here. Excel. TCG, comma, thread equals single. Oh, yeah. We already have TCG here, comma, thread equals single. Yeah. Yeah. Uh-huh. Sess trace F. Fucking L. Now where's it making a thread? Oh god. Uh catch sys call clone run. Same place. Um frame two. Frame three, the locals. Okay. Um, print this. Okay, that is false. If that or this or not single TCG CPU thread, or it's not. Okay. Uh huh. Uh huh. For non MTT CG, we share the thread. So it still creates the fucking thread. Oh no. Oh no. Aww. Yeah, so this is basically, if it's multi-thread TCG, then create a bunch of threads, or the thread has not yet been created, and then it creates this thread, so it'll fall through in here and create this. Um, and then what does this function do? What happens after this? CPU create, create all this shit. So, the question is, does this thread actually do anything when we return back? And I don't think it will. Um, oh. Obviously, that's a little hacky, hacking out that RCU. Definitely, maybe, maybe risky. Um, but it comes down to, like, do we, does, okay, uh, let's look at S-Trace. Um, ah, that thread, um, Pull FD zero. I think that is waiting. I think that thread, so it basically creates the CPU thread, which we could then switch into permanently. And we see this poll here. And then there's the reads. And the reads are on that thread, and the CPU is running on a different one. I think we can basically make this work single threaded, to be honest. We have to create that thread, but then we can probably context switch into it. So, um, that's kind of the theory. 
don't take this as an insult, but you remind me of of Code Vicious. I don't know who that is. <laughs> so I can't I can't speak to that. I can't be offended by that. I don't even know who that is. Um, or what that is. Um I installed Gen 2 under Whistle 2 for testing Keepwork. Keepwork is working. Test it with C Matrix. Like it will rebuild the thing. Then maybe it's just the way that Kimu is done then. It's Kimu specific. Okay. So this creates that thread. And then I think the main thread. What what are these reads? Seek sets. Oh no. This is loading in the RAM. Oh, look at that read. Yeah, it literally reads all of it into RAM. Sick. And then map, mon map, people. And then at that point, it's probably doing nothing else. I think once it gets to this stage, it is, I guess I don't know what eight would be here. These like stats. Where does it create eight? Where's file eight? Um, open, uh, eight. Yep, bunch of stuff there. Even FD. Okay. Hmm. As long as I can implement it without preemption, the performance shouldn't matter too much. That's kind of my view. Basically, as long as I don't have to preempt threads, I, handling threads shouldn't be too bad. Um, that's kind of my thought. So... I think, unfortunately, I got to go get some sleep. I want to get up uh, relatively early tomorrow. So I'm going to wrap it up here. But I think the plans might be to get Kimu running in our operating system such that we can uh, do really, really fast deterministic resets um, and get all of those, those magical perf properties. So I think, I think we can make this happen. So that's what we'll look at. Um, the next stream, I've got Raid on the weekend. I don't know if I'm going to find time to stream with Raids. Um, I might just sleep enough tonight that I'll stream after Raids, so we'll see. Um, but yeah, I think there's... Uh, I think we should just basically load this into our OS um, and just start running it and implementing syscalls. Um, I really don't think there are that many syscalls here, um, and I think we can probably make this all work, so... Cheers. Thanks, everyone, for stopping by. See you all around next stream. Hell yeah.